Welcome to Bucharest for the 888 Live main event, closing stages and final table. Welcome back if you've been with us over this weekend or welcome along if it's your first time. We're happy to have you. We're going to have some great poker, a final table, a trophy uh, won, a lot of money won. And for you, we're going to have some great giveaways, uh, a free roll and some fantastic guests, starting with easily 888 Poker's best player in Bucharest. Nick <laughs> Eastwood is here. Hello, Nick. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I just I just want to quickly correct you. This isn't actually the final table. We've got final two tables. I believe there's 17 left. Yeah, That's yeah. Final stages and final, final tables. Stages. It, was, it was all in the script, but you just was it? don't listen to me yeah, ever. Really. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we've got the final, final two tables. We're joining with 17 players. Uh, so, yeah. Nick, you're in Bucharest. I'm not. I am. How yes, is I'm it live, live on, on the ground? Oh, we've had a lovely morning setting up all the tech for this. Uh, just to, I mean, they, they really, really, really wanted me to be, obviously, to be on commentary, obviously. So we've pulled out all the stops so that yeah. can happen for yeah. everybody. Um, <laughs> it's good. So, yeah, here I am. And we have got... A load of Romanians, and then Mr. Sharp on 11 Big Blinds. So talk to us about Jack Sharp, because maybe so, people don't know who he is, and, and he's uh, probably someone you know. I don't know him, but I've run into him a couple of times over the course of the week. He's a very um, eccentric young chap. Um, he was he was quite proud that he was the only one that so far had made day two that was from the UK, I think, on like the first day. Um, and then... I said that I probably wouldn't be joining him. Then I did, but then I donked it all off. So, you know, <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. Good. Obviously, okay. I'm, I'm slightly biased because, you know, it's the only British flag up there, isn't it? So, Flying the flag. Welcome, yes, welcome the Brits. Yeah. Um, some of these players you will have seen yesterday, I'm sure, though I haven't actually seen anyone we saw yesterday yet. Um, when we left them yesterday, there were about 60 players left. Obviously, we got rid of uh, some of those between then and the end of play. But we'll get into this. I think we've got a few short stacks at this table, it looks like. Yeah, there are a few short stacks. Lots of people hovering around that 12-bit blind mark. I mean, there does become sort of like a when you're playing down to a, a certain amount, like a amount of levels, or you know there's a day three, there is a sort of like a soft day three bubble, even though really it doesn't matter. People want to be a day three. So you end up with a lot more short stacks in that situation because people are less willing to take risks at the end of the day. So that's probably why we're short, mostly. Yeah. But there are a few people with some with some big blinds. Jack Sharp, not one of them, but he has fumes on which to operate. And right now we have a plus two open from Florin with the pocket sixes and a kind of side defend with the ace deuce with two of the stacks that are actually somewhat bigger shall we say set mm -hmm. for Florin off the rip here that's a good hand Doesn't, that's a good hand I've heard good things I've personally never actually had one but you know I've seen heard good things no never in my life so I'm, I'm well I'm looking at one right now but I'm sure it's a lovely thing to have he's gone for the check back on this board like super dead kind of board there's not really any turn cards that you don't want to see so he's just hoping that maybe Alex starts like blasting from the big blind Unfortunately, a size is probably not one of the hands that you will start doing that with. Let's check. Do you know? Do you know? In all my time playing Hold'em, I'm not sure I've ever checked back a set. I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure I've got well, it. I've never had one. Neither have I. <laughs> so you've never had one, and I've never checked one back. So we're basically really in the dark as well. Just, just, yeah, just let this play out. Really, just, I think this is going to go better. But I can't imagine a call here. It's just uh, so many other hands you can have here in the situation. Some sort of turned eight. Um, Certainly like a six, maybe like six, seven off suit, six, five off suit, all way better than the ace high. So we definitely want to be letting go the bottom of our range. And this is sort of veering towards that. Not many worse hands you can really have there. Uh, quick hello to everybody that's here early. Thank you for finding us. Obviously, this is early by in Sunday terms in the world and especially in poker Sunday terms. This is early, but nice to see you, uh, PJ, uh, Super Zero. Dr. Avalanche, good to see you. Zild Roman, nice to see you again. Pashad is here. Daz Blues, uh, Box Waxer, legend of the free roll this weekend. Uh, Dinosaurin, good afternoon. Uh, 
good to see you all. We'll uh, have lots of giveaways today. Razvan, how are you? Good to see you as well. Are you in the card room, Razvan? You sometimes are. I met Razvan. Yeah, he is. He is. I met him. He's a very He's here live. Chat. You can yeah. go and heckle Nick. Please don't. Uh, poker speed run. Good to see you. <laughs> and our fantastic moderator line. Ricky is, of course, in chat. Hi, Vlarank. Um, we will have lots of uh, tickets for you today. Um, she needs to confirm how many, because I was going to try and do something about that. Uh, but we've got at least five $109 tickets. How do you like them, Apples? Those are big tickets. Those are some big apples. Big apples? Indeed. I have played with a few of these geezers, so I've got a little bit of insight. Jack just looks happy who, to who be there. Who have you played with? Tell us. I played with Adrian, or, or Adrian, or whatever you want to call him. I played with the two people before that as well. Um, it's very tilting, isn't it? Just commenting on people that you played with that just run better than you. It's very annoying. It is for you. Yeah. <laughs> Other people uh, would see it as an opportunity to be analytical, no? Yes, they would. They would do. Some people less salty than me would definitely see that as an opportunity to do that. But I am indeed the saltiest. Um, Adrian here opening up to 80k off of 360. Um, interesting. Certainly, handy. you could just pop in and there is going to be a pop from Alex in the small blind here. Obviously, Corn will be getting out of the way. And now Adrian's like, nah, this is a pretty dusty situation. Bit of TV time for Corn, I guess. Don't know what he's wasting our time with here. Mr. Corn. Hmm, interesting. Okay, maybe there should be, maybe there's some some tanking going on. Obviously, we've got two tables here. This isn't the final table, so we've yeah, got two tables hope, as possible. I hope not. Ship. Yeah, I hope not. For the sake of the stream, we do not yeah, want very slow folds. Thanks. Uh, King High board here, and Adrian's going to see that. And guess what, Nick? It ain't going to work. And he's had to snap fold, and that's half a stack gone. And Yikes. well, it's gone better than it would have gone had he jammed. That's what I will say. On better than that would have gone. Yeah, although you've got half the chips you did have, so you've got to factor that into whether it actually did go better than it would have gone. If you see what I mean? Well, he'd be out if he jammed. Well, how do you know he'd be out? Well, I imagine King Jack would have called, and that board didn't look very tasty. Runner, Jack, runner. Me. runner, runner, a bit. Uh, runner, runner. Got some support for Jack Sharp, the British player in the chat from Heavy Dawson and Craig James. Nice to see. Uh, McCleary says, let it go, Easty. You'll have your day in the sun one day. Well, it's been a while. It is quite sunny today. I just don't believe that I'm having my day in it. <laughs> because you're, you're commentating here. on the web stream. <laughs> what's, what's not true, I'm, not out, I'm not out in the 20 degree sun. I'm, I'm in, on a cash table, you know. Commentating. What a lovely, beautifully set up arena that I've got all to myself. I've, I've got people aren't allowed to actually encroach upon my area. I feel very important. There you go. What, what's better than that? Way better than Early, actually winning 37,000 euros in a title. Oh, who needs 37,000 euros? <laughs> you don't need to spend it. Yeah. What would I even spend it on? I've never had that much money before in my so, life. So we saw you in the main event on the outer tables yesterday and you were there for, where did you bust? Like somewhere 70th. in the 70s or something? Yeah, 72nd or something. Okay. And how was your main event? Was it interesting? Oh, Jack Sharp's all in. Jack Sharp is all in. Yeah. Let's watch this. Good vibes, needed. Good, good, good vibes needed from his rail. Yeah. This is pretty bottom. Uh, Jack's not going to be delighted about this, but he'll know that having that ace removal is pretty key. And he is going to go for it and will certainly want some more chips early doors. And he is going to find the blinds and the ante. Oh, that's a nice result. Mm. So my main event, um, well, to be honest, I think I, I think I may have, I think I may have, I think I may have fumbled it, Nick. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. Usually I complain about my luck, and while my luck is not good, and my bust out hand was pretty dumb, um, I think I was, I think I donked it off. I think I actually donked this one off. I'm not are, you gonna, are you going to share it with the group or not? 
I mean, I could do. Yeah. I mean, there's a few, there's four hands that I've that have been, you know, I had to take some sleeping tablets last night because I couldn't stop thinking about them. Four? Four hands that are, are sticking in my mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. and I think I'm making, I'll be making a vlog about it. So if anyone's interested in how, how desperately it's been donked off, there was two hero calls. Um, and two bluffs. I tried to bluff an MVP was... off of aces. <laughs> Did you? I, I didn't know he had aces. <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> if I had known he had aces, I probably still would have done it. <laughs> okay. So there we go. Tell us, tell us the one that you're most that would cause you to lose the most sleep because we can't go through four hands yeah, audio sure. only. Um, That's terrible. But let, tell us one. It's mm, probably. I say that I say there's a there was a blind versus blind hand against the uh, um against the nice gentleman that I played where I I heroed a three street like I limped and he checked and he bet all three streets on king queen five king eight um and he just like lost a bunch of pots to somebody and I time banked a bit and I was like oh I've used my time banks now I probably should call what have you got like <laughs> what have you got I had a queen like I had a queen I had, had a queen, queen. Uh, so I had to, yeah. I had a pair of queens and there's two kings on the board and he'd just been do, like, doing it off everywhere so i was like ah oh, maybe that he's seemed, just because he he lost a lot seems, of chips that seems fine yeah but i just got shown the absolute business so i was like pretty tilted off that <laughs> i got shown the business yeah it that seems fine off. yeah i know it seems fine but like it, you know but that's the that's the moment when the when the where the wheels came off basically oh, really? that's why I, that's why i'm most like dwelling on it because I, I was feeling really good until that hand. I had like 200k um, with 70 left, and I wasn't. Uh, I was like near average stack, and then I played this hand, and I just. I, I wasn't. wasn't a point where I was like, I'm going to fold this. I was just like, I'm going to call this, and then I just felt like an idiot. Mm -hmm. We got to. We got to work on that tilt of yours. Yeah, I know. Um, McCleary says uh, you're a great ambassador for 888, and really enjoy your stream and commentary. So there you go. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mark. Shot you. in the arm. Um, make sure you are following Nick Eastwood's uh, Twitch stream channel, by the way. Uh, Lime will put the link in chat, I'm sure, if you haven't already. Check it out. Um, one of the most entertaining streams in poker, and it's on in the chat right now. So make sure you follow. That's Nick Eastwood, our guest commentator today. Someone said, where's Cavalito? Uh, he's getting on with his life. He, he, did, he did nearly seven hours for you yesterday. You can't do more. I'd love to do seven hours with you, Nick. He did. <laughs> You'd be very welcome. Um, I mean, I'm going to get thrown off. I'm going to get thrown off later, which is are you? rude. Yeah. Well, 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 let's see. Let's see if someone else shows up. Um, <laughs> he, he did. He did nearly seven hours of a poker stream in his second language as a poker pro, not a professional commentator. I think that's pretty good. It's just not enough for some people, is it? I know nothing's ever enough. No. You give and you give and you give. Run well, open here for pocket eights. Best time in poker. There shall be no further resistance. I played with Galinsky. One of my four hands was against him, actually. <laughs> One of my four hands, I'll never forget. To announce five high on the river. He was sorry. Say that last bit. I had to announce five high on the river after he tanked for ages. Oh really? Um, yeah. That's so cool, five, isn't it? Five high, and he went, "No, that's not good," and showed me a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh." He tanked. He tanked with a boat. Yeah, he he was thinking about Jack because it was ten ten seven seven. Uh, and I'd oh, right. five, so I got I got counterfeit on the river. So I click raised the river to try and get him to fold like King Eye or something. And he was right. wondering whether he could three bet jam the river. So I, I was sat there thinking maybe I can get him to fold King Eye. And then as soon as he tanked, I was like, oh, I'm just dead here, all right? <laughs> I was just waiting for him to flick it in. <laughs> I mean, losing chips with five high is much cooler than you it's know true. just a bad beat or something. Yeah, I didn't have many of those to be fair. I just gave it away. It's so, so disappointing, you know. I like the narrative of just running bad. <laughs> Playing bad is a new Yeah, it's a new, new thing for bad me. <laughs> narrative. <laughs> yeah. Hi Tordoni, good to see you. Hi Poker Bro, good to see you too. Welcome along, everybody. 
Well done well, for finding us. Battle here as pocket nines for Alex, plus two. And on the button, Florin with a very playable ace jack suited. And a couple of options for which to play it. Could put some pressure on, a, on Alex, who is a middling stack with higher risk premium than some of the short stacks. Also could play as a flat, but he's feeling a little bit, bit less risk oriented. Both will be fine. As long as Mr. Florin does not fold, I am okay with his decisions. He decides to flat. Um, just uh, because we're just starting the action here to remember it's 2040. Uh, so, oh no, he does three bet, in fact. I thought I thought that was a flat from the... Galinsky. Oh, he's going to be so annoyed here because this is such a slam dunk jam versus the open and then he's going to have this flip, which he would have really liked. And now it's a three bet and your hand is just so often dominated, but you have uh, so, yeah, he's I mean, got so few big blinds though. He's got I think so he's... few big blinds. Well, yeah, but even still, you can't, you can't, it doesn't matter. You still can't put it yeah. in. Eventually he will fold, but this is, uh, it's just annoying because it's like, you can never imagine having this hand <laughs> in the spot and not, and not being all in. <laughs> I hope he can be less transparent with his facial emotions, you know, in other situations, because he's clearly very annoyed. <laughs> This is what he looked like when I click raise him on the river with a boat for two minutes. Oh, really? Just, <laughs> yeah. Just his annoyed face. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a call here from Alex, which... Oh. Will Adrian go with this? This is close. It does fold the big blind and the big blind ante. Ugh. He, has two, he has two big blinds. So yeah, I think, that, I think that needs to go in, probably. Yeah, I do. I do. You're getting, like, a massive premium on your money. You could have the only ace... Um, your situation does not improve by folding. Yeah, yeah, I think that has to go in. Um, Alex here can't fold, but like I said before, his risk premium is very high. He's out of position against some, one of the only players that has more chips than him on this table. Pocket nine is just a little bit too strong, though. So he is going to call. They're also quite deep. Uh, yeah. Ish. Let's see what the deal has got for us. Oof, what a flop for Florin. Bingo flop for Florin. Unfortunately for Alex, this is going to be a check fold unless it's a very small bet because we do have backdoor backdoor, but it's such an underwhelming backdoor backdoor, isn't it? I hate an underwhelming backdoor backdoor. Mm, me too, man. Naughty says Jack Sharp will take it down. Naughty, he will need some chips. Mm. Not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying he needs the double up at some point, I think. It's only about it 10 big for... lines at the moment. It well for thinks you need chips to win poker tournaments more at 11. You're welcome. That's that's the kind of level you'll be getting. <laughs> this All is a very day. close decision. The, the backdoor backdoor makes it. If you didn't have a spade here, I think this is a clear fold. I think with the spade, this is extremely close. Um, with the dynamics of the table, it might lean to fold. Uh, I'm honestly not sure, but it's super unappealing. I have to be honest. Let's fold. I think probably that you're right. The fact that there's short stacks on the table, you know. There's just not there's just not a massive incentive to yeah. start getting involved in marginal pots with the, someone that's got you covered. Mm -hmm. I am inclined to agree with you. So that is the second table. There's two tables left here yeah. in Bucharest. This is the second feature. Uh, yeah, we've got 16 players. The next payout is 2,275. Uh, euros and uh, there's 37,000 euros for first when we eventually get there. The geezer in the uh, leather jacket and the uh, maroon hoodie, he uh, on day one, I had him on my table and he gave one of the most egregious tanks I think I've ever seen at a poker tournament. Just shout out to him for that tank. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was, I've never seen anybody tank in that spot before in my life and get the clock called on them. Um, because it checked him on the river and he was deciding how much to bet. <laughs> and he took four minutes. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was ridiculous. With a, um, with a, with a value handle, with a bluff. Uh, it, was a, it was a bluff, like Miss Spades. Oh, right. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was quite, <laughs> the, the, you know, the best thing about it was he got the clock called on him ended up betting with like 30 seconds like maybe 15 seconds left <laughs> and then got absolutely fist pump snapped <laughs> oh really it was so funny, oh, just, he, couldn't funny. Have been called any quicker and he'd taken four minutes to bet 
And the guy's like, yeah, King I. He's like, yeah, pair. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Because no one's who really takes that long in their value bets. I, I don't think I've ever. Why would you? You know, it doesn't take that long, does it? Yeah, it's just not that. It's just not that no. hard a decision, is it? No. Oh, Adrian's all in here. Jack, not folding yet. Oh god, that's such an awful. Well, it's, I mean, it's not a lot of chips. He's going to have to call. Um, uh, he's going to have to I, call because he's it's three to one. It's such a small shove. Yeah, he's, he's definitely calling, but it's, he's going to feel sick to be dominated here. So unlikely you're going to be dominated. Um, yeah, Jack needs his rail. Somebody said he never loses an all in. Oh, he's never lost a flip. Yes, yeah, it's not quite a flip, unfortunately. And uh, by the by, Jack Sharp is an online qualifier. Pretty cool. Which we love to see because ASAP Poker is all about these stories, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Bush draw for Adrian. This is looking pretty dicey for Sharp, but there is some chop opportunities, and that not I anymore. believe is decidedly not one of them, Nick Wellful. It's not. Adrian will double up. Very small double up, but everything counts for Jack Sharp, unfortunately, for him. One of those situations that you can't do anything about. Uh, is that Tom Hall in seat one, says MKTDR? It isn't. No. Get, keep guessing. Yeah, I think it will take you a while. Well, it'll alternate, come up on the screen. Alternate guesses accepted. We had Daniel Craig on the table yesterday. Playing wow, the team. Daniel yeah. Craig? Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, it looked like him. I never, it, looked, it looked like him. I never bothered to check if it was actually him. <laughs> it seemed it was. It was an amazing yeah. lookalike. So, still so how would you, left. yeah? How would you ca characterize the play in the main event, Nick, in terms of like level of uh, ability, aggression, that kind of thing? Um, would you like a diplomatic answer to that question? No, I'd like a factual no. poker answer. <laughs> okay, Is it, we're still not we're not trying to the other room. we're not trying to pick up <laughs> the main event. Sorry, to that again. yeah. All my bosses are in the next room, so you know, I'm just wondering how. I think well, I'm unless they were, unless they were playing, it's not a criticism, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Um, yeah, I would describe it as erratic. Um, okay. Some some people are very very bad. There's, like I've never seen so much limping in my life. Like people, some people oh, limping really? like 70, seventy. It was the same last year when I played as well. Like some people limping like seventy percent of range. Um, never raising, like even like really strong hands, like pocket tens, they would just limp them. Wow. Um, so it was very weird, like because like obviously they're limping loads of rubbish, but then they're also limping. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that they knew necessarily what they were doing with that strategy, but um, it was an interesting dynamic to cope with because then anyone raised, it became quite big, and then you know you're suddenly playing like a three-bet ISO spot, and, and you're just super bloated. So it was very interesting dynamics. The, the, the play generally very erratic, passive, um, and yeah. It's Actually, what it sounds, to expect. sounds Ooh, quite. Uh, quite weak for a, a, a main event yeah i was certainly one of the certainly not to say the weakest but like it's certainly the uh the field i'd feel most strongly about capitalizing on if i didn't play like a donkey mm -hmm. that's what you shouldn't have done yeah you reckon it looks like we well, might i'm just thinking about here. it i'm just thinking about what your options okay. were and i think that's what you should have not done yeah we've got we've got a double here it looked like we might be losing someone but we've got a double for our maroon hoodie friend Four minute tank in position. No offense to him and supporters. No offense to him and supporters, but if he's going to do four minute tanks, <laughs> I'd rather he wasn't at the final. Yeah, he's one of those people that tanks when he uh, like making his first decision as well, like when he looks at his cards. Oh god, he takes like forever to drop his chips in. I was like borderline cocky. I think, every I, think, I think what live poker needs is if somebody tanks when they make their preflop decision. Yeah. Um, if it goes beyond like a 10 second tank, they should lose one of the two cards. Yeah. What about that? I think that would be, I think that would be good. That would stop it. I'll tell you what, there was a lot of as well. There was a lot of um, string betting, a lot of string raising, string betting, like misclicking, folding, like out of turn. Yeah, there was okay. all sorts. Going on. <laughs> it's like, it's quite fun. Um, one hand, there was like, I was I was like ready to act behind. There was like a three-way pot, someone bet, and then someone folded, and I was like going to think about my decision. 
and the guy that bet just pitched his hand into the mark because <laughs> he didn't realize i was in the pot so lots of like street stuff going on you know wow um, maybe yeah. people that play online a lot yeah exactly or not a lot at all maybe this is just something they like to play once a year or whatever We have got a plus one raise from the Queen Nine suited. Seems a pretty reasonable off of Alex's rather large 2.6 million. And again, Alex in Alex B in the big blind. Alex B in the BB, gonna defend with the A5 suit. Super reasonable and mandatory defend. Got shot and backdoor flush draw for Alex and absolute air nothingness for other Alex. Very confusing stuff. <laughs> Alex V is going to go for the check back, which I think is pretty reasonable. You don't want to get... Oof! I mean, that's a card. That is a card. That's a fun card. It's not as fun as... I mean, there are funner cards in terms of action. I don't think Alex V will be putting any more chips in this pot, probably. Alex B, I think, will go for a bet here most of the time. It looks like it's coming, and I cannot see a world in which Alex V continues in this situation. He's got literally one of the worst hands he could possibly have. Nothingness. Absolute breeze air wind how many more synonyms can i use for air before i, I don't know but I, hope he, go? I, hope, I hope he bluff raises now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't think he's oh my oh, goodness me. He's appealed. this is nonsense from alex hello. v and the river's an eight and i have to imagine that when you peel this turn you have some designs because this peel is unbelievably disrespectful to the big blind range because the big blind's all over this board Nick. yeah yeah it's a it's a classic big blind board he's just gone for the i guess he just thinks okay well my two overs are live quite often but then whatever there's a spade and diamond out there so like some of them aren't even good outs and he's just gonna fold the river now i guess like i mean he has to right is he though you you've, you've already got ahead of yourself once nick I mean, Nick, this would be obscene to do anything what, here. What, bluff raise. Root for chaos. Yeah, obscene. Root for chaos. <laughs> He's got absolutely no removal to anything with mm -hmm. a complete nothing burger. All he's got is ICM pressure. Is it enough? <laughs> he's going to have to jam if he wants to win this hand. It didn't happen. <laughs> So typically when someone, if someone came to my table and they were wearing that scary bandana face, I, I would yeah. think that they are never, ever going to bluff and they are not aggressive at all unless they, until they showed me that they would bluff. Yeah. Because why are you trying to look scary? I, I just think you're not scary, but maybe that's wrong. Yeah. I don't know. Seems an odd choice of a tire, but here we are. There's Justin. Hello, Justin. Back down there. Um, we have got Florin folding. Ooh, bullets. Quite nice, when, quite nice when you're down to eight and a half feet blinds. It's kind of above par for what you're looking for it is what's he going to do because there's a few options here what do you I think like is best? i think small I'll just go for a little two bieber see what he can make happen from there he's gonna jam how many big blinds is this i can't actually uh it's a uh, forty thousand small blind so it's seven and a half big blinds actually uh yeah okay, i think seven and two thirds I think I would probably just go for a min open here. And Sharp is going to be doing some... Under, he's going to be doing some tanking. Um, so Why this is he one, tanking? This is, well, it's just I'm a really, the really worried. Based on the early going, Nick, I'm really worried I'm going to be here till 6am. Oh, if you are, mate, I probably will be as well. <laughs> I'm really worried we're going to be here till 6am. <laughs> So yeah, this 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 jam is obviously fine. Um, he's going to show aces as well. Uh, this jam is obviously fine, but I, I wonder if we can find a little two little tour, you know? What is up, Murdo Gaz? Nice to see you. 
ticket winner from yesterday. Mafia Boy is here. Nice to see you all. Welcome along. Uh, you're watching Action from Bucharest. If you just found the stream, you're what's 888 doing live on a Saturday, on a Sunday. Sorry. Um, this is the final stages of the 88 live main event in Bucharest. We've got 16 players left. This is the outer second table. And obviously, we've got a feature table. Um, and uh, we will be playing down to a champion uh, unless the card dream closes before we get there, in which case it'll be picking straws in. The only reason I say that is so far the poker's been quite timid uh, yes. and also quite tanky, and I don't approve so far. So uh, they need to up their game. That's I mean, the I can... this commentator. And the, the other commentator, if, I, if you can call me that, certainly agrees. If you watch my stream, you'll know there's nothing that annoys me more than people tanking. Nothing. Um, usually as a product of playing too many tables or like just spending too long in each individual decision. It really, really annoys me. It's probably well, it, actually, it annoys me so much that you should just do it against me because it just rides uh, me so hard uh, that I just end up doing it off. It's very, very, um, I mean, it's selfish, isn't it? Because you're literally making eight other people wait for you. Um, yeah. And we all know when it's legitimate to tank. We all know what a difficult decision is. Um, yeah. Pre-flop is only a difficult decision in, you know, all in, you know, you've been three bets shoved on, something like that, then fine. But when it's just an open or not an open, then mm. not fine, frankly. Pretty mandatory all in here for Cornell on the small blind. This tank is reasonable. He's going to have to come out of it with a jam. Obviously, Alex B is going to have way worse hands than A's three offsuit here. He's going to use a time bank, which seems thoroughly unnecessary. This just seems like a slam dunk to me, Nick. Okay. 6 a.m., something like that. 6 30 yeah. a.m. Yeah, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. And we're holding, if we're holding King Queen, King Queen offsuit on the small blind with how many big blind systems do we have there? Seven and a half. Okay, so he's concerned about having no forward equity, but when you've got King Queen off against the button open, that's actually kind of pretty good. Well, you should you, get called by so many worse hands. You're just ahead, aren't you? So yeah, you're sort of waiting for a perfect spot if you're not playing that. I, re I do realize, guys, that some people may know it is quite rich of me to uh, complain about tanking when I spent s six minutes tanking 6-2 off on the bubble of the main event. But it's different, guys. It's different. <laughs> One of my fondest memories in poker, I have to be honest. Not even cashing, just tanking that 6-2 off. Because Jordan Banfield was on the rail and he texted me after the hand. He was like, oh, God, tough decision, man. Would you have jacks? I was like, <laughs> I was like no, 6-2 off, please, sir. I mean, that shows that you can, you know, act. Oh, yeah. I, I gave it, the, I gave it the, the lot. Adrian's all in. Close. This is kind of just a fold. But, like, I mean, Adrian's just jammed a king-queen off, obviously, from under the gun. Like, the other spot is so much better for king-queen off, in my mind. I could be wrong, but, like... Well, that small blind spot just seems like a like a really happy spot. Um, this is a this is an okay tank. I think I think Jack will end up folding. I'm pretty sure he'll end up folding. Um, but this this tank is is not completely unreasonable. Yeah, it also wasn't That's a fun. long tank. He was just checking the amount of chips and yeah. checking oh, stuff. Oh god! Fine. Alex B's got the boots, and he's all in. That seems unnecessary. We could that's, call here, we could click. Actually, that's actually yeah. really odd. Why would you move in Oh my in there? goodness me. Well, this, this is exactly why would you move in. So, okay. This is a fold, now, obviously. But why would you move in with the aces? I don't yeah, understand. Is, we could make this 400k or something. Alex yeah, yeah. would re-jam and we have the clearest call. Or you could just call. You could just yep. call as well. Like, I just think that this is, this is a... Well, you, so you, unnecessary. You're, jamming for, you're jamming for 50 big blinds. This is over a, over a six big blind shove. So you, literally, that's a play you make when you want to isolate. That's not a play yeah. you make when you've got the stone called nuts. Yeah, this is. A, I think we can agree this is a complete torch. Uh, obviously, it's, he's going to win chips with it, but like the most amount of chips you could have won, absolutely not. Well, it's very, I mean, it just very helpful for us as commentators that we literally the Alex has got tens behind because it's illustrative, isn't it? I mean, this is just a fold. Like, there's no two ways about it. You just fold. Like, old. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, this is why this play is so, because you have to literally call someone behind you with more chip, with more chips than you. You have to absolutely call them, and tens is not quite enough. 
So if tens is not quite enough, what is it that Alex Lee would actually go with here? It's probably looking like Queens plus to me. Yeah. Like Queens, you're probably side calling it off. Um, Ace King suited probably, but like no, this is Queens, such you got, a Queens, you, Queens, Queens, you got to call because there's so many Ace yeah. Kings and Ace Queens in yeah. his shoving range, like, and also you probably you probably take out aces from his shoving range because yeah, why would he shove with aces? <laughs> I mean, look, if he calls here, Alex V rejams and he gets the absolute lot. Yep. Which is why aces plays unbelievably well in this spot as a call. Is you get those re iso jams. Or you can just click like anything but this is 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 well apart from folding. This is the second best option next to folding. <laughs> second worst, sorry, next to folding. Uh, I I think this is a bit of a nonsense tank, if I'm honest. Yeah, this is this is egregious. Uh, I, don't, I I can't see any world in which Alex puts in two million chips with tens. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not. And yeah, like you said, illustrative of how nonsense this jam is because we've just folded tens which for 50 big blinds is usually just going to be the most nice slam dunk re-iso jam ever. And as it is, Adrian is pretty doomed with 11% equity. Not totally. 11% is 11%. And look at that flop. Now he's got a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have queen, queen or king, king, or it is super over for Adrian. And he will be the 17th place finisher. Let's and see. Runner, not... runner, no runner, runner. Oh, GG's. Well played, Adrian. He leaves us with, uh, I think, 15, actually. I think we we were on 16. Are we were on 16 already? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've brought someone in, in the toilet, I think, as well. Time here, Jack Sharp with his latte. I have to be honest, those are pretty good lattes. They come in a glass. I don't know if it's a rain, Romanian thing, but it's hot latte in a glass. What do you think about that, Nick? I, I assume you'd have quite strong well, words about that. I don't, yeah, well, I don't get involved in milk and hot drinks, so I'm like not the opposite of an expert. I have no idea. What is going on? Aces so again. That's the, is this the fourth aces? Third or fourth? It's at least the third. Aces for Joy, who opens up to 80k. Oh, my God. Cornell with the snap punish for folding that king queen off. <laughs> <laughs> snap punish. And now he is doomed to a queen. And... Unless something absolutely ridiculous happens, we'll need to see a black queen somewhere on those five cards, or we're going to lose Cornell. What is this time bank chip? Those time bank chips, you don't get those back, by the way. Not yet, anyway. So, like, obviously, Cornell should be thinking Queens is almost always good here. He can only have used it as like a sell selling point, but like, he has no fold equity anyway, really. Barely any. Oh, I think he, I think he does in this room. 310 k to call like 10p more. I think he does in this room. I mean, he's <laughs> Not against faces, upset. clearly. Yeah, he's going to be pretty upset here to see that. Obviously, as you should be. Just to query one thing to the for the Romanian players, uh, people in, who are in the room and in chat. The player with aces we've got down as Joy. It was a different player yesterday, a different name. So if anyone knows, him, it the... I'd love to. I'd love to call him by his correct name, especially if he's going to win the event or something. Uh, eight is a winning on this flop. Very perceptive, Nick. We need to yeah. see a queen. There's no back or nothing. Thing. Oh, that's a queen. Queen buggy on the turn. Look how happy Cornell is. 
I've never seen anyone so happy in my life. I kind of want to see an ace there to see what happened to him if, if, <laughs> if, if he got a spike. God, he's happy. Look at him. Very happy. Queen on the turn. He's gonna, corner alive. He is, that he's got the air of a man that's going to take those chips to the cash window. Can't do that, sir. Uh, yeah, very fortunate double up. 6.45am. Um, actually, happier was yesterday. I don't know if you saw this, Nick, because you would have been playing, but um, we had a set over set where the undersets set spiked the quad yes. card. I, I was, was on the table near it, and I heard it and saw it was the amazing. reactions. He was, blowing, yeah. he was blowing kisses to the crowd. I mean, that, yeah, he was I know. happy. Humping his chest, everything. Egregious yeah. behavior, if you ask me. What would you have done if you'd hit the quad card on an under set? Well, in an alternate universe, you mean? <laughs> I've never seen it, actually. I've never seen it, either playing or um, commentating. Uh, I think I've been one outward before in that spot. Yeah, I've been one out in that spot before. I've seen once. it. I've seen it. I've seen it in uh, PLO, but that's not. Yeah, that's not as hard. Don't, doesn't count. PLO doesn't count. No. PLO, you see everything in your first ever session. To be fair. Yeah, true. You imagine me playing PLO. God, I, I think I'd be in an asylum overnight. Well, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday uh, with Alex, and I think the thing with PLO is, is it's so swingy. Yeah. Like, if you're playing multiple tables in PLO, it sort of makes you more. Uh, inoculated to the emotional impact because you yeah. will you know you will get bad beard all over the place and you will also bad beat people all over the place it's just impossible not to have both yeah. all the time yeah. so it might be good for you could be uh, corner folds 8-7 of clubs uh, probably fine he's very very happy to have those chips I can't imagine him volunteering the back in with something as speculative as 8-7 of clubs given what we know about him after that king queen off fold earlier it's never i don't know seeing the king queen off fold reward did you know it i'm happened. just a spiteful i'm just a spiteful you know we had um on one of our magic monday shows which you should all be watching on monday night turning the worst day of the week into the best day of the week um on one of our magic monday shows we had somebody fold kings pre-flop and they went on to win the final table they folded kings on a, on a final table correctly. and went on to win it. They fold correctly or incorrectly? Usually incorrectly. incorrectly. I mean, incorrectly anyway, but also incorrectly. Yeah. On that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I tried to fold kings on a feature table, so I'll keep my voice down. You Not did, and you got, you, got, you got way too much. You got way too much uh, flack for that, in my opinion. I thought it was a completely reasonable tank. I just never seen anyone do anything so ridiculous before. So I just assumed it was just only aces. I think it was, I thought it was a completely reasonable tank. I appreciate that, Nick. Tugman did not give me the same light of day. <laughs> yeah, but Tugman, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> just, you know, ready to criticize. Very okay, sure. And, you know, you, you did the right thing, in my opinion, which was to think about it quite a lot and then call. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Think about it quite I, I, a lot and then cry cool, basically. Yeah, yeah I, I spent most of my time just thinking about like my life. I didn't really think about the spot. I was just like, why is my no, life? No, no, I, I, I get it. Yeah. And then once I asked for a count, I saw it. I was like, okay, I'm just not wasting everyone's time now. Just get this in and you know, get this over with. <laughs> and then but he turned a flush draw, and I was like, no, please. I God. can't remember if it was a four or a five bet, but it was like level bloody one. Yeah, it was level two. one. It was level one. It was level, it was level one. one. Yeah. Yeah. 150. And he was guns. under the gun. He was under the gun. It was level one. That's right. Yeah. And then I had three bet. If someone called. I had three bet. He snapped four bet and then check ripped the flop after I called. So yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. I've never, I've never seen anyone turn up with such, like a, a nonsense hand like that before. But like you said on comms, yeah. like people just do in these events, like they just come along and do it off. <laughs> they do. Just incredible. I know, I know I've made reference to this before, but the first time I ever played in Spain, I played a tournament and um, it was a similar kind of structure to this. And these two these two guys just went to war on the flop. And I'm sitting there going, oh, man, set over set in level one. Jesus, wow. It's like, <laughs> it's like top pair versus like Jack or something. Yeah. I in, go a, the, in go the 400 big blinds. Yeah, <laughs> I had a pretty fun spot. My first, actually, the first, the first orbit of my uh, of my main event was like everything that you need to know about the Bucharest main event. Is the, the very first hand it was blind versus blind, 
and uh, some geezer got a fa- got a five hundred big blinds in, so a thousand big blind pot with top pair, <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, it's too cool!" And he just got, he got up and left immediately. Five hundred big blinds. Yeah, it was pair. ace ten four, Jesus ace king against ace ten, and it just went bet three bet snap jam snap call, and I was just like, "Right then," <laughs> and then I played the very next hand. I defended my big blind. And the geezer just bowed out of turn on every street into me. <laughs> every street he bowed out of turn. God. So it is quite fun. It is fun. I mean, you're, you know, you're happy to have them. Oh, absolutely. You're happy to have, you're you're happy to have people doing that stuff, but yeah. definitely increases your variance. For sure. You kind of just Good need morning. Hands. Good morning, all in skins. It's poker morning, isn't it? Even though it's afternoon in most, uh, most of our... Uh, audiences, it's poker morning. Um, Joska says, Well, mostly the big players are out. Yeah, that's what we're worried about, Joska. We're very happy for these players, but we're slightly worried this broadcast could go on for a couple of days because uh, haven't seen a lot of aggression yet. Well, if, if it comes to it, Nick, I shan't be leaving you on your own. I will load up I, the espressos and I will sit have, here all night. You have literally no idea how much I appreciate that. <laughs> doing this solo is bad. I literally, if it, if I was solo tonight, I'd probably drag my wife into co-coms. <laughs> I, I, there's zero chance I leave you high and dry. Zero. Thanks. I know, I know that I know some other people that will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Me in another yeah. in another life, I would yeah. leave myself high and dry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're um, you're a nice person, despite what everyone says. Um, well, no, you're a nice person. You. Um, quick roll call because I don't want to neglect the chat. We just uh, we're going to have lots of ticket giveaways. Uh, Lime, our moderator, is just uh, struggling a bit with her internet, so um, we will. Uh, We've got a lot of tickets, actually. Lots and lots of tickets. We've got uh, some um, five 109 tickets. So those are big tickets. And uh, we've also got a bunch of 1650 tickets. Uh, so you can have lots of giveaways, but they're just not starting yet. Uh, but let's find out where everybody's from, because I love to do that. Just say hello and tell me where you're from, where you're watching from. Uh, it still blows my mind that people can... Uh, watch a stream from anywhere in the world and I can talk here in my uh, tracksuit uh, and you can hear me. It's amazing to me. Um, all in skins from Vancouver Island. What an amazing place to live. Uh, we've got obviously some local railers. April Nads, uh, Dodo Bandit in Romania. Spiderix is in The Hague in the Netherlands. Um, Con Martino Wait, from Sao Paulo. So we've got South America... Uh, we've got an all-in here from Galinsky, who is very sure stand. Let's see if he gets called. June side is from uh, Romania, watching in the UK. Razvan, we know, is actually in the card room. Uh, mm-hmm. Luke Basley is also in the card room, but actually from Scotland. Evfest is from sunny Newcastle. Lovely. Uh, it, from Plymouth, Massachusetts. We've got a Plymouth. They just stole all our names of cities, didn't they? They couldn't be bothered well, we, to make their own names. That's not exactly how it happened, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, actually have, have, we went over them. there <laughs> put flags in the ground I was trying to get it through is he <laughs> is he action and is Gorilla from Ukraine uh, I hope you're all as safe and well as you can be uh, Dorks Avalanche personal soldiers of Anthony Gormley's Iron Men on Crosby Beach that's very exotic well done um we kicked your ass in 1776 and don't ever forget it. I mean, how old do you we think it is? We weren't even trying. <laughs> also, also, you've segued into my joke, cooking it. What's the difference between America and a moist piece of bread? Um, the moist piece of bread has more backbone. No, it's much more sophisticated. Uh, oh, nice. But- <laughs> If you leave a moist piece of bread for 250 years, it'll develop a culture. <laughs> oh, I do like that a lot. Suck I'm it, cook it. You, play, <laughs> you played with fire, you got burned. Sick burn. Sick cultural burn. Lovely stuff. What's up, Andre Cos? Andre Cosmin, our stream team member. We saw him on day one of the feature table. Andre Cos, can you give me a water, please? Come on, Andre. Thirsty over here, lad. 
he he's probably not gonna. He's not gonna do it, you. is he? Probably not. So tilting. Okay, I guess I'll just, you know, die of thirst instead. Hi to Courier in Thailand. Good to see you. Uh, Isti's in Hungary. Another ticket winner from yesterday. Actually, our big boy ticket winner won a $215 main event. Are you playing the main event, Isti, today? Um, Cornell with another King Queen and another Slam Dunk Jam. Yeah, and he won't do it. How many bigs is this now? This he won't do it. He's just going to call. 2040 we're playing, so he's got 15. Perfect yeah. stack. Three standard um, jam, yeah. But he's called, so we're going to see a flop. Uh, Joska, thank you very much. So just to clear up that name confusion, it's Joy Tiberi, uh, Tiberu, or Tiberu. Uh, mm. We were calling him Tiberu yesterday, so Joy Tiberu. We have got a very favourable flop for button here. It's going to go check and fold. And another absolute rewarding for Cornell, who would have been called... Um, and would have had very little equity on this flop, 22% to be exact. Gaz so spent his is ticket. dodging all sorts here. Yeah, he is. Gaz spent his ticket already, didn't go well. Sorry to hear that, Gaz, but you can win another one today. Um, Isti hasn't played the main event yet, which he won yesterday. He'll play it tomorrow. Hopefully, make day two. Yeah, I hope you do. That is the plan. Well, let me see if I this. This button works. I've, I'm, I'm calling the bar with the button. I feel a little bit, <laughs> you know, that feeling you get where you're like, uh, I really wish I didn't have to do this. <laughs> I'd love to go and get it myself, but I can't I can't leave the booth. The booth being this wonderful hash table that I'm sitting at. I wish I had a button to Andre Cos. That's what I wish I had. Just to make him run over, like a shot yeah. caller of some kind. Yeah, exactly. There's all sorts of time banks going in here. On the on the outer table, well, obviously we don't have cards, guys, because there's no RFIDs on these outer tables. But we do. All right, we are able to bring the action via the exceptional. It's crew. a drone. It's a drone. Yeah, it's a drone. Meanwhile, we do have action on the. Uh, Armory table, and if something is going on secondary, we will head head back over there to see if anyone busts. Luke Basley is offering to get you a drink. Luke is in the room. I feel like that's above and beyond Luke. I'm sure 888 can furnish him with a drink. Surely, I, do, I just would like a water. I just like I just love a water of any description, any anything Luke. that could be des described as water. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's the kind of tank hold that's tilting to me. You tilted. I mean, yeah. don't get too tilted because it's, it's it's twenty to five. We could be here for another fourteen hours. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying conceptually, tank folding the yeah. king eight under the gun is not like you just just fold. <laughs> it's fine. Luke's got me a water. We absolutely love to see it. Cheers, Luke. Oh, legend, top lad. Get me a water, please, also. It'll take you about five to six hours, but I'll <laughs> still want it when it gets here, I promise. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. I've got more water offers now. Look at this. Oh, I've got a flat, so I'll have a spark. Here. So I'll let it go in, mm. That was a joke. I'm all, I'm all good. I've got a water now. Thank you to Luke, who's currently playing 1-3 Ron. I'm very jealous. 1-3 Ron, by the way, best game ever invented. So on the outer table, it's like Alexandru. I know that's Alexandru because he was at a feature table yesterday. It looks like he's all in um, for quite a lot of chips. But the graphics that you're seeing apply to the feature table. So this is very confusing. Yeah. That flush draw for Cornell, who hopefully won't find a way to fold it. I'll go for the C-bet, and I believe, I believe that Florin will be done. What is going on out here? Nothing, it's involved. Uh, I'm not sure about the cutting between hands, chaps. It's going to be very One difficult. Run, 10 10 10 10. <sighs> what is going on here? So, basically, we've got an all-in, mm -hmm. and we've got a call for a reshove, 
and the all-in player has 10-9, okay. presumably short-stacked. Actually, they're very short-stacked, so let's see if they can get lucky. Otherwise, we'll be down to 14. We are. We are down to 14. I don't think we'll be here till 6 in the morning, though. I think this is going to be okay. Time will tell. We're going to bring you coverage of it from Bucharest all the way down to the champion. Uh, let's thank you for being here and give away some tickets. Cool. We're going to give away lots of tickets today. We've got lots of uh, $16.50 tickets and five $109 tickets. We're actually so, not down to 14. That was a double for the short. That wasn't. He's literally just wandered off. Who has? There's no seat open. Yeah, there is. Where? This geezer here in the t-shirt, I think, just doubled geezer up in the in the white t-shirt. No, no. I, I, I what I said coffee. while you were talking about do Ron Ron or whatever the you were talking about, <laughs> I explained the situation. <laughs> right. Okay. There was a short set that was all in. Alexandru reshuffled the ace king, and another guy was thinking about it and decided to fold. And then the ace king held, and the guy that was in the eight seat left. Okay. That's what happened. I'm going to take your word for it. This the the moving colourful images in front of you are the what what we're going on. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's like that, is it? <laughs> yeah. I'm tilted already. <laughs> um, we're going to give away some tickets. We're going to do a keyword giveaway. Um, Lime is currently uh, struggling with some technicals, but uh, Hayden, our magnificent director, is going to step in. Hayden is the keyword ready. Uh, two $16.50 tickets up for grabs. Two tickets up for grabs. I wish you bon chance. The keyword, the keyword is early bird. Early bird is one word. It's our early bird giveaway type E A R L Y B I R D. Type early bird and win. Exactly as some people already have. Getting C with the uh, stop and go here in the big blind. Old school. Yeah. He's just caught. You, you do get to do a lot of calling in the big blind here when uh, you the short. And then when you do hit something, you get to pop it in. And he'll be pretty happy to take it down. Yeah, it'll add a decent percentage to his stack. Because when you defend there with King 8 off, you're thinking, it's nothing really going to go that well here, even though I have to do it. And then so when it does, it's like, ooh, like a warm, fuzzy feeling you get sometimes in tournaments. I've never personally had one of those, but I heard they're nice. You must have won some chips in the main event because you lasted. Quite I did. I, I had. I actually, do you know what? It's funny because I actually had the same cooler, A7 deuce, uh, Aces against sevens, except the guy didn't hit a seven. <laughs> so, I just don't like to talk about it too much because I don't like people to think I actually make hands because it's not as, not good for the brand. It's, it's not on brand, is it? It's no. It's counter counter brand. Yeah. Counter brand is that a thing? Yeah, we can make it a thing. Yeah, counter brand. I was I was getting, I was winning so many pots. Like this is what really annoys me. I was winning like quite a few pots. Like quite there was some hands where I was just getting paid in spots I should never be paid in. And then I just kept giving it back to, to whoever wanted it. That's what really annoys me. I could have just not. Do you know what I mean, Nick? Hmm. I mean, you know, it's ups and downs, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. It was the most swingy day you're I've playing, ever had. You're playing a game with about, you know, if you've got a big edge, you've got about a 20% edge. So, yeah. you know... You're saying winning it's a stupid game. Winning poker tournaments is hard because you've, yeah. got to, you've got to overachieve your actual mathematical yeah. expectation for several hundred hands. It's quite hard to do. Yeah. Um, it looks like we have another one of those options for Florin here. He could either three bet or call. I think this is more likely to call than the ace jack for obvious reasons. A little bit less playability post flop. Uh, but certainly nut potential in position here. Deep stacked. See this just being a flat pretty often but I certainly don't don't mind seeing a three bet whatsoever we do see a three bet very very nice aggression here yeah just applying that pressure to those stacks that really don't want to feel pressure obviously can't really pressure those short stacks because they have to find a spot where Alex is just chilling he's got loads of chips and uh, what's the last thing that he wants to do probably play out of position against the chip leader on the table. 
but we just put him in that spot. We just say, here you go. Yeah, and, and honestly, this might be one of the worst hands you can call a three bet out position with. <laughs> it's just... certainly, he certainly should never be calling, but there are some small considerations to four bet, to I four imagine. Betting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think probably because, more than more than small actually there because yeah, you know, it is the three bet light spot, isn't it? Um, yeah. and you're both deep, um, but it doesn't have to do it, but definitely an no. option. It's one of those hands where like you want to you can use sometimes because you just don't if you get five bet jammed on you just don't care because you have king ten off suit. Whereas if you like have like king ten suited, you don't really want to like lose out on that equity that you could realize just by calling so you end up using a lot more crappy offsuit stuff that you don't mind just snap folding to five bet Damn. got some outer table tank action back to feature jack in dire straits as we currently see it yeah he definitely needs that double up badly Cool. Uh, we're going to give away some tickets. We're going to run this, roll this free roll any second now. Cornell reward Two people are going to win $16.50 tickets. I'm uncomfortable with how much Cornell is being rewarded in this final, in this feature table. Here we go. Let's give away our first tickets of the day, Ooh. our early bird tickets. Two people are about to win $16.50 tickets. Our first winner is Moggio10. Come on down and collect your ticket. Moggio10 is our winner. You actually don't and need to come Super on down. Zero is our You're second winner. Wins. Never, ever talk over the giveaways. Never talk Sorry. over the Sorry. Sorry. The <laughs> biggest yeah. moment of the stream, Nick. It's why it's people here. Literally why people here. Mog Moggio Zero and uh, Moggio 10 and Super Zero, you've won well done. Uh, lots more tickets to give away, so stick around. What? Yeah, I think 9-5 Suit is supposed to defend there, but what do what do I know? Not a lot. If you, here's, the question, here's, a po here's a poker question for you. Mm -hmm. if you. If you're in a tournament situation and you the player who's opened has you covered, and you think um, they're also they've got me covered, and they're also a strong player and perhaps a better player than me. And you've got something like, you know, I don't know something something pretty weak, but the, like like nine five suited or like you know uh, eight six suited or something like that. Do you ever not defend because you just think it's a bad spot for you, or, or do you recommend? Let me put it another way: Do you recommend people not defend because it's a bad spot for them, or do they just should they just always be taking the odds? I think in a vacuum, it's harder to answer. I think you probably, if that's what you find yourself is the case, if if you think there's a lot more weaker players on the table than than the person you're playing against, it can be reasonable to assume that you're going to get much higher EV spots over the course of the table. But if you're on a hard table where you're not going to see good situations very often, right. then you're just going to need to take the ones that you're given, even if they might be uncomfortable or you think you might be at a disadvantage because there aren't going to be higher EV spots for you. Just You just have to take the ones that are, that are there. So I would say it just depends on the other players on the table. <laughs> if, you're, if you're on a table with a bunch of whales and you just think, is there really a lot of point to doing this? Like you could say the same for my main event yesterday. Why did I try to bluff people when I could have just taken high EV spots against people that may be potentially weaker players? Um, and, you'd, and you'd have a good point. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> I yeah, think it that's is hard. It is. Down to. Yeah, I think you make a very good point about am I going to see better spots? Uh, that is a very good point. I think that uh, it's definitely true that people do overestimate the likelihood of getting these amazing spots where you're just going to have somebody locked up. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. Galinsky's all in here over the floor yeah. in open. It will go fold. There's too many big blinds. Certainly not forced to fold. Loads of fold equity for Galinsky, who doesn't necessarily want folds, but he will get them. Jack Sharp, and we do have a few Jack fans in the rail. He needs your good vibes because he's very short now. Uh, he is rather short. Looking at two bigs or something. Short.
Thank you. No worries. We had a disturbance in the force there, guys. Sorry. It is fascinating to me that people hold Back on for the action. It's fascinating to me that people hold on for the different stages of tournaments. Um, yeah, as someone that hasn't psychological. spent a lot of their life playing tournaments. Yeah, mm. the psychological amount of I want to make the you know the, I want to make the final table or I want to make the end of the day or I want to make whatever, and yeah, like you're just almost certainly costing yourself by trying to Absolutely. hold on for things. You're almost certainly costing yourself equity in the tournament. Yeah, but in, in in some metrics, that does make them more interesting and better players. T it, it increases skill edge because the better players don't feel that. Yeah. At all. And, yeah, they, and they can sense the ones that do feel it. So it's always good when there's like those little edges that you can give to the skill, you know, I, I, I find. Um, and and yeah, we're human beings, so everyone's psychologically going to be affected by these situations. Sharp's got a probably unfortunate ball in here this sucks but when you've got something like this with a high card when you've got no fold equity in the big blind you want a high card so that you're ahead <laughs> like well, when they're forced all in i, I don't yeah i don't even agree this is an unfortunate all in i mean he's you know he's just looking for a spot where everyone's folded to him he's got yeah. and he's got something playable he's got three and a half like less than four big blinds yeah i think um he's just gone for the fold here we're going to be able to see how it would have gone for him. Um, the big blind. But you actually, would have been you possible. actually, you're actually now at the point where you know you'd rather get it in, like maybe with forty percent equity. Yeah. yeah, this is what we would have had. <laughs> exactly, nine eight of clubs would have hundred percent been snapping it off. It would and have been we would perfect. Have had, yeah. You would have had sixty percent equity. Oh, all in on the call on Unless. the on the outer. Short stack. All in. Oh no, we're up. We're post flop. I can't actually see. He's got a few chips, not tons of chips. Things are going on. I think he's dead because he's just getting up. Yeah, he's just dead. Dead. Yeah. No one expected that here in Bucharest. That man is deceased. Yeah, you could tell by the um, just the mannerisms of when it went in. It looked like it was already over on the flop. So. Well, I think I think we're going to be okay. You know, I don't think this is going to take forever. Never ever say that. <laughs> Never say Sorry. that. D you found yourself David, saying that before and been punished. David, David, and Tuckman and I have got so many stories of, like, the worst ones are always when you get down to heads up in a reasonable time frame, and then you oh, yeah. have to watch a four-hour heads up. And you know, I love poker, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not excited to watch long heads ups. Yeah. Well, we shall see. There's certainly some poker left to be played. There's no, there's no so, dupe of that. So, Spiderix, tell us, uh, tell us about Prap, who is who's got a big stack on the other table. Obviously, a player you know, not a player that I know. Cornell continues to pick up starting oh. hands. Cornell with just found he's he found two folds with the clearest jams ever with king queen off and then he found a queen on the turn against aces with queens mm -hmm. and now he just keeps getting ace king it's so almost it's just, like there's not actually any order or karma in the universe nick certainly no justice mate no there isn't but what like there is no justice that's the first thing that i will teach my kid <laughs> yeah there's no 100%. justice stop looking for it you're living yeah. in a random number generator. Yeah, you'll never find it. it doesn't you'll exist. You'll never find it. So he makes it two seven five with the ace king. Alex will fold the queen jack suited, and other Alex will fold the queen eight suited, unless other Alex has got designs. Let me tell you, Nick, they won't end well very often well Cornell oh my I don't know what are you doing? they do have designs 
Don't do it, Alex. The, the designs are live. Maybe we should not He's cut away from the flop in position. Designs. Oh, he well, is. We can still see the flop. We'll still get the flop. We've got an all in and a tank on the other table, which is why we're out there, guys. That's Kino. What a man. What a man. Love Kino. 10 10 5. Cornell, from what I know of Cornell and what I've seen him fold, he's going to be pretty un, un, I, unhappy. He's, he would find this rather unideal, I would imagine. He's going to see bet, and if he doesn't win with a see bet, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I'll have to rely on you to say something, actually. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out what's happened on this out of the table. It's gone forward. It's gone forward. Yeah, so. What? is going on here well he's made a small he's made a small continuation bet his problem obviously is that he's put himself in a situation where he's got less than a pot size bet left on the flop i mean this is just a fold surely we don't use a time bank on this situation we must be approaching yeah, but what, he, what he might be thinking is what he might be thinking is i've seen cornell dwell and tank and dwell and tank with these short stacks and oh, he's folded so I, I actually think it's almost worth appeal there just because just see if he slows down yeah because he's he's like betting so little off a big off a sorry he's betting so such little amounts off a off a short stack i don't know it's so hard to have a worse hand than queen out of space on that board like so difficult yeah queen out of space was not a good hand i i appreciate that um, Fenfop says justice does exist there's a wheel made of it used on Magic Mondays you're absolutely right there's the poker wheel of justice the only place justice exists in this harsh world <laughs> very very fair point Fenfop then make sure you join Magic Monday uh, Spiderix you keep commenting on Prap but you haven't fulfilled my request to tell us all who he is I presume he's a successful online player and his parents didn't christen him Pratt. don't know maybe they did maybe that's his second name jack's got jack four off uh he'll be looking back to the halcyon days of queen seven suited yeah he certainly will be soon if these blinds hit him which they're about to because he's going to be forced all in with something probably a lot Prapper. Well, that, that was the thing. I mean, you know, obviously he's in trouble in the tournament. Obviously, he's down to a very short stack. But Queen Seven seated when everyone's folded to him, and there are only three players, three, you know, three random hands behind him. Um, that was one to take, I think. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Spider X. Prap is an MTT streamer and an MTT coach. Okay, so uh, but and with big chips on the other table, so maybe he'd be the favourite for this tournament right now. Yeah, I like, I like, I, that sounds like a favourite to me. Also, I'm liking what I'm seeing from our white hoodied friend. Um, uh, some yeah, very timely yeah. aggression. Yeah, fair. He, he's played well as well. Yeah. Um, no, all in skins. I just wanted that little bit of info. Just a little tidbit about who he was. That's cool. I appreciate it. The rest we can learn from watching him play. We shall do our best. We will. So, Nick, where do you stand on international football? Do you have zero interest, some interest, a lot of interest? Uh, controversially, a lot of interest, yeah. not in friendlies. Um, yeah, obviously, as a Liverpool fan, it's a little bit of a touchy one. But to be honest, I don't really care. Like, I don't like the gatekeeping that's around that. Oh, um, yeah, oh, I completely agree. The main, the main reason is, it, as a Liverpool fan, I've not had many people in my life to this until this point where I found a few from poker um, mm -hmm. that have... That, the, but where my friends have wanted the, my team to win <laughs> so it's nice to, to come together every couple of years and all want the same team to win I would say that's where it's come from the most my passion for it because all of my friends at school yeah. obviously living in the south yeah. are all very big England fans that's um, a good shout. so it's, it's lovely to come together and just all want the same team to win and also like when you see people like Joe Gomez obviously he's like so happy to be in the squad like he plays for Liverpool he's obviously wants to be in the England squad like no one wants to gatekeep him from playing for the England team. And obviously, Gerard had a hundred, over 100 caps. And uh, Henderson, obviously, when he was our captain. Uh, so, yeah, I, I draw the line at the national anthem. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm happy. To, I'm very happy to watch England with the boys. Is is the answer? Good. So I like the big. I like the Euros and the, and the World Cup. Beyond yeah. that, beyond that, absolutely no interest whatsoever. But the Euros and the World Cup, I love. Um, not least because I love I, I don't play fantasy football during the year because it's too much of a time suck I just yeah. I know me and I'll try and get good at it and I'll obsess over it and I just can't be doing that don't have the time but yeah. I play fantasy football league with my friends in the Euros and the World Cup and it's brilliant fun yeah uh, that's 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 cool I do I do one during, during the year because you know it's just something else to gamble on isn't it <laughs> <laughs> there's, also, there's also that be, yeah. begambleaware.org yeah, we have the we have the Twitch. Uh, it's only a little a little t- tenors in or whatever it is for with the Twitch community. So with like Lucas Robinson, if anyone knows him, he like he loves it. Um, so I always like playing with them because it's like nice, nice little competitive thing. Um, yeah, so, and a lot of football. So any any more football I can get, I'll take. Jack Sharp's got seven deuce under the gun, and he's thinking I've got to be all in in the next stand. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but obviously this is worse than that. So you fold because yeah. well, now we're in now we're in a terrible situation. It's not obviously worse; it's just probably worse. There are a few hands worse than this, but they're not. Well, I, I I think probabilistically, Nick, I'm incapable of thinking in a binary way. Yeah, I think the Queen Seven is forefront of mind right now. I think it's quite, you know, quite instructive for people watching to think about when you are super short stack because it will happen in a tournament and, you know, you still got to try and make good decisions even though probably you're screwed either way but you want to give yourself the best chance of unscrewing yourself. Yeah. Oh, dear. I mean, Cornell has dodged every six... Why has this just gone all in? Cornell's going to fold. No, no, that's just a mistake on the graphics. That hasn't happened. Oh, okay. okay He's cool. made it up to thousand, and Cornell's got uh, twenty. Right. He's got twenty-five big blinds. Honestly, like this is just very consistent with what we know about Cornell. Yeah, he's not going to rip twenty-five big blinds. No, although it's certainly not a bad play. It's a completely no. reasonable jam. Especially against an open from a bigger stack that should be opening it obviously incredibly far wider than Jacks. On this occasion though, does have Jacks. Florin is intrigued, and I think call here is pretty pretty fun. Does block an eight as well. Yeah, based, based on little. based on based on his play, he's thinking about squeezing. Also. Yeah, definitely in his mind, certainly not folding. I think going multi-way with a with a with not potential is probably what he'll end up doing. But certainly wouldn't hate a squeeze. He is gonna squeeze. He is gonna squeeze. So now, this is the kind of poker we want to see. Yeah. We love it. This is why I, this is why I think Florin's got a really good chance today. Having said that, Alex got two jacks. Having said that. This is not the most comfortable spot in the world to have two jacks in, let me tell you. And Florin knows that. And this is why this play is really good because you can pressure so... Even the top end of Alex's range is under huge pressure here, ICM-wise. Because these right, are the two biggest point. stacks we have. Yeah, great point. If jacks are under pressure, then... If jacks are under pressure, then it must be a good bet. That's just true because there's only three hands better, so... Yeah. Looks like we might have a double here on the other table. Or is it, oh, this is an all-in and, and, and a tank from Blue Shirt. All in on the river, on the outer table, and we will let you know what happens. with Alex could rip. He shouldn't. Probably we won't, he is we won't, call. We won't let them know. We'll just cut relentlessly between the two and make sure yeah. that they're completely disorientated. <laughs> Alex is going to call, which I think is the only play that he has. And now Cornell is going to be, be like, just imagine if I flopped an eight. Just, like, just imagine the scenes if I flop an eight here. Uh, he doesn't know there's anyone left, but can you imagine the limbs on the feature table if Cornell pops out an eight here? That's what he's thinking. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably a fold. I agree. It's too much of his stack. Yeah, because like you're cool. just he's cool. you're giving you, he's always going to call, but you're giving up on the flop. Like 
so often is 8 8. And we know what happens with this hand sometimes in these events. Yeah. Six and a half. Seven and a half to one that hits a set. No, it's way more because it's 8 8. Sorry. Yeah, it's way more. But then it's discounted again because there is a dead eight, obviously, in Florin's hand. Florin will be pretty upset to see two callers. King 3 5. Oh, now, squeezes, squeezes yeah. flop. Squeezes flop. Heaven. So there should be no pocket fives and no pocket threes really here. Maybe in Cornell's shoes. Alex, uh, I mean, I guess there can be some, but it's not so, not so much as of, of people's ranges that you should be overly concerned about it. And this board just favours Florin so heavily that there's just no way he's not going to see that here. He's also got backdoor, backdoor and an overcard, which is certainly not nothing. Uh, and there'll be a lot of turns like a heart or a four or a deuce or just like scary high cards that Florin really likes. And Florin's going to win here. I think Alex has to fold. I mean, it's so gross, but this is why this play is so good. And he's been rewarded with the deadest of driest of deadest of favorable flops for his aggression. So I'm quite, I'm quite rooting for Alex to call just because I want to see if Florin has got that second barrel in him. You want to see if Florin's got that dog in him? Yeah, I want to find out how how deep the animal goes. These are not <laughs> real sentences, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh wow! Look at this. Hey, Cornell's folding. Love to see it. Brilliant. Look play. at this. Well played, Florin. That is lovely stuff. Lovely this is stuff. Quality, quality end of tournament play from Florin. That's what we came here to see, some uh, some fearless aggression. The worst hand of the three winning. Just yeah. literally the power of aggression combined with a big stack. Lovely. And now we go back to our side quest, which is Jack Sharp forced all in in the big. Any hope for the boys? The boys being the UK flag. Always hope. There's certainly hope. It is dwindling, I will add. And more often than not, Jack's going to be all in with not the greatest deal of equity in this situation. He'll be hoping for just one opponent. But he's got over half his stack in, I believe. In the big blind, big blind anti. Yeah, I think so. I think he's uh, down so to eighty-five thousand behind. So there really will be no no options. Yeah, he'll like to see this because the further along it gets, the more speculative, obviously, hands people have to force him all in with. This is not exactly speculative. <laughs> <laughs> And all he'll have to hope for now is that he doesn't have a hand, a card that Florin dominates. Uh, so we'll see. Well, it's it's Holdem, so you know he's going to have he's going to have some decent equity. He's looking for a pay ladder. He's looking for ladders. And this is a pretty much nightmare spot because there's no way you can't go with Jack ten off it. He's just seeing if anyone's close to busting on the other table. They're not, so he goes with it, and he will be pretty stuffed. Here, twenty five percent equity is probably less than he would have been hoping for with Jack Ten. Here, doesn't really yeah. get much worse. He's also got a diamond, so he's only got one one uh, suit live, which is clubs, and obviously a ten. It will need to be a concoction of those in order. I for mean, he's got like, to win. he's got twenty five percent. Twenty five percent is twenty five percent. You always, you've always got a shot in Holden. It would never be me. Let's see if it's Jack. A uh, pretty dead flop. No backdoor to be seen apart from 8-7 or king-queen of the like. No clubs available to Sharp as we go to a turn, which could kill him off if it's an ace. Not an ace, but it now needs to be a 10 or we're going to lose the Brit Jack Sharp. He's not feeling good about it, and it is unfortunate. Nothing really going for him today. Will he get there? He does not. And Florin will take another casualty. 
Jack Jack Sharp, I think we think, is our 14th oh, place finisher, 13th place finisher, maybe. Good game to him. He's the last surviving British player uh, who came over to Bucharest. He qualified for this tournament online. That yeah, could be you. Online. He got the whole package online and then came 13th for a good payday. At least a few thousand euros. Yeah, I think nearly 3,000. Um, let me just double check. We think he was 13th, right? So yeah. 3,000, 3,100 euros is not bad for a weekend's uh, entertainment. Yeah, absolutely not. GG's to Jack Sharp. We continue on without him. Yeah, well played, lad. Not a lot he could have really done. The Queen Seven's probably the only spot that he'll maybe think about in hindsight, but the rest of it, he just had no cards and ended up forced all in, which sometimes can happen. It really can. And we are now short-handed, which is my favorite type of handed. You like short-handed? Yes, I obviously don't you play mostly any. Play, you mostly play six max, right? Yeah, all six max, unless I'm playing the tournament. Uh, so certainly needs to be more aggression, and the more aggressive you are, the more chips you're going to pick up, generally speaking, um, on average. So this will favor Florin, I imagine, from what we've seen so far, yeah, I gonna, Florin. I, I was going to say, I expect him to start opening uh, stuff like this. I'm just trying to remember. I think he's got a short stack behind him is the only thing. But yeah, he's still going to open the 6-4. I think he's overly short, and it certainly won't eliminate 6-4 suited from his range. Um, he's got a pretty significant chip lead. Uh, this yeah, he's, got 15, is, he's got 15 big blinds. This is a clear jam to me. Yeah, this is a clear... Over the range of hands that Florin will be opening, which is, I mean, let's be honest, Nick, nearly all of the hands. <laughs> if he's Indeed. opening this, it's like a lot of hands, maybe 60%, 70% of range. Guess what? A7 suited, doing pretty fine. You have to think of your hand in terms of relative strength here. Obviously, you look down at a7 suit and think, oh, you know, what if they have ace-queen herder or stuff like that? But, you know, they don't just have ace-queen. Sometimes they have six high, Nick. And a7 suit, it does pretty well against six high. But guess what? It's that human factor again. Final yeah, table, but pressure. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're getting a7 suit to fold on the button, then, you know, yeah, opening six high seems good to me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Open, open all of it. Good to see you, Parabellum, Cindy Bear, Sleepy the Old. Good afternoon to uh, all of you and to everybody watching. We're very happy you found us here in Romania. Uh, Nick Wealth or Nick Eastwood covering the final day of the main event here in Bucharest. We have got uh, 12 players remaining. We're playing down to a champion on stream. Lots of tickets and giveaways and a free roll as well. Just to cover off the password for that, if you'd like to play some poker for free, but with $500 in the prize pool, how does that work? We just put it in there just for the lols uh but That's it costs you cool. 399 uh it is the 88 poker tv special bucharest live free roll so good they named it extra long uh it <laughs> kicks off in an hour and 15 minutes and the password is final table final table no idea how we came up with it but that is the password final table all one word gets you into the free roll good luck have fun and when it kicks off you can give us updates um maybe nikisa will play it i don't know it seems unlikely. Oh. I don't think that will affect anyone's interest in the tournament, though, if that's... No. <laughs> Potentially not. I think they're more there for the money. Florin with another super average hand that will probably open. <laughs> he will notice, he will have picked up that people are not thrilled about putting money in the pot on this feature table. Yeah. Oh, and look, if you open King Seven, stuff like King Nine folds, like it seems like a small thing, but you know, we're going to get so many folds as people, you know, and 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 Joy is doing that classic thing, like, oh, I never have anything. I would, I would, I would so totally do something if I had anything. Trust me, you know, kind of like reaction to having to fold, um, when really he's, he's probably no no more likely to play than anyone else. Alex is going to have to defend the big blind here, though. Yeah, so Alex defends here, and then Florin will very happily play a pot in position. Uh, oh, yeah. 
against Alex, who who has absolutely you know dominated in terms of chip stack. I wouldn't be surprised on multiple boards to see Florin absolutely launch. Uh, King High obviously can be good against the big blind calling range, um, but there are a lot of hands with a lot of equity, such as Queen Jack, that you don't mind betting against and just knocking out the pot sometimes. So this is just pure equity denial. Even though you have a hand that might show down eventually, you, you know, you don't really get to show it down super often. And you just want to deny all these kind of type of hands, like stuff like six, seven, and 10, nine, and any two random overs that, um, and a size that Alice is going to have that just like, you just benefit so much from getting to fold out here. I like the bet. Absolutely. Also, we can see it's a clear value bet. Clearest value bet of all time. <laughs> extract, extract from the queen high. It does have to call. I mean, uh, you know, maybe he's thinking about check raising. I don't know. There's no way. You got two overs. It's a very small. No, no, I, no. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm saying maybe he's thinking about it. I don't know. So my I don't read know what these people think about is, Nick. Yeah, who knows? I mean, look. Ooh, that's a great card for Alex. And we have King Seven off. As Florin, we have we have way better hands than this. But the situation is what is driving Florin's aggression. The ICM pressure, the feature table, approaching huge, huge money ladders. That's what's really driving Florin's aggression, not the quality of his hand or the properties of his hand. So I'm expecting more aggression here, and we are going to see it. This is not going to work. But I'll tell you something. If Alex calls and then like, it's a bricky river and Florin just bangs it in, we, we're going to see all those time banks get used, and I don't know what Alex would do. I don't think he calls. Uh, I don't think he calls if he's put all in on the river. I mean, we'll have to see what the river is. If it's a queen or a jack, he certainly will. It's, it's a hard bet for Florin to make. If let's see if we get there. I mean, he's going to call here, and let's see. I mean, let's I see what the. Uh, the river card is. Yeah, and I think there are a few that Florin will jam. Um, remember, Alex defended the big blind, so you should have a lot of like 5, 4, 3x, 8x, all of which really struggles to withstand three streets, obviously, of pressure. Ace Depending on the on river for the ace on the river for the action, for the excitement. I mean, ace I on think the river, he definitely, definitely passed. I think there's a lot of rivers that he piles on. Oh, uh, boring. And that is not necessarily boring because I st you, would you find it exciting if Florin jammed this river and Alex snapped? <laughs> mm, yeah, ish. But I mean, it's just not a decision, is it? Because he's never like obviously he might bluff this queen because you know if mm. there's a lot of one pair hands that Alex gets here with, aren't there? Eight. Yeah, just well, it's nonsense, by the way. Oh, he's moved in. No way. No way. Yeah, he has. Oh, this is just an absolute torch. But this is the chap that moved in with aces. Oh. So big bets, big hands, isn't it? Yeah. It's in keeping with character. I mean, oh, I mean, Florian is not posturing probably because he doesn't need to. And he, he benefits much less from tanking. In fact, it's just detrimental because he's running the table over so much. He's wondering whether... Alex can have like 5-4 here because the reason is you should never have a lead in this spot as out position. It's such a horrendous card for your range and so good for in position that you would just never, ever leave this card. Remember, dong bets are, are, are formed from cards that give us advantage. If, if a card is good for us out position, we get to lead it because it's better for our range. That one was not one of them, Nick. It was good for our hand, but it was terrible for our range. And the very clear bet play there was to check and allow Florin to do his thing. Um, that's one of those. That's one of those bets where I'd love to take uh, take him to one side and ask him what he was thinking. Yeah, it's 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 a real, real bad puzzler. error. It's a puzzler. Yeah. Uh, we've got twelve players left, and I am. Um, struggling to recall i think we go to the final table with nine in our main events but it might yeah, be eight it it's nine yeah 
It could be eight and it could be nine, Nick. Is that helpful? Yeah, that's the excitement. That's a bit of jeopardy in the uh, broadcast at this point. Nick, just talk for two minutes. I'll be right back. No problem. Um, well, Nick didn't say what to talk about, so I'm going to go with poker and hope not to disappoint, guys. That seems the safest bet to me. Galinsky on the cutoff here with uh, Queen 3. Going to let it go. Seems prudent. Joy has not had much joy so far today. Had aces in against Queens and lost, and then has had pretty mucky hands since then, of which he has not been able to do much with. Is going to go for an open off of 10 bigs here with a 10-5 suited, which is optimistic, but maybe he's just had enough. Corner was going to defend the big blind here with Jack 9 off. If he doesn't, I'm walking away. And he does. And we'll go to a flop here with two pretty average looking hands. Button versus big blind. There's one diamond. There's two diamonds and a jack. So this is a board where things can happen. Joy will be pretty happy to see this, considering how immensely terrible his hand is in, in and of itself. I wouldn't be surprised to see a jam here, just jamming. It's just over pot wise, it's a little bit, yeah, it's like 1.5x pot. You know, you've got good at fold equity. You put hands like a jack under pressure here, even though it should probably call, many people won't find it. You get lots of better hands with loads of equity to fold. This does this less well, but it still will, you know, fold out some stuff. Maybe like sixes or like sevens and like eight seven will fold jack nine will not especially with that backdoor backdoor as well going going for him with no diamonds when i'll thinking about it will probably call certainly won't fold and maybe we'll just decide that it's time to run this i'm back and just as i walk back i see cornell folding no, no, no way Cornell folds there. No way. Oh, no, 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 You didn't hear it, but I said that if Cornell folds, I'm walking away. No, don't walk away. We need you, Nick. I know. I'm only staying for you. Otherwise, I would leave the casino. Well, we're going to play what... just folded middle pair to one bet. We're going to play what does Nick think, so... Okay. How are we supposed to play what does Nick think without you? I think my I think my brain's exploded though. Like, you defend Jack Nine against the min raise, and you flop a pair, Nick, mm. and you just check mm. fold. I do not understand. There's a bit of there's a bit of there's a bit of fear in that young man's game at the moment. And yeah. the only thing I would say is that you know, we do. Yeah, a massive mix of players in these events, and some of the players have never played for this kind of money. Um, and it could just be that because he's play he's made some very tight decisions, and it could just Incredibly be not wise. Just just panic over busting, having come all this far, I guess. I mean, I mean, he's got a pair, Nick. It's button versus big blind. If you're gonna fold the flop, you might as well just fold pre, even though that sounds insane. Like if you're not gonna defend appropriately, post well, it's, it's, it's it's cheaper, isn't it? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gonna fifty k cheaper. Yeah, you know that is true. It's just an it's just an, an, an insane fold. It's a button open. I mean, I just don't know. I, I need to stop talking about it. Really, don't I? It's over. We got Jack. Here we go. Ooh, here we go. Uh, this is what I like to see. Did Alex flatter Jacks on the button? Yeah, he's mixing in a trap here, wondering if he can get any customers in behind as like a squeeze and then he can rejam or whether he can just you know it's obviously a speculative hand to trap with but whether he can just get like joy out of, like stuck out of position here with a hand that you know he just dominates post flop and then takes him out it's certainly not a bad decision three betting standard and then trapping more with like kings and aces is probably better but like as we already know he just likes to snap bang aces in so i guess you got to mix in the jacks as the trap there you go check so far and alex may check the other thing bet. the other thing the other thing peculiar to or particular rather to that 
trail of four is the gin card for Alex, um, and other the two other players have both got hearts. Is just the presence of Florin. Uh, oh no, he's not in the hand. Jesus. So I was going to try and explain it because I thought, well, maybe he's thinking Florin might squeeze, but I was one seat out. Actually, Florin ignore me because he wasn't in the big blind. Well, Alex is Alex just leave. a bet here. Yeah. Yeah. Just has to bet. Yeah, he can't allow it to go check check behind him. And so the Alex B and Alex B. Mm. Well, he's going to have to call. There's no doubt about that, but other people have had to call so far this stream and they haven't. So I'll wait with bated breath. We do see a call. On so your heart will be interesting. I shall. It needs to be a heart or a jack. It's a 10. And now we will see a sizable value bet. And I imagine some sort of tank into fold. Oh when my people God. Lead into... well, he's checked. He's checked. What do you mean, check? He checked. What do you mean, check? He checked. Hello, chat. How are we? Easty here. It's good to have you. 
Let me just bring up my trusty stream as we are still in Bucharest and we are final two tables of the main event at A State Live. Hope you can all hear me. Okay. Nick can hear me. I wonder if you guys can hear Nick. We're figuring things out, guys. Hey, you think maybe yes? Not that I don't trust you, Nick, but could I get confirmation for production that's also the case? That we are now both audible and ready to go. Okay, we are good, guys. We are back. We never left. We're so back. How you doing, Nick? You, you got to do a little intro there, didn't you? I was terrible as well, but I, to was be it? fair, I wasn't prepared. If I had been prepared, I think it would have been better. Yeah, you should have fully committed. You should have gone for it. We've had so many jacks and so many aces, Nick. Yeah, lots of jacks and aces. Misplayed in a variety I, of ways. <laughs> yeah, like pretty much all of them <laughs> have been bad. <laughs> Um, um, well, I, playing... from what I know about Florin, by the way. Yeah. This is game three bet. Now, in the situation, yeah, I think before, that's a very, we... very solid bet. Yeah. Uh, it's actually very just cool. Oh, what timing is what? Well. I mean, this is going to be a flip. Galinsky's going to be all in. Alex is definitely going to call. Florin will then fold, and we will be off to the races. Ace King Seward against Jax. And it's, I have to say, Nick, not an insignificant flip at this stage of a tournament. Well, not 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 to Galinsky, no. He is pretty short stacked, so he's got 10 bigs. Uh, we're playing 30-60 now. He is all in. Yeah. And this uh, count is uh, just for the cameras, because this is going in. And I think we'll probably see just call, although you could click or you could just jam. I think there's no real bad option that doesn't include folding here. Because uh, could you perceive of a world in which we call here and then Florin comes along? If we do live in that world ever, I prefer clicking. Well, or like well, just jamming. Well, Alex, I think is worried about busting the tournament as a general vibe that's my read um okay. whether that translates into shoving or not i don't know gonna be i sewed as i thought yeah here cookie. we go classic race situation can we not cut away from it chaps maybe maybe cover <laughs> yeah, the classic race situation, situation. Well, at least we will see a flop it, it just won't actually be on the screen I guess. Oh, no, here we go. Jacks against Ace King suited, guys. What more do you want? There's no dead aces and kings as far as we know. We do know Florin's folded, so these equities are obviously not currently up to date, guys. It's more like 50 50 or 52 48, something around that area. Now we're going to get them. You're way off. It's 59 41. We must have had a folded card because this is obviously not the case. We do in take into account folding that's, cards. That's the beautiful thing about our graphics. They take into account this is the actual situation. And it's changed a lot with that jack. Yeah. Well, four queens will still do it. And a heart will add a sweat. So any of those, dealer. That's a heart. Queen or a heart now will keep Galinsky alive in dramatic fashion. Dealer. Oh, and we've got another horrendous schooler in another flip situation. And a pre-flop all in. We had aces against queens earlier. Then we had top set against needing a lot of help in the Galinsky shoes. And Galinsky's found a way to get there as well, Nick. And will full double at the expense of Alex, who looks miffed, I must say. He does look miffed. Some people are comfortable sitting with their arms folded, but he hasn't had his arms folded all day. And so that is right. classic miffedness. He's not even uh, got Fentop his says on. we thought they... Fenfop says, we thought they'd stolen Nick W. Did anyone find David Tuckman after he disappeared the other day? No, you won't be hearing from David again. That right. ship has very much sailed professionally. Yeah, it's been uh, dispatched. Yeah. Car sells free of that anchor. 
No, jokes, of course. David is uh, not doing this event, but he'll be back with us on Tuesday night. And you should be back with us on Tuesday night because we are going to watch the uh, final table of the 300k guaranteed Mystery Bounty main event. Tuesday night, mark your cards, 8 o'clock GMT. I'll be there with David Tuckman. You'll find out far too much about his kids' hockey team. You'll also see some great yeah, poker, yeah. lots of giveaways. So see you there. Yeah, poker's not enough. We'll just like give you free stuff to be there. So, you know. Nick, how yeah. would you like to play Nick Thinks and give away more free stuff? Wow. Well, on the topic of giving away free stuff, it would be incredibly rude if I forego that opportunity. So get me in, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's do it. Let's just see this hand, and then we will uh, we'll give away a $109 ticket. Alex V down to a measly 2.4 after that. Unfortunately, He's all over the place. With his and Dana back on. This looks like a pretty clear defense from Blinsky. Um, that's... Yeah, so naturally, he'll probably just oh, let it go. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's in it. Sorry, it's a hunter, my fault. He's in a small blind. My fault. Yeah, this one's a fold. <laughs> but it doesn't mean we can't see some egregious lay down in the big blind. This would be pretty egregious. It should go well, Chancor. He's, he's, only, he's only got um, six and a half big blinds. So what's the plan? This stop go? Just, I mean, well, but this is just not really the stop go, go type of hand. What are you going to do is just stop go like one eighth of the time that you flop a set. It just seems ridiculous. Alex should see bet this board because you have, I mean, this is a case and point. You have so many hands that are better than yours that have more equity, that, that just have loads of equity that you get to fold out with a small bet. And this is just why you jam pre with fours. I mean, it's doing well against, you know, ace, deuce suited, deuces, threes, you know, even like stuff like King Jack, maybe you've got some fold equity as well. This is just um, another, not erratic, I wouldn't say erratic, it's just far too passive. It's far too careful. Um, it's time to stop the analysis, Nick, and give the people what they want. It's ticket Free time. Stuff. We're going to give away a $109 ticket, if you can imagine that. Uh, we're going to play Lord and Thinks, except it's going to be Nick Thinks. I'm going to ask Nick Eastwood a question. You, chat, person that wants a $109 ticket, needs to guess what Nick's answer will be. Mm. Guess what Nick's answer will be. That's all you have to do. Uh, one guess per player. Lime runs the competition in the chat. Her word is final. Uh, if two people are the same amount away from the right answer, whoever got there first will be the winner. So that is what we're going to play. Nick, are you ready to receive your question? Give me a moment. <sighs> Give it to me. Yeah, it's a big moment. It's a big moment. So uh, somebody just brought up David Tupman, so I'm going to channel David Tupman and make the question about me. Um, I just received in the break a delivery of a warm chicken wrap from a local food provider. Okay. I live in London. Sure I had that. Yeah, I live in London. I can push buttons on my phone and things come to me. It's quite cool. How many food deliveries have I uh, ordered to my house this year so far? Okay. How many food deliveries have I ordered to my house this year so far? Guess in chat. One guess per play. You're trying to guess what Nick thinks the answer will be. Mm. So we're in we're at the end of March, so nearly three months. The person that put 321, I do actually own an oven. <laughs> if you, even if you did it three times a day, that would still be difficult. Um, okay, let me think about this a little bit. Think about so, it. We've got an all-in, uh, small blind versus big blind, and uh, Joy Tiberu is going to take this one down. Very short stack at the moment. He's happy to so take I'm, a few chips, but he wants the double I'm up. Not supposed to, I'm not supposed to think about my my thought process, am I? I just have to keep that to myself, aren't I? Yeah, if you don't give extra information yeah, to people right. guessing. Okay. Let me think about this. Um, you just put your answer in, in my head. Put your answer, don't you? Uh, I'll figure it out. In the producer <laughs> chat. Have you got the producer yeah. chat? But you put it in WhatsApp. Yeah, I've got that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, okay so... Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
let's let's think about this a little bit. Let's think about this a little bit. So Evan and I mean this. Uh, okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let me go and find the producer chat. Don't okay, good luck. Good luck on your adventure. Get your guesses in. How many times have I ordered food to my house so far this year in the first three months of this year? What does Nick think the answer is to that very scientifically provable or disprovable question? We're playing I mean, we, for a hundred and nine dollar ticket. This is serious. I mean, it's incredibly serious. I mean, does it get more serious? Is the answer? Is the question? I mean, that's not actually the question, guys. Like, you, you don't get to answer that and win, but you do get to answer how many deliveries this, do I think that Nick has had that's this it. year? Which makes the answer to the question whatever I think, guys. Not however many deliveries Nick's actually had. That's the concept. All in on the second table. We'll see if anybody calls it. Doesn't look huge as an all in. Nope. Here we're all in. Mr. Green Jumper, who is a good player, by the way. Solid. Yeah, Prap, I believe his name is online. Yeah. An MTT coach, no less. But you can't coach having a small stack and getting called. Alex B. I actually think your answer is a pretty good guess. Thank you. Hmm. Alex B is in an open up. He has two cards, Nick. Oh, we can play along. Yeah. Oh, we can't play along. That's a shame. Sometimes it's quite fun where we don't see one of the hands because we can actually try wait. and play some poker. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean, fold? No, no, no. What do you mean, fold? King do suited. Oh, prop is out. Prop is out. We're down to 11. Potentially the best player in the field remaining, potentially. Certainly one with a solid online reputation. Uh, he lost a big hand um, some time in the last couple of hours and was short stacked. He's now out, so five on our outer table, six on our feature table. I know I should care more about the player that we've lost and we get closer to the feature table, but I'm sorry. He's just folded King Do suited on the, in the big blind versus about an open. And it's all I can think about. It was 2x, Nick. Yeah. I'm struggling. Help me. Nothing? Uh, nothing. I mean, I don't care about someone not defending the big blind. I uh, I care more about losing a player. So we've got different. <laughs> well, that's good. We, we, we've got, we cover each other's weaknesses or strengths or whatever you want to call it. Alex is going to open the cutoff. I can't wait to see what egregious fold the big blind makes on this occasion. Like King Do Suid, I'm not lying, guys. I'm sorry, but that's like, oh, wow. I've got King Do Suid. You know, you have to defend so many worse hands than King Do Suid. It's like, I can't believe I've got King Do Suid. How exciting. But no. But no. <laughs> Chat Rest really says, the wrong thing. <laughs> Chat Rest correctly says, it's not your own thought if you need help on the what does Nick think. This time we get a reasonable big blindfold. Make do soft. Look how many stacks of reds there are there. That's a pretty stack. Like everyone else has got like a mix of yellows and greens, and this geese is just accumulating all the reds. Have you ever seen someone sit more proud of the fact that they've got a massive load of chips? Yeah, like he's guy fully like... presenting. He's fully presenting yeah. those chips, isn't he? And his arms are like covering the, the 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 wingspan of his stack. You know. Yeah. Love it. Can't blame him. It's a lot of chips. 
Isten ez. King Queen suited for Alex B, which is above par for the hijack. Let me tell you, comfortably. Just to be clear, if you're dipping in and out of the stream, the graphics apply to the feature table. Our yeah. director on the ground is frantically cutting between the two tables, so try and keep yourself orientated. Yeah, that goes for you as well, Nick. I know you're a big fan of the cutaways. Love them. I think it's very important to disorientate the viewer. <laughs> yeah, and us. <laughs> uh, uh, the contest is closed. Well done for playing. $109 ticket up for grabs. We'll be the winner in a second. God, this, this, these chips are just like... It, it's very intimidating, isn't it? It's taking up half the table. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's going for. The wall of China intimidation factor. It's not going to work. In this hand, at least. I'd love to tell you what's going on, guys, but all we know is that chips have entered the pot and someone will win them. Yes, chat rest and alabaster. Lots of tickets left. I have in my I have in my possession four more hundred and nine dollar tickets after this one and several sixteen dollar fifty tickets. Oh, there you go. Um we're we're gonna get to an answer here. Uh Nick, I asked you, get excited, people, move to the edge of your seats. Hundred and nine dollar ticket incoming. Nick Eastwood, I asked you how many times have I had food delivered to my house this year, which is nearly three months old. What was your answer? How did you come up with it? You worked hard on this, I know. Yeah, I did give it some good thought. Um, so I worked out about like 11 weeks. I went with like 77 or 80 odd days in the month. I didn't exactly get it, guys. Didn't, couldn't be bothered. Somewhere around 70 to 80 days. And then I just sort of thought maybe you need a delivery. Maybe if it's something that you're relying on today, maybe it's something you rely on semi regularly in this kind of situation, which doesn't come up mm -hmm. very often. So maybe a couple of week. Um, maybe the odd time more. And then I was around about the 20 mark. And then obviously I'm C22. So I just popped a couple on for the meme. Answer, it's 22. 22. Here's the exciting news. You got the answer exactly right, Nick. That is what you think. Uh, the answer amazing. to how many times I ordered I food to my house is. Well done. Uh, also you. well done to someone who got it exactly right. Now I have to tell you, many people got the exact right answer. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh, well yeah. done. If you're listening to the rules. not doing it. If you listen to the rules, you will know that the first person to get the answer right wins the ticket. And that person is 22 Zorro. There you go. 22 Zorro went with the username. The username has made you money, 22 Zorro. Mm -hmm. Well done to you. Well played. Yeah. I think it's going to be very close. Like, I didn't just say it because it, it's in my name. I, I do think it's very close to probably what the answer is. You did say it was a good guess. Do you know the answer by chance? No, oh, no idea. Okay. Um, it just seems, it feels like quite a good guess. I get, I sometimes get lunch when I'm working delivered. I am partial to the occasional breakfast order. Ooh. Yeah. So that happens as well. And then maybe one, one or two Saturday night in orders. Yeah. I reckon 22 is a pretty good guess. Yeah, I think it's got to be pretty close given given the information I've been offered there. Galiskin, must be Galinsky, not Galiskin. Apologies. Same, same. This is more of a anagram of Galinsky. Nevertheless, he's on the bottom of Queen Seven Off, which is pretty rubbish, or certainly at the very most average, or exactly average, if you want. Joy again disgusted as he mucks eight three. But he did have pocket fours, Joy. He did have pocket force. He could have banged it in. Yeah, and he and didn't he never... bang it in, did he? He called and checked folded. Yeah. 
which is not what pocket fours really want to do. They don't benefit from seeing flops. So what they want to do is realise their equity. And the best way that you do that is by popping it in, Nick, and hoping for the best, because sometimes that is just what you have to do. Sorry about this, guys. Leave. There are some background. The authentic sounds of a card room in operation brought to you by SA Tate. Good morning in the call, and that is Bye -bye. not the flop that Joy Tavira wanted. Would you say that that flop brought him any joy? <laughs> it brought him devastation. Joyless flop, Dark Straits, you nailed it. Joyless flop, absolutely right. Rubbish turn, needs to be an ace. It isn't a club. Two Maybe out to remain, or we are down to ten. We are down to 10 here in Bucharest. George Tabiru, who played well yesterday on stream, got himself a big stack. We couldn't do much today, pretty short stack for most of it. He leaves us. 10 players remain in Bucharest. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it, it's funny to think about it this way, but, like, there is a world which Joy did not decide to enter that he jams pocket fours, gets called, doubles up to about a mil and then wins this tournament. But he decided to just call, check folded, and then lost a, you know, flip. So these little micro decisions change everything in the tournament. That's tournament poker, I guess. Just thought it was a little interesting, you know, shower thought. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a common fault i think that people have in live tournaments and i understand why because obviously you know he's played for two and a half days or whatever and he doesn't mm. want to he doesn't want to gamble that's the impulse um but as as we've seen a couple of times so far it's usually incorrect because you just it, it's fine to say it's fine to think well this hand's not great i don't really want to get it in as an underdog or whatever but you've got to understand the opportunity cost of not getting it in and the effect of the blinds and just how short your stack actually is. Definitely. Florin in gun with 10-8 suited. From what we know, this will not be missed. I would say by far the most impressive of our feature table players today has been Florin, probably by a good distance as well. Yeah, he's played very nicely, very well. Our player of the day as well with his uh, three-bet squeeze earlier. I mean... He was absolutely let off as well earlier on when uh, Alex decided to donk jam that Queen River. I think he was probably sending that. <laughs> yeah, because that might be right. So good for him. So unbelievably good for him. It's going to be a call on the button here. Yeah, Alex and Cornell. Florence's hands run together somehow. Cornell's just let himself bleed away here. Just avoided every single opportunity, every single spot that could possibly have been avoided. Cornell's avoided it pretty much. And no he did have like me. one million. Yeah, he's, he is laddering. You can't say fairer than that. He is laddering. If that's the goal, you know, a couple of more thousand euros. If the goal's 37,000 euros, this isn't how you go about it. But if the goal is a couple more thousand, Nick, which is fair mm -hmm. enough, <laughs> then good night out. you certainly achieved that. Um, Florin has got the worst hand by far here with 28% equity, but he is going to win this hand super often. Just because of what we know about these two players. There is some boquity for Alex. Certainly can have the best hand enough of the time to be peeling here. Has no option but to call. His nine's alive. 
probably, almost certainly. And he can just have the best hand. So if he folds, it's not really the one. But there's been a lot of things that haven't been the ones in it. And this is another. Oh, you can't. Oh, that's a, you can't fold for. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to be too critical. We're in the commentary booths. They're, they're playing poker. But folding for a tiny continuation bet with nines on that board is just like just giving away chips. I mean, I don't understand. It's hard to put into words how unbelievably profitable that seabet is in that spot. If they're folding nines. Like, it is yeah. absolutely mental. If you ran that spot in a sim and you put in that someone was folding nines, it would just never, ever not see bet anything. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. So, I mean, it's see betting probably all the time anyway, but like to see that, like you'd see the equities of that, of all of his hands just go through the absolute roof. Um, the, mad thing about, the mad thing about that spot is it's a single race pot. Like he yeah, could have it's... absolutely anything. <laughs> I mean, in a fi- it's also on a five-handed yeah. table. He's got two live nines as well. And probably Nine the best hand, like a good no, chunk. No, lines, really nines good is chunk. Not, nines is nutted there. He's opening like yeah. 35, 40% of his hands. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's utterly mental. Anyway. But like I said, before he folded, I was thinking, you know, we've seen some really, quite honestly, quite questionable play um, so far. It has to be said, unfortunately. Um and it just this is no longer surprising this is this, this is the meta of this table and like i said already oh florin if he knew what was going on here oh my he'd want to stay on this table for as long as possible because there's no other eventuality what do you mean fold king for suited there's no other eventuality than him making lots of chips very often against these players that is just how it is born has got a set of diamonds nick and if he doesn't jam here i'm absolutely done I'll tag someone right. else in. Right, he, he he does jam. Wow. Let's go, Cornell. Let's go. I quite like Cornell. Like I really liked how much he enjoyed when he won with the Queens, and uh, yeah, I think he just <laughs> he really I think he really wants to do well, and he's just nervous of you know almost certainly his big. Uh... Can take it down as we go to Alta. And we see an all-in the call, no? Yeah, we do see an all-in the call. Someone all-in for about 10p under the gun. Yeah, that is not very many chips. What is yeah. that, 100 and something thousand? Two it's big blinds many. or something? Is this the bubble? Cornell's in, look how interested Cornell is. Cornell's sweating it like his own hand. We've got ace-10 oh, yeah. against ace-queen. Ace queen. It needs to be a 10 then, or we'll be sitting back down. And it's not a 10. And he will sit to fight man, another day, Nick. Your man is excited, but I think it's probably not helped his chances of the tournament that much. It's better than being out. Yeah, double, double up to 20p. Oh, there's a few greens going his way, you know. Isn't there are 100k's, those greens? Nick, I think we might have undersold his, his chances here. Oh, yeah. That was weird. There's a few it looked greens like in he, that stack. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it must like have it been a... Uh, uh, it must yeah. Yeah, or, or it was just uh, the dealer had taken some of the chips into the middle and others, so that is more significant than we thought at first. Yeah, or or he opened to like 90% of the stack and then pulled it off, and that was like the pennies that were left, and he, they brought it in. Yeah, probably that. Because he was way too excited for it, for it to be a, <laughs> what we saw. Yeah, he was. Because that was more of a prolonging of the inevitable type situation. Galinsky with ace-four suited and a limp from Florin. Florin will be limping absolutely loads of hands here. Are we hand for hand, Nick? Do you have to? I think we must be. I don't see why we would be. We've got a shot clock. Okay. Okay. But, but we could well be. It does happen. I never understand it really. Is this going to get raised? which is reasonable. And Florin, his hand is too good to fold, obviously. There are some con there are some things that could be said for limp re-raising here, because obviously Galinsky has enormous pressure on his stack here. And this is a horrendous flop for Galinsky in general, for his hand, and also because Florin has pinged what 
we can only say is an unfoldable blindness blind hand. And we've got the only person that we can really trust not to fold it <laughs> with it in his hand, to be fair. It's a very fair point, yeah. yeah. We will have a check check probably. Ace four, he is going to see that, which is not the end of the world. Um, if you had some backdoor as well, like ace four of hearts here, probably more likely to check because you really don't want to get check raised because you want to be able to realize that backdoor equity. Here, without the backdoor flush draw, it's much more understandable to go for a seed bet because we benefit a lot more from them just folding and we don't care as much about bet folding ourselves. Lauren will call. Galinsky will hate it. I wonder if any of our remaining friends in chat know Florin. Uh, let us know if you do. Is he a known player in Bucharest? Because he's playing very well, but obviously interested to know any other background. Uh, about 1.4 SPR here. Galinsky with a million left. 660 in the pot. Probably going to go check, check. This doesn't seem like a very good candidate to be barreling. And does check it. On the river, we see another six, pretty much the cleanest possible run out you could find for Florin, who will be mostly value betting here. Yeah, absolutely. He gets value from lots of one pair hands, potentially gets called up, uh, called by the ace as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when Florin check calls the flop, it's not like he doesn't have stuff like 10 9, Queen 10. Yeah, you know stuff like this floats with like king king ten offsuit stuff like this that are very tempted to bluff the river, especially in this dynamic. So it is certainly not unreasonable. I mean, to see him tank kick at least. What is this? This is is this big? Pretty big. I mean, I like big bets here. I think this may just be folded. So it looks like a, like three hundred k or something. Three hundred eighty. Three eighty. 380, which I quite like because um, Glinsky's got a million left. Yeah, it's a good bet. Very nice bet. More impressive play. And we are saying, obviously, our hand is um, it's a pure bluff catcher, right? It doesn't lose to any bluffs. So if Florence is bluffing, we win when we call. If he's not bluffing, we obviously lose. So it's zero EV. Glinsky could flip a coin on this one, really. Uh, he's trying to get some information from Florin, who I don't believe will be partaking in such discussions. I can't imagine Glinsky calling her. Well, he's getting, we two and a half, he's getting a two, two and a half to one, so his hand needs to be good, you know, 30% of the time or a bit less. Yeah, um, I think there's a good chance that it is good that often as well, by the way. Yeah. Because when Florin says, here's 380k, he's not really saying he's got an eight. He's saying, I've got a jack here, at least a jack. Um, I mean, you could bet this with an eight, but like most people were finding this, this is basically like jack, I've got a jack here. Um, and then you just you just have quite a few hands, like the backdoor flush type, type hands, like just king high type hands, 10 high oh, type he tries hands. to he's be a hero. Cool. He's upset with himself. He really didn't want to be the hero. Florin was more, I mean, perfect line from Florin. Really good. Yeah, nice um, bet size on the river as well. Yeah. That was uh, just a very, so you'll find a lot of people betting too small in those spots. Florin understands the bet size dynamics and has appropriately milked Galinsky to within an inch of his life. That's grotesque. <laughs> a lovely metaphorical milking 10 players left in Bucharest we're going to lose one more and then we're going to have a final table that is the second table and uh, there's a couple of short stacks on there uh, so I don't think it'll be too long before we get to the final one way or the other uh, you'll get to watch it all playing down to the final table and the final table right here on 88 Poker TV. We've also got lots of tickets to give away for you. Uh, four more $109 tickets and several smaller tickets as well. So it's going to be uh, lots of fun to stick around. Also, make sure you're in the free roll. The free roll starts in 10 minutes. Uh, it is the 888 Poker TV special free roll unlimited uh, David Tutman Memorial Tournament. 
Uh, it starts <laughs> at 4.30 in eight minutes' time. The password is Final Table. Final Table gets you in. There's $500 in there for you to play for. Have some fun. Knock out some players. Tell us about it on the stream. We'll give you a shout-out. No excuse not to play. Open from Alex on the cutoff and Florent with the deuces. He's going to fold. Interesting. Oh, I would have expected mostly calls there. We've got another slam dunk jam for the small blind. <laughs> but Nick, as we know, that has not always no, resulted something. in a jam. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice spot for him, this, against the cutoff open with 10 big blinds. I mean, it's just a beautiful spot. It's like the spot you dream of when you have 10 bigs. You've got a fold equity. You've got a good hand when called, all in. Lovely stuff from Galinsky. And I have a lot of sympathy for that call previous because we know that Florin's been up to it as well. Oh, yeah, I don't think it was a terrible call at all. No, absolutely not. It's a, it's a pure bluff catcher and, you know, ran into it this time. But it doesn't mean that Florin's not bluffing because, as we've seen, he almost certainly is. He does enjoy it. He's here for it, which is what you have to be if you want to win the Yeah. Um, Alex just wondering whether this is just like... Oh, he's called. Too good a, oh, wow, yeah. I mean, if, if he sees Galinsky's hand, he will call because he's got 40% equity against it, which is enough, considering he opened already. Um, about as good as Galinsky can hope for here, and he will be needing to fade diamonds and tens and nines to stay in this tournament. That's so a really good start. No backdoors either, apart from the well, unlikely... Straight. Straight. But there's no heart. The more obvious one. Is there any now heart? There's no, now there's no nothing. Absolute nothingness. Galinsky will be very to pleased. Up to 1.2. Yep. And Cornell would have been anti-sweating that pretty damn hard, I imagine. Um... I'm not a fan of the players running away all the time. Sit down. Play poker. I, mean, I can only assume that there's some sort of all in on the other table. No, they just they just like if there's anything at all whatsoever, they go and look. Okay. Also, you don't get a prize for the final table. I hate to be a killjoy. I mean, I'm sure it's a good feeling. You get a picture taken by the wonderful Hemmer. Oh, that's true. Do you get your picture taken for the for the folks at home? Also, in fairness, there is uh, 600 euros between 10th and 9th. So that's your actual prize. Yeah. Hemmer is lovely, says Lime. Absolutely right. Our official 888 live event photographer. Potentially the loveliest, if there was such a thing. I think we're hand for hand, you know, because... No one's moving on this table. Are we not? No, maybe not. No, I think it's just, you know, when they're sorting out chips or whatever, the players just go and watch. All those red kit what all those red chips got chipped up. There's no more castle. I bet he's sad. I bet his his yeah, inner child is very sad. Absolutely. I'd be keeping those reds. Get away from my reds. All in skin says, telling your family you made final table sounds a lot better than I busted 10th. That's true. Yeah. There are a few psychological, a couple of little financial and, you know, photography EV decisions that can be made. But mostly it's just a small ladder and not a lot else. Yeah, and how, also how you feel about it should should also be influenced by how you feel about your current table, because if you've got a good table or a good spot, um, and you get to play it five or six handed, that's way preferable than going to the final table. Um, yeah. Even though going to the final table is progress towards ultimate victory, if you're in a spot where you can make chips, obviously you don't want it. I mean, like Florin, I'm sure would play in this situation for two more hours happily. Very, very happily and he'd probably have most of the chips in play if we did yeah he probably would Alex B's got a pair I'm just blind hello uh, Al Polo hi Pashan if I didn't say hello to you already Daisy Duke how's it going uh, S Butcher nice to see you 
Good to see you all in chat. Ticket giveaways on the way. We've got loads of the giveaways during the final table. I've kept them all back because sometimes shorthanded can get a little bit, you know, drier. And we want lots of tickets to be able to give you. So we want wetness. Wetness. You've got that to look forward to. It's going to be moist, central, <laughs> soggy. Yeah. People don't like the word moist, do they? The trigger word. <laughs> it's a trigger word. <laughs> <clears throat> All context driven for me. Um, twos are winning here. Although I'm not sure Alex B will be totally uh, excited about it. Well, we know that Cornell doesn't really step out of line in any situation ever. No, definitely no. hasn't so far. He wants that picture. Into the outer for something. Got a 125k bet on what looks like a turn to me. Yeah, I'd say it was a turn. There's one picture card on the board. This is the kind of analysis you get when there's no graphics. <laughs> I think there's actually two blacks and two reds as well. I think, um, that that fold was was, a, I think that fold was yeah. a massive, massive, massive mistake. <laughs> I think we're hand-to-hand because -hand, that, that can be the only reason we were there and then we've come back to this hand that's just started. Maybe. I mean, I don't think so, no, I don't, actually. I don't think we are. <laughs> no. Maybe it's just slow. Glinsky we're opens. Just to the we're just showing we've got the tech, you know? We have the, we have the technology. We, we've got two cameras and... By God, we're going to use them. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got more than that, you know. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. four on the feature, and there's like two oh, yeah. outer cameras. Don't worry about that. We can do a like split screen quad camera view soon. Lindsay takes it down. Still in the hunt. Ornell allowing himself to die a slow death. It must I, be said. I... I'm willing to state that I don't understand our graphic there. Okay. It looks like a range of chips in play on the final table. Right. Unless you've got less than 10 bigs, in which case. That's what in it which says. case it's not expressed as that. Yeah. Okay. Definitely yeah, different. I think they're just keeping us on our, on our toes. That's right. Um, Definitely different. Ace Jack for Galinsky. Picking up some heat after winning that flip. And in gun, five handed. It's pretty nutted. At least we have an appropriate big, big, blind, big blind defender in our formerly white hoodied but now black t shirted superstar of our feature. Which it will probably fold to. Cornell won't be interested with Jack Deuce. Alex will not be interested with King Four. I'm very excited to see an appropriate big binder friend fending range from Florin, which this does not include, unfortunately. But suited, it certainly will. Ooh, I don't know. He's, still, Florin. He's, he's thinking about it, yeah, because he just fancies the spot. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> He fancies he playing hands he, against yeah. any of these players, I think. He just knows he's better. It's, it's one thing to be better, but then to know it and know the dynamics of where the table's leaning and how like they're all standing up to see what's going Like Florence just sitting there playing his cards. Everyone else is trying to find out whether the final table bubbles is bursting. Um, and I know who I like in that situation. That's for yeah, sure. It's a, very, it's a very good point. If you're ever in this situation, you know, just focus on the mission is to end up with all the chips. The mission is not to ladder up one spot. So you want to give your full focus, especially actually the thing that's distracting them, which is the money jump and the final tail jump. Actually, that should give you more focus on the hands and the dynamics yeah. and the stacks because, yeah. you know, laddering up a spot actually is more valuable. So this is where you really want to bear, bear down. I do keep okay. mentioning this, but just in case you're dipping in and out of the stream, the graphics apply to the feature table. We keep cutting to the second table, but the graphics apply to the feature table. Yeah. 
And if you're wondering why we're doing that, it's because we can. That's it. It means we get to keep up with what's going on the outer, whilst also having up-to-date information of the feature. So if you're into limp here, Nick, what do you think about limping here versus a raise? Small yeah, I think big. limping is the majority of our strategy, for sure. Maybe 70% of our hands, all there or thereabouts, are going to want to limp. Maybe 20% raise, and then only 10% will fold. King high board. Decent for Florin. Galinsky with the most hopeful of backdoor, backdoor situations. Florin will check. Galinsky will do the same. And we will take a turn, which is super dead. In For Galinsky, at least. Gives Florin two pair. Um, probably wants to start putting money in the pot. Getting some value from stuff like 9x, 5x. Maybe some ace high that check back. But this will not go any further. And it doesn't. On our outer, we have the cutoff in the tank, deciding whether to open. This is really all I can do for you guys. We've also got a rather fetching t shirt. The first stream I ever commentated on was this. Really? <laughs> yeah, no card, no cards. Actually, for for about two years of another poker tour, uh, we had no whole cards. It's very challenging. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. I think I almost got a glimpse of um, Mister Mister Button's cards there. We could have worked with that. We could have Our done. angle gave us a little bit of hope there, but I didn't quite see what what they had. Basically, you end up doing a load of analysis and then you don't, you know, the vast majority of fans don't go to showdown, which is an interesting, interesting thing to think about, by the way, in terms of tournament poker. Most yeah, of the hands are won it. by an unseen unseen hand at this stage of the tournament. Um, and, you know, you never get to know what they are. So you just go, well, that was some interesting chat about that spot that we don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's more, much more difficult from a spectator point of view. Obviously, there's a direction we can take it in, but they're not as interesting as, as as if we can see the cards. Also, it's harder to sound smart. Yeah. One, once you, you can like see the cards, it really is easy to sound like you know what you're talking about. Even if, even when you don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As the case may be, <laughs> for myself at least, Galinsky, Ace Ten of Clubs. And we haven't picked up Florin's hand, so we can play versus Florin as Galinsky. I mean, well, this hand is just really strong. Yeah, but you've got you've got an interesting stack. Are you just are you just shoving here? What is this stack? It is uh, fifteen big. So shove seems good. Is it fifteen? No, sorry, twenty-five. I apologise. Twenty-five yeah, big. Ah, what's happening? Is... No, 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 no. What's that? I, I do think I do think if we just pause the pause the blinds and played forever, Florin would just get all the chips on this table. That is one of the most disgusting folds I've ever seen. That that was quite weird. I can't even I can't even think what would have been what would have been the reason. I know Why what the reason is. Turn that? It's not based it's not based in logic or poker, but the reason is he's scared. Yeah, he's just scared to bust. He's just scared to play correct against ranges Florin. against. Oh, hello. Yeah, you don't have to jam there. Like you can jam, but like you don't have to jam. You can just well, make it anything, like anything's fine there, apart from yeah, folding. Just don't bloody fold. Like yeah. anything, <laughs> please, God. <laughs> like it's you know. So let's let's play along. Flor we don't know Florin's hand. We do know we've got the nuts. What what is Florin's checkback range on that flop as the dealer open? 
He's going to be checking back a lot because Big Blind obviously is doing exceptionally well on 547. Um, so Florian can definitely have still have over pairs. He can definitely still have flush draws. He may even check all of his hands. So um, I don't think this check necessarily means anything for Florian. Um, there are a lot of players that will not check all their hands here, maybe incorrectly or correctly. I'm not sure exactly what the strategy is here, but what I'm saying is that Florian certainly doesn't just have pure let goes on this turn. Like he's not going to be betting all of his good hands and then checking back all of his bad ones. And Alas does defend, and there is the Ace of Diamonds on the river, which I honestly don't think Alex will be chuffed about. As I said, Florian... Diamonds. So I'd be certainly not I'd implausible. Be if, yeah, I'd be surprised if Florian checks back, check backs Diamonds on this flop against this player who's overfolded to him. Um, I mean, this is... Weird. I mean, we checked... We were Alex, when we were Alex before, we don't jam the Queen card. And now, I think what we have here is a pretty clear block. As Alex, um, yes, the board changed quite a bit, which does ch like move our value range into more flushes rather than straights. But that's just for our big bets. We can still bet small here with our hand and pick up a lot of cr straggling calls. Um, so well, we the, other thing you, here the other thing you do, the other thing you do by betting small against this player is you can, you induce some bluff raises. I think. Yeah, uh, bluff raises. I mean, I don't think he wants to wants to face a raise. Um, Jack nine off is what we had. So we turned top pair. Okay. Um, and that's exactly kind of the kind of hand, especially when we have the hand that we have, we unblock all of our opponent's calls, ace highs, jack X, that, that, that had really struggled to like fold versus small bets. Um, and when we check, we let all those off because they snap check back all the time. So anyway, I, I'm still not over. <laughs> I'm still not over what I've just seen. Um, what should have happened in that hand, Nick, was that Jack Nine Off should have opened the button or any absolute trash that Florin's opening on the button because he's probably opening literally all of his hands. And then Ace 10 suited should probably have put some money in, either in the form of a three bet or a call. And then we would have had a very different situation. Um, but maybe three bet, fold fold would have been probably the most. You know, that's what I would have gone with if you'd offered me the situation. Or even jam, like Ace tends to, but he's just not he's just not prepared to bust. He's just not prepared to run into Ace Queen and get caught. Yeah, and lose, like, I, I don't think that. any of these I don't think any of these players want to and this is a very typical live thing. Like on if you play online, you'll see a lot you'll see a lot more players shoving, you know, 20, 22 big blinds, whatever, over an opening raise. Whereas uh live people just don't like to do it anything like as much. Yeah, like if you play in a, you know, I don't know, thirty-three dollar tournament, you'll see people more than comfortable to do it, but you won't see it so much live. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree with that. Out of table. I want to say action available. I think that's <laughs> generous. <wouldn't it>, Nick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We definitely do have a population of 10 players, the vast majority of which want to make the final table, don't we? I mean, understandable, but I mean, are giving too much weight to making the final table, it feels like. Yeah, obviously we all want to make the final table, but there are some right. that have decided that that is the only metric they wish to play by. I mean, I'm struggling to remember a more obscene, a couple of, I've seen a few folds today, which... Three come to mind: the king queen off fold, small blind versus button open. The jack, the jack, you weren't here for the for the jack nine. I think you went away where it check folded on on king jack a. I think that's I think that's my least favorite. But, but then the ace ten is is also way up there. There is just an enormity of passivity on this on this feature table, um, and like you've already said said, Florin will be hoping this goes on for a long time. Down from nine six off. Cornell now down to after those posting those blinds and antis down to five big blinds. That miracle I mean, queen has kept him around and laddered him up, but he hasn't really improved. I don't think nine six off suit. I mean, maybe it's a jam. It just against Cornell though. I think it's probably an absolute fist pump jam. Uh, so there's a chance. 
that uh, Alex has been made aware of Cornell's tendencies, potentially in the break. And so he's just jamming range, blind versus blind, thinking he has infinite more fold equity than he should have, which is just true, I think. All right, off gun for Florin. He folded probably, but as we know, Florin is attacking this table with everything he has. Kind of off though, a little bit too weak with four to act. All in skins. I don't agree that anybody's picking on anyone. We're just uh, covering the action, the decisions the players make. I don't think. Uh, I think we've said we've said several times. You've been watching the stream that uh, the, some of these players are in a situation they're in rarefied air. They don't usually play for thousands of euros, and it's totally understandable. But we're still going to say if a play's too tight, fair. Certainly not personal. We're just looking at the cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I played against a couple of these geezers, and they're very nice people. But. Oh, we're so get Cornell is at risk here. We could have our final table, but a lot of times this is going to be uh, a chop. He's not happy. He's not happy. He's waited all this time. He's like, okay, blind us by an A7 off the, the fist pumpiest of fist pumps. Yeah, he's a bit. He is a bit unlucky here, to say the least. Blind versus blind. Yeah, I mean, just one pip as well. It's pretty brutal. We don't want to see a six if we're him either or a four because we now know that that means chops are super unlikely as two of those cards are below a seven. So the eight very likely to play, unless... Is it final table time? Prepare the final table gong. There are some chop opportunities now. Oh, wow. Or just win it. Oh, my goodness. I mean... The second time. The second time he's hit, like, a one card out. I mean, not a one I mean, card out, but you know, he's a, he only has one rank of card to hit. I'm not sure I've seen <laughs> this level of passivity rewarded so 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 often. I mean, obviously, we're waiting for good spots as Cornell, the only the slam dunk spots. And even in those slam dunk spots, to be fair, he's run into it every time. But he's found a way out. Um, Dyer Drake says you know, Cornell full on manifested that seven. Yeah, he's he's strong with the manifestation so far today. Yeah, I mean, that's going to annoy this outer table quite significantly. It won't annoy Florin because we know Florin is happy to be where he is, I think. The rest of them are very uncomfortable. And unfortunately for Alex V, he's lost a couple of big all-ins now in pretty brutal fashion. Um. The ace eight against a seven just then, and obviously the ace king against Jack, so he flopped a set, and and uh, Galinskis went runner runner for the flush. So okay, he's be so what we're going to do, Nick? Speak, speaking of manifesting, what we're going to do is we're going to manifest the final table into reality. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to explain how we're going to do it. We're going to play for two sixteen dollar fifty tickets. It's a keyword. So all you have to do is type in what everyone else is typing in. You're entered into the draw. You only need to do it once, and you'll be entered. And you could win a $16.50 cent ticket. I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dire Straits knows. Final table is the key word. Type final table, type final table, all one word. Final table as one word. Do it. Help us manifest our final table. We've been uh, two tabling too long. Let's bring this to a close as we manifest final table and make two people winners. Good right, luck, so everybody. This is a yeah, I was going to say there's a chance Alex jams, but like against Cornell, <laughs> if he knows anything about what we've seen, it's just not the one. So it looks like Florin may be sensing. Cornell's got just about enough back for Florin to maybe outplay post. The yeah, I was just thinking it's, it's, it's the play here just to call and see if either A, you hit a pair or B, he checks the flop. No, it isn't. He's going to yeah. pitch it. Agreed. Yeah, that was just what he was thinking about. Is there enough maneuverability here for me to play against someone that's definitely not about like battling for pots? I think he maybe just thought there just wasn't quite enough for him to, especially with his hand. Like he maybe I'd rather have something a little bit more connected, to more trashy like off suit, maybe one gapper, rather than king four off, which is quite often dominated by good hands like Cornell be opening. 
Type final table, get entered into our draw, win a $16.50 ticket. Two winners out of this draw as we manifest our final table. We're going to make it happen. As soon as this draw is over, I bet it happens. I'm basing this on nothing. I mean, well, you could you could base on the fact that we're, we, we've been ten-handed for a while and, you know, the blinds do catch up with you eventually. You know, you can't just fold around forever. Yeah, I, I, haven't seen a, I haven't seen a full chip count for the whole tournament, but I imagine we're getting decently short-stacked in this tournament. Well, we started short-stacked. Um, obviously, the blinds now, Cornell just doubled and he's still only got 10. And the blinds are coming through him again very quickly. The blinds, when you're five-handed, go through you like a coffee on a Sunday morning. So. That's it. 4080 we're playing, so yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's get two winners and a final table out of this contest. It's going to happen. Believe, people. Here we go. Our first winner is... Come on down. Up, Alpolo. Alpolo18. Friend of the show. Alpolo, welcome to Ticket Heaven. You've won a $16.50 ticket. And our second winner is, is, is Dinosaurin, another regular chatter. Dinosaurin, congratulations. Come on down and collect your $16.50 prize. Wow is right, Alpolo. It really does happen. It could be you. Hey, what? Galinsky stepping. For the first time. I mean, explain to me, please, Nick, how we find the king seven off blind burst blind and we don't find ace ten of suit <laughs> small blind versus button make well, it make sense you've got to know when you're going to make top pair that's what you're missing out on nick right maybe i should make top pair more often if you didn't just small win a ticket please pair. don't worry we've got a lot of tickets left including four 109 dollar tickets uh which we'll give away uh on our final table uh, and if you're not already, you should be in the free roll. So the free roll is the uh, 8 8 Poker TV special David Tutman Memorial Bucharest Live free roll uh, running right now. You've got about 15 minutes or so to get in there. The password is final table. There's $500 to play for. And if you do well, we'll give you a shout on the stream. Are we breaking? Everyone seems to have left. Uh, only if somebody's been knocked out on the outer table. Maybe they're watching a hand. Okay, so Florin has decided that. Oh, wow, well, don't snap call. Don't snap call. Whatever you do. Okay. Glinsky goes for the snap versus Florin's step here on the turn. He's decided to go for a little stab. And the river is a club. And I can only imagine that Florin will be applying some pressure here. You cannot have a worse hand than this at all. You'll probably attempt to win the pot on the turn with a lot of club x hands that will now want a value bet it will also just get a lot of folds naturally from the situation that we're in final table bubble against a player that we know is not comfortable versus big decisions and it is going to be yeah, a bet what this size is, this is going to use worth a bet and uh, we can see that galinsky's got a horrible spot here because the three of clubs beats him <laughs> obviously yeah, and, and by the way, the three of clubs are probably worth value here. So, you know, any club here, blind versus blind, because it's so wide. You know, it's not like Galinsky can't have any good clubs here. But it's just like, oh, when you're Florin, you just have so much rubbish that gets to this river. This is the most rubbish of the rubbish. So you just have to, you've got no pair. You can't show down at all in any description. Also also worth remembering, Galinsky heroed him once before in this exact situation. Yeah. And now he's not going to hero him. And I think that's very important. He heroed him for a significant pot at the time and, and was frustrated that he was wrong. And I think that does affect that fold. 100%. Yeah, you don't expect someone to bluff you twice. And honestly, I know it's not the traditional way of doing things. And it's probably, I'm probably wrong here, but I would have probably win willed that bluff in his face because it would just send him... I mean, you know, psychological warfare. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's a fair point. Look, he might be playing, those two might be playing for thousands of euros heads up later. And yeah. if you can, and also it's just very off balancing it's if, if you've got it wrong twice, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you can really destabilize him there, I think, by windmilling that. I 
I didn't like the snap call on the turn. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that led into um, the aggression we saw on the river. Obviously, he had 10 high, so he's probably going to bluff anyway. But I think that would have made him very happy to bluff. Because with some sort of club type hand, at least, certainly with a flush already made, you'd never, you'd never expect a snap call. Um, it just leans itself to exactly what the kind of hand that, that Galinsky had. Just a pair that's never raising, never folding kind of thing. And if someone has a pair, then they're, you know, less likely to have another card that's flush making in their hand. So very good aggression again from our standout player by a long distance. Florin. Alex B has, I think, a jam here. Yeah, pretty clear jam. A seven off suit. Wants to realize his equity. Oh, okay. Okay. It doesn't do well post-op this so hand, which is why I think, I think you've, got to, you've got to adjust your expectation here, Nick, because these players are just not jamming chips in the pot. Yeah, but even, not. even still, Nick, like this hand is so slam dunk as a blind versus blind jam. Um, in this situation where the final table bubble is upon us and we've got a you know, a player that will definitely not want to risk their tournament. You just get to parlay seven in like so unbelievably happy. It's not like we're risking anything. We've got three times the amount of chips, you know. We just get to pile it in and get all the folds in the world. As it is, Galinsky's hit gin here, as we can see. Why would you face yourself with this situation when you can just pile it in and win like 90% of the time? This is what I don't understand. Maybe even higher, honestly. It might even be higher. Because do we do we don't do we even know if Galinsky's finding any limps with like strong hands? Like many players don't, which makes it makes jamming even better because you don't run into traps as often. An A7 offsuit obviously plays horrendously post flop, but you know, when all in, plays pretty well. Gets to realize all of its equity and it's got a high card. Obviously, the most of its value comes from just getting folds, which it does obviously very well, blocking that ace. We get a showdown here of four cards. One of them, two of them have been folded and a pot is being pushed. That's what I've got for you, Nick. Well, that player, Alexandru, uh, was uh, on our stream yesterday for a decent amount of time. He's... Uh... Had good chips for a lot of this tournament. Looks a little bit short there and needed that win, but now looks uh, looks fine again. There you go. Filled it in. I'm very, very distraught that we didn't manifest the final table by doing the final table manifest ticket giveaway. Very distraught. I mean, it, it really does beg the question, Nick. What more can we do? It really does. Try again, says Happy Ray. That's very funny. Yeah, someone wants another ticket. Very funny. If Cornell doesn't defend this ace, I just want you to take it in stride, okay? I don't think... Just take it no. in stride. Okay, take it and try. Breathe, breathe through it, breathe through it, breathe through it. You've got to accept that these players are not playing as you would play. I mean, most of the time, I think that's a good thing when people don't play like me. But here, I'm decidedly <laughs> not sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the only surprise here is that Florin isn't playing even more hands. I mean, he's playing the most hands of the five, but... It's sort of surprising you're playing all the hands. I, I mean, let me let, let's make this one thing clear. If Florin knew what was going on here, he he would be playing all the hands without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Um, he uh, he can only know what he he can feel from the vibe. The vibe will definitely feel to him as if people are being too tight. If he saw what was going on, oh my goodness! You know what I mean. <laughs> I do know what you mean. I mean, if these players, these players should have, I mean, I don't know uh, 
you know, don't know how many of them do, but these players uh, should have somebody watching the stream for them. So we're we're yeah, on exactly. a half hour we're on a half hour delay um, to real time events, obviously to preserve the integrity of the game. But they can they they can have somebody watch the stream and tell them how people are playing. That's just a feature of uh, feature table poker. And um, well, they you know, can he only, should be getting that word. They can only do that in um, in breaks because they're not allowed their phones at this feature table. Good point. So it can only be done in a break. Very good point, yeah. But we have had a break and there has been some egregious things going on. <laughs> so... Maybe someone knows something. Maybe, maybe. I mean, Florin, I think, is, you can get a feel for it. Certainly not like, okay, people are folding ace ten of clubs versus button open, but, you know, there's certainly a, some sort of feel you can get from the table you're playing that people are just not, not here for it. It being playing the game. <laughs> they want to make the final table. Oh, wow. Folded round to the big blind. A walk for Florin, which when there's an ante in play should should not be happening five-handed, I would suggest. Yeah, and um, I think the only player that will be getting walks is Florin, to be honest. Because mm -hmm. Florin can't fold to Florin's big blind. That's the one. Exactly. <laughs> well put. <laughs> Alex is all in. We're playing forty eighty, so this this tournament is pretty short stack right now. Yeah, we've been here for a while trying to get rid of someone. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to, when we do get to the final table, we're going to be bringing some short stacks to the final table. Um, yeah, so, absolutely. you know, it feels like we haven't made any progress, but the blinds are immutable and there will be a faster period of eliminations at some point this afternoon. <laughs> Shameless plug, but my YouTube video just went live. Just saying, but uh, you, you know, you can stay here. You can stay here. I'll allow it. What? What, what is your? Well, you did. That's not really a plug. So you didn't really just putting up a video. Like you've got to sell it. What is it? Yeah, I know, but I don't want to sell it too hard that people don't want to be here anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of a sly mention. Okay. I was trying to help you out, but fine. <laughs> it's my top 10 hands that I release every Sunday, but I've had a few weeks off because my editor had some, had to have some time off. Um, top 10 top hands? hands Do you ever put hands that you've won in there? If I ever won any, they would, they would it's make just it. Just like, it's just like devastating <laughs> losses after devastating losses. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever watched my channel, you know how accurate that actually is, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, people don't tune into my channel to see me win. Let me tell you that for free. I just feel like it's bad for your soul. I feel like you need some positivity, Nick. Well, I think my soul is, just, you know, sad. beyond it's health. a sad soul. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's certainly sad. Oh, last call for the free roll. We've got seven or eight minutes left for you to jump in if you haven't already. The 88 Poker TV special free roll David Tutman Memorial Tournament. Uh, late registration still available. Seven or eight minutes. There's $500 for you to pay completely free of charge. And there's $500 in there. How does that work? It's just upside. It's all upside. We love upside. I don't know what Alex is thinking about. Dinner, presumably. Well, when, when, you know, everyone's thinking about dinner. 
I'm thinking about dinner actually. I'm starting to wonder. Now, if I'll yesterday, ever controversially, they didn't have a dinner break. I don't know if they plan to today or not. I don't know. I think they may ask the players potentially. I think that it may just be because they do. You can the, the food is quite good in the casino, so I think that people would like eat on the side or they just order it for the break, and it's quite smooth. So it might yeah. be that. Just trolling says we're eating breakfast in Canada. Good morning, welcome to your Sunday. I've just had it confirmed to me there is no dinner break, so it'll just be normal breaks all the way. Seems fine. It means we will more likely get off earlier. Yeah, I know you don't like saying that, but maybe you'll sleep at some point. <laughs> Gary's drinking beer. Seems fine. It's uh, there's a bit of sunshine out in London this afternoon. It's not warm, obviously, but there's a bit of sunshine. We got twenty degrees um, here today in Bucharest. Twenty. Yeah, twenty. Lovely. Just a reminder, you're watching the final stages of the 88 Live main event in Bucharest. And uh, first place is €37,000. These players have got €3,600 locked up. Waiting for one more elimination before our final table, and we will cover the final table down to a champion. And we've got lots of tickets to give away, $109 tickets uh, in our possession that will be won by one of you. So stick around. Um, first hand says it was very sunny on the south coast this morning. Good. Good. We are we are getting there. It is going to be spring soon. Spring, it will be sprung upon us. Unlike this final table, anytime soon. Maybe we'll make it to summer before this final table pops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this is the longest I think I've ever. This is like a good. Yeah, I think this is probably the longest I've had like five on two tables and not had a bust out. Yeah, this is a. There's not a lot of. We had we had this player here with all those stacks of reds. They've become greens, and now they've sort of they look a bit wimpy. Yeah, they're dwindling. I think they might have lost a few pots, you know. Um, it's not looking good for that player. But, you know, the shorter the stacks are on the outer table the more passive play we'll get on our feature because everyone's waiting for someone to do something, you know, yeah. or bus, whatever. Yeah. Um, Sleepy the old, getting ready for a big pool match tonight. Oh, good luck. Are you good at pool, Sleepy? Sounds like you must be if you've got a big match. Good luck, good luck. Daisy Duke uh, has got birds chirping in Montreal. Lovely. The Hungry's are eating breakfast and drinking beer in Vancouver. That is a hardcore Sunday morning breakfast beer. Enjoy. Miss Char Char's is also on Vancouver Island. Lovely. This is uh, a good two hand. hands. Two actual hands. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, we should see significant aggression from the button here because this hand is just so good in this dynamic. But yeah, but the also, players are just the not. They're, yeah, just they're not, not adjusting to being five-handed, and there's just apart from Florin, there's just no aggression. Yeah, well, it's a flat on the button, which is not horrendous, but you know, three betting is really, really solid with this kind of hand on the button and this in this dynamic. Um, Galinsky obviously would have jammed over that three bet and pretty happily done so. So, this is the only way we would have seen a flop in this situation. And Galinsky will be hoping that nothing above a queen appears. That's a jack. Mm, that is a lovely looking flop. And the ace of hearts doesn't exist for Alex. So I believe we will see a bet. I believe we'll probably see a fold. Given that Alex is the one that folded pocket nines to like 10p on ace ace jack. If he defends this, I'd be bewildered. The will, did I say, Nick? Yes. Yeah. 
It's interesting to think about, you know, while we are watching this uh, uh, very long period of shorthanded play, that if, if you've gone from nine-handed poker to five-handed poker, so they're now playing five-handed, you, yeah. you just have to adjust for how wide the ranges are. Now, I know there's an irony talking about this when Galinsky actually has queens, yeah. but it, it, he's a cut-off open. And so, you know, ace-10 is good here a lot of the time. Yeah, but if you're going to float this board, you might as well just three bet pre flop. Like, you use it for what it's good at. Oh, it's really good at removing good, good yeah, cards yeah. and it's good for pressure. It's not really good at floating Jack Seven Deuce <laughs> with no backdoor flush draws. So, you know. Yeah, that's true. I just want action. I'm trying to yeah, yeah, psychically, yeah, in the past, prejudice them towards action. Yeah, this is good for me because, you know, I, I, I don't believe in manifestation. So, the fact that it's not worked, I'm actually quite happy about. There's a, there's a stack of chips in the middle there, you know. I think this has gone button open, big blind jam, you know, Nick. Okay. Well, he's gone like almost all in like he did last time where we thought he was in for 10p, but he actually had a lot more. So I think that, um, if I'm not mistaken, we've got a button tank versus a big blind jam. Uh, but this time we are going to go back to feature. Cornell will fold. Alex has a, another pretty clear jam, I think. How many big blinds is this? Uh, it is about 14. Yeah, they're pretty slam dunk jam here. Happy jam. Yeah, quite an easy jam, actually, I think. Yeah. You got two random cards to get through. Let's go. I mean, it's 14 big blinds as well. Five handed. <laughs> you can't yeah. wait around. No, you cannot. And these players are waiting around and they're all getting very short stacked. Oh, this come on. No oh, come way. on. No way. Oh, come on. I mean, That's so just, to, just, just, That's just to be clear, just, just to be clear to people in chat, we don't want to be negative and overly critical, but at the same time, we are going to call the poker <laughs> as it as it takes place. And you can't fold; you can't just open fold in a small blind. Uh, these players just want to get to the final table way, way, way too much. I mean, I know I gave my little three hands that I've been upset with today. That's a fourth and it tops the lot. How on earth have we found a fold in that spot? I mean, this is just going to show how... That, I mean, the, only, a... the only explanation for that is just complete desperation, single focus on getting to the final table come what may. Because that's not yeah. the first time it's been folded to, to uh, Alex in the small blind in his poker career. And he knows that an ace is better than two random cards in the big blind. Um, he just wants to be on the final table. That's what's happened yeah. to these players the last yeah. 90 minutes. And it's probably a psychological product of the fact that he had about 3 million chips earlier on. He lost a couple of really brutal hands. Yes, good he point. Said, if I jam here and get called by ace-10 off and I just lose and I have to tell people I finished 10th when I had all those chips. It's a very good point. Know, it's just, that has to be what it is because it cannot be anything else. No, that is not that is not po that is not poker ignorance. That particular hand is not no, poker no. ignorance. He know, he knows an ace is good there. He knew what he was, he knew what exactly he was doing. what you said. He he cannot bear to not make the final table. And he may yet not, but he knows Cornell is his best bet because Cornell's doing nothing either. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking, you know, buddy, please do what you do. What I wish you'd done an hour ago and get out of my tournament so I can play final table. <laughs> But like you said, already, the way it's, it's, gone, it's, it's, it's almost like there's some poker room promotion that we don't know about for making the final. <laughs> yeah, like maybe back next year. Maybe everyone gets a like a car or something if they make the final. Yeah, I mean, that would even then, I still think I'd jam a sticks off. <laughs> <laughs> even then <laughs> even for a car that may maybe there's a little bit more pressure there but like it's such a like you know it's like the a7 from before that you know they that, that alex checked back it's just it just performs so uh, those offsuit asex just perform so unbelievably well 
um, that they just they just the purest jams you could possibly imagine finding. And you're five handed. Those blinds are coming back. Nick. Yeah, right. Exactly. He's gonna have, yeah, ten, yeah, he's yeah. Gonna have ten big blinds. What is he? What is he gonna end up jamming? You know, if he yeah. doesn't jam that. Yeah. And then you're on the final table with five big blinds, and everyone that's playing, you know, the ICM poker is just stacking their chips up. Um, they they, they, they have they, they they have all collected collectively, and we don't know what's going on on the other table, but we have all they have all collectively, apart from Florin, played as if the next person to get eliminated doesn't win money, and and everybody else wins three or four thousand euros. That's how they've played this. 10 handed poker it's yeah. been really a bit mad to be honest um yeah it's, it is weird happy races we used to give free ciggies at our final tables back in the day oh <laughs> did that result in tight final table bubble play something like that's going on here i'm certain of it i mean to not even limp you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you, it's a good jam. Like, it's, a, it's to, you can jam, go ahead and jam, but like, to not even limp against a random hand. I mean, oh, oh it, we've said enough. It's just, it's just confusing. I have to remember that I'm probably an earshot of these players and I might not be able to get make it home tonight. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, it'll, maybe it'll motivate, maybe it'll motivate them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. Just saying, saying it as I see it, guys. In through the window. This, these are the kind of important chat contributions we want, actually. I love lookalikes. Uh, Alex B and oh, Roberto oh, oh, oh. Romanello. We've got an all-in and a tank. It looks like it's gone cut off open. Don't worry um, about it. Oh no, sorry. Hijack jam cut off. Oh, yeah. Don't worry no, about it. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> sorry. What? Is someone going all in? No. 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 <laughs> Alex being Roberto Romanello is not bad in through the window. That is definitely not the worst lookalike I've seen. Yeah. Good shout. Yeah, that is actually class shout. Yeah, it's good. More lookalikes. It may even be him. More lookalikes, welcome. It does look quite a lot like him. Now you've said it. I don't know. I didn't think about it before. I the think Welsh Roberto visit. Romanello would have jammed a seven off, though, and probably not folded pocket nines. So I think that's what I'm going to go with, it not being him. <laughs> oh. I mean, I mean, look at Florence just chipping. Florence done nothing, Nick, except just open hands. And yeah. He's nearly got four million. Yeah, made a couple of nice, uh, nice plays. Obviously, yeah. but in the, the main, you're blind, in yeah. the main, you're absolutely right. It's just chipped up. I mean, at this point, Florin doesn't even need queens. He just needs to. He just if it if it falls to Florin, there is zero doubt in my mind that opening range is is profitable. Unless the big blinds forced all in, I honestly think you could open every single hand that he has. Yeah, I think so too. Money. That him having queens isn't actually that consequential because it's not yeah, like no. anyone's about to play back at him, is it? Absolutely not. I mean, there's no, there's, there's absolutely no way that Alex is playing a seven off in this spot. Not a chance. If he plays a seven off here, Nick, I am going to start questioning the cosmos. Okay, good. And Cornell will fold. Well, he, he's, he's just. He's just feeling sad because he'd probably he'd probably play a lot of hands here because you know he after folding that he's now at um five big blinds. I mean honestly, without turning their cards over, I don't think Florin could have been given a, a better idea that people don't want to play this game than what he's being given. Like everyone's hopping up and down trying to see who's busting. No one's defending anything. Nobody's opening anything. Yeah, like like in in the in the next deal, if you're Florin, and so you're the first to act, five handed. What are you opening? I wouldn't look at my cards. If, if, knowing open. what I know, I wouldn't yeah. look at my cards. Yeah, but I don't know if I would know that in the situation. But like, I know having seen every hand that 
he could open any two cards and it's going to make money. It does fold. Yeah, it does fold. Um, but he got two of the absolute worst cards in yeah, 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 and sure. maybe he doesn't want to open absolutely everything. But I definitely yeah. think I definitely agree with you. I think it's profitable. Yeah. I might just I might just open so just in case I looked at them, I mean we've just folded Jack Nine suited. That's like what's going on. Uh, cl the clearest jam in the world, Alex. Happy days. I mean, this is the most comfortable jam. Yeah. Two short you're stacks in the blinds. Yeah. You're not a risk. Two short stacks in the blinds, neither of which want to play a hand. Just slide in that big pile of ships and let the dealer do the rest because this hey, there's no need to do this. Just bang it in, lad. Does go for the raise. At least he didn't fold. <laughs> if he'd folded, I might have had a real problem. Okay, Cornell has got somewhat of a spot here. Probably with like what is it? how many big blinds is this? Six, not even four. Gonna have to go with this, I imagine. He's not gonna want to, from what we know. Two of our players just left to look at the other table. So oh he's gonna goodness. fold and hope that Oh my god. Don't do it to me. Nick, I think we might be about to see something very special. <laughs> I mean, okay, <laughs> look, this is a jam. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying anything. I, like, you, you, keep, you keep pointing out the, the obvious. <laughs> the players keep not doing it, so... Oh, he's defended. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, Cornell is the only reason he's not jammed there, I imagine, because Cornell's got 10p. Um, but the unfortunate situation is, I mean, what do you think Alex would have done if if Alex B had jammed? He'd have folded, wouldn't he? Yeah, we know that. Which is why A7 off is just the most unbelievable slam dunk jam of all time on the button, because you know that you're going to get dominating hands to fold in this dynamic. Really often, like really often. Maybe he goes with ace jack, like has to, has to go with ace jack, right? But maybe you get folds from ace nine, ace ten, etc. Then you are just unbelievably printing by shoving the spot. And 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 by the way, C betting probably range is also gonna win you loads of money here. Obviously, Alex doesn't know that Alex V folded ace seven and ace six in that last hand. Um but I just think when you pick up that ace, all you really want on the button there is just to pick up an ace and go, oh, thank God, I'm all in. You know what I mean? Let the de let the dealer take care of the rest because it's all your job is. Are we going to see any aggression from Alex B here? We are going to see a bet on the turn, which I really, really, really like. <laughs> An actual investment in the pot. Yeah. Exciting stuff for us. Is that a big? Is that a 350? I'm less of a fan of that, but. Yeah, but he, he can be sort of slightly playing Alex V's stack a bit. I, I know that it's not. <laughs> I know that it's not uh, correct because uh, he doesn't. He has the same effect by betting less, but he might be just thinking. I just think I'll get him to fold a lot of things because he doesn't want to play for his tournament. Yeah, but this is he's true basically nearly, he's, basically nearly, he's basically bet nearly half his stack, basically. Yeah, and, and Alex will fold here, but sorry, no hill station. I mean, look, there's so many disconnects. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm sort of at a loss of words here because it's so out of touch with the folding of the a6 do you know what i mean like to fold a6 in that spot and then call ace 10 in this spot Dis I think, disconnect, I think, is, a, disconnect yeah, I, is a very appropriate word i think alex v is i think alex v's head spinning i think his head's gone i can only think that, that he just i can't see the logic of the pots anymore and the situation's taken over. I mean, I mean, he's going to win this pot because it's going to go check, check. I mean, fair enough. But this could all have been avoided <laughs> in so many different ways. 
Like, I know that. And look how relieved he is. You can't show this level of relief. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Florin's sitting there like, thank goodness that no one's busted because I get to just continue annihilating everybody at every given turn. And, you know, there's just so many weird things going on, Nick. It's presenting a very interesting situation because, I mean, Alex B just has to jam and, and, and nobody can do anything with, like, almost every part of their range. Do you know what I mean? And nobody wants to do anything. Well, you're, you're looking for any excuse in Alex's shoes on the button there to jam. Anything, like anything yeah. remotely, even passable, gets jammed in that situation under ICM pressure with everyone playing like they are. Um, but the, the thing is, everybody's playing like they are. And so everybody is part of that. So like you if you were airdropped onto this onto this table would think like that but these players are just not thinking like that they're, they're just survival is the dominant emotion in this in this tournament right now yeah Florian gets another walk I think that's his third or fourth walk Mal they do all on the final table you're absolutely right So I should say one thing, by the way. In terms of in terms of what we've watched, obviously it is the, up to the players how they play. It's their money to get into the tournament. It's their prize money that's now at risk. Um, and so what Nick and I are doing is just pointing out what are pretty clear mistakes in terms of what's the right thing to do from a poker point of view. But if the players want to do this, that's totally up to them. The obvious downside of this is by playing so tight. Uh, and so passively, um, they are actually taking their own agency away because the blinds, we've just seen they're up to 5,100,000, the yeah. blinds will mean that they will end up gambling. So they're trying not to, you know, force the action or put anything at risk. But actually, by doing nothing, they'll just end up in a situation where they have to gamble, where they're going to get it in with 40% or whatever. Couldn't agree more, Nick. Could not agree more. Well, this is quite something. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like this before. I have to be honest. Um, I mean, I know that final test, like late tournament, final table pressure exists, but I mean, this is really I, like showing the human side of this game. Yeah, I've never seen it over a final table. I, I've seen it kind of three-handed and some weird heads ups and stuff like that. Like I've seen it more towards the very end of tournaments, and obviously we've all seen it over money bubbles in big tournaments. But I don't, I don't, I, have, I don't, I could be not remembering one, but I can't remember ever seeing this sort of fear of not making the final table. Yeah. Because it, it's worth saying, apart, apart from having a picture taken, it's not a thing. The tournament goes yeah. on with the very next hand. So that's what's sort of fascinating yeah. about it. Another jam missed for, that for the pocket fours, obviously. That is going to be an opening range of, I mean, complete dust to obviously premiums, but mostly dust. Um, dust. <laughs> pocket, pocket fours, I mean, I, I can understand because obviously there's a player on this table that has shown no interest in playing the game and has like two big blinds. So from that extent, it's probably like a little bit, you know, ICM wise a fold, I suppose. Um, but oof. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, guys, to be honest. There's a four. 
The punishment. The punishment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we have well, got a hell of a flop. Yeah, interesting flop. I'm actually going to see some poker here. Yeah. Um, Florin going to be extremely happy to continue. Alex, less so, but we'll have to. And a lot of the time I expect this to go check call and then almost like there'll be a load, a load of those turns here that we'll go check, check. Um, Florin using his eight as sort of showdown and, you know, having that flush draw. It's nice to have some flushes in check, check on turn on bricks. That is not a brick. That is <laughs> the not second nut. That is immediate service. For Florin. Alex will check and something around 40% pot. Anything from one third to half pot here. Florin can go ahead and bet. I mean, to be fair, this turn spot is gross with ace three. Right, Alex. Hmm. Yeah. Once the bet comes, which it does. And it's a, it's a phenomenal sizing from Florin, who is, again, impressing. Because this bet is designed to do exactly what it's doing right now, make Alex feel sick. Because if you put 500k in here, Alex goes, I feel sick, but whatever, I fold. Put 280k in, you know, a lot of, a lot of Alex's, Alex B's hands are dead on this turn. Super dead. And this hand pressures that region significantly to the point where it can't really fold, doesn't love its life, but has no choice. So the sizing is beautiful, really is. Sticks on the river. But Alex B will feel like this has, just has to be the best hand in this dynamic so often. Yeah. Um, and what I would not do as Florin here is jam because we know that people don't want to play for their tournament life. So what I would do is bet. No, I think, I, think he's, I think he's, I think he's shown he knows that with some of his sizings yeah. already. Yeah. So pop out half pot, you know, pop out 700 K pop out 800 K something in that region. Don't make Alex make a decision for his tournament life when there's two short stacks that have no interest in playing the game and on the table, you know, just put in 800k oh classic use of time card i mean he may genuinely be really thinking about what sizing he wants to use here it's a very very credible time bank to use yeah but also it's it makes it look a little bit more bluffy in real time this is go this is this is god tier from florin i think this looks like exactly half pot he must have announced this bet before he slid that in i didn't hear it's fumbly it's fumbly it's fumbly he looks nervous it's exactly he what you want to make. 830k, yeah. exactly what you want to. Really, it's just really, really good. It's really, really good. It's play, he's playing perfectly to the, the dynamics of this table, to his opponents. He can't see what we can see, Nick, but he's right. playing like he's seen it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing some great stuff. It is like he's at a different party, isn't it? He's, yeah. he's come to win the tournament. Everyone else has come to survive. Yeah. And the longer this goes on, the, the, the more likely it is he's going to win it. What I will say is that this spot is under bluffed uh, quite considerably on the paired board. Um, you know, when you hear, when you see this board and your opponent, when he goes call, call, most of the time they're going to have an ASEX hand. Do they really want to get them to fold that? Would you not use all in if you wanted to try and get them to fold that? If you had something like King of Spades X here? Probably he's thinking... You know, there's also, maybe there's, there's also just thinking how these players think. There's also a stack consideration here where Alex will think, yes, I can, if I call them right, happy days. But if I fold, um, if I call them wrong, I leave myself with only a million. I'm back in the muck. Yeah. And so I think there's some pressure there that will probably end up in this being a fold. Yeah. The, the pricing that he's given Alex is, is saying, if you call here, and you're wrong, then you still have more chips than Cornell, and you have about the same amount of chips as Alex V. That's what this bet does. Now, psychologically, that can be quite powerful. Does Alex B realize that's what's going on? Does he not think he would face all in if he was bluffing? 
this is all the things that are going through his head right now. Dealer is taking away another time bank here. And oh, he's gone for the call. Wow. And he gets shown the horrendous news. And I honestly cannot say, I mean, I know I've had a lot of bad things to say about players today and some particular yeah, players I don't think, specifically. Yeah, yeah, but that's not this a bad situation. Call incredibly understandable alex b i don't mind the call at all but the play from florin that we're seeing here is just textbook understanding of every dynamic that's going on um he could barely be playing look at he's crushing it to bits look at this nick this graphic now he's crushing it to smithereens he is he can just start going all in like in certain situations where the 16 and the 13 big blind even the nine big blind stack are at risk he can start jamming almost his entire range when corners folded it's a really insane spot for florin I mean, this is actually, I mean, I know that we've had some things to say, but this is enthralling. <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've all got Florin envy. Yeah. Anyone that's into poker would like to be where he is now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is some ser serious consideration to just open banging in every hand, like when it's on him. <laughs> it's just, it, it's just impossible to respond. He's going to go for oh. a corner. It's got all good call. Got call has to call. Yeah, obviously. Um, obviously a queen or a three will send us to the final table, Nick. Otherwise, we yeah. go on again. Well, corner's a big favourite, as you can see. Remember the odds on the screen take account of folded cards and if there were any, but uh, that will help. I mean, that is not going to help Alex B. I mean, Cornell has won. He's blinded himself down over and over again and won every all in. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? No. That's not the one. It's sweaty. Always a sweat. Always a sweat. The diamond will end it. He's fine. And it's eight. Is that a full house? Okay. Just all in for like two big blinds and you make a boat. Nice one. Wasted. Yeah. Bad tactics. No. Guys, I was going to save the big tickets to the final table, but uh, I'm going to unleash another one in a minute because I do appreciate you all sticking around uh, for this I mean, period this of the it. tournament. This is entertaining. Which is not... This is incredibly interesting. Is it? I find it very interesting because it's 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 poker and it's humanity on, on full display. <laughs> it's humanity. <laughs> oh, I find the I find the phenomena very interesting. Yeah. I find the the yeah. lining up ridiculously to make the final table really interesting. Yeah. Um, Gaz, I'm glad you're finding it entertaining, and. Uh, Colden as well, and Gary. Good. I'm glad. I'm very sensitive to you not being entertained. My only motivation is your entertainment. True story. It is absolutely fascinating because just to reiterate, we've now been ten handed. Uh, yeah, ten handed for. I'm not actually sure. A long time, maybe ninety minutes, and we've seen um, some unbelievably tight poker. Um, <laughs> TJ Scotty says, "My nan's loving it. So slow, she can keep up." <laughs> Cornell is going to go for it slams down the chips with the King Jack 
I think Galinsky is going to be obligated to call here. It's going to be 400,000 when he gets back round to him. He's going to get two and a half to one on his money. And Cornell's going to be a in a nice spot to double up. Switch microphones, guys. So I don't think I sound as good as I did before. And I didn't sound good before because I'm, I'm, I'm having an annoying voice. But I also, you're um, live in the card room, which gives it a really authentic exactly. feel. Yeah. So I had to switch to my laptop microphone because um, my microphone microphone shares the same port as the charging port. And my laptop is suffering from what is colloquially known as final tableitis, where everyone's taking way too long and I've had no opportunity to charge my laptop. Is he going to fold King 10 here? Yeah, of course he is. I mean, there's too much emotion here. There's too much emotion. The humanity. <laughs> the humanity of it all. Look how excited Cornell is. Yeah. When they when they all finally get to the final table and they realise you don't get a car, I think there's going to be some problems. I think there's going to be some issues. <laughs> there will be, yeah. Oh, you mean I got an extra 600 euros and that was it? Oh. Yeah, weirdly, I agree, Gaz. Weirdly, Nick, your microphone is actually better than it was. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, I think that might be a, a preference thing. I've, I've been told the sound technician who has a degree in sound, but this is wait, a six wait. Hour. All in on the call on the outer table. Oh, wow. Looks like Ace King and looks like an Ace on the floor. And looks like the short stack's going to win, obviously, because this final table cannot be manifested. No. And as I've already said, I love to see it because I hate manifestation and the very concept of it. Because I'm a pessimist. Well, if you can manifest things, we'd all be driving around in a Ferrari with... Uh, exactly. A six-pack. Um... Thanks to those of you playing our roll call. Hope you're having fun. Quick shout out to those of you that are doing well. Nick Dyer Straits, White Slurp, Gaz Ganger, Zaquan, uh, Super Zero, um, Bass, Darwin, Fifi, Daisy, Four Ace, Nurik Wu, uh, Buicky, Jeb, uh, Gangman, Styler, uh, Gary Danby, and Mastermind. All in the free roll. Lots of luck. Keep it going. Your target to beat for this weekend is seventh. Box Waxer finished seventh. Goodness me, Ace Deuce folding under the gun here. Because uh, he knows that Florin's in the big blind, and Florin's just gonna just gonna give him absolute hell. Um, I think that's his uh, fifth or sixth. Fifth or sixth walk in the big blind. I mean. We, we called this an hour and a half ago, Nick. We said if this trend continues, Florence going to have a mountain of chips. Yeah, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful spot for him. It's not even a... If you, if you are stoic and analytical and logical, it's not even a difficult spot to play. It's just like a look around and bang it in. Like, oh, who's got this? Who's got that? Who's waiting for who? I'm all in. You know, it, it is really as simple as that. And it, like we've already said, like the only person that doesn't want this final table to happen is Florin. Florin wants this to go on for as long as possible. Yeah, until everyone's under five big blinds apart from him. <laughs> yeah. He'll just be sitting there with 65. I mean, in a, in a way, this is, this is quite refreshing to see because the skill, the skill and element of the game has taken a huge, huge front seat on this feature table. Anyone yeah, that thinks that. that poker is not a skill-based game, watch this watch this Florin masterclass. <laughs> and this is getting absolutely rammed. And I can say that with absolute confidence because Florin is a top geezer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Top geezer. And look, let me tell you. Look, you can tank there all you like. Don't. This is, he's literally telling Florin to jam every time it folds to him. 
He's telling, he's, he's saying to Florin, by the way, Giza, if you jam range, I'm probably just going to fold because all I care about is if someone on the other table is out. I don't care what my cards are. What do you, what, realistically, Nick, let me ask you a question. This isn't Nick thinks or anything, but what do you yeah. think Galinsky's calling range is there? That's a great question. I think he for sure folds ace 10 because we've seen him fold ace 10 in a very similar yeah. situation. Yeah. Uh, I think Agreed. maybe ace jack suited, but not ace jack off suit. And oh Jesus! I mean, imagine folding ace jack off to a I jam think, there. I think, oh, he, my I, think he, I think he does. He's got five big blinds. No, he doesn't. He's got uh, he's 10? got ten, 10. Okay. I mean, um, you, I, think I, mean he small, I think he folded small pocket pairs for sure. Maybe maybe sevens, eight with the cutoff somewhere around there. Even though it's blind versus blind. Yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, Florian can jam range here. He can jam range. He may, he didn't do it. But like, you could tell he was thinking about it, you know? Yeah. I think he knows that it's good. I think he knows how good it is. It would have worked. Well, the the, the I, blinds have got eight big blinds and seven big blinds, and neither of them want to gamble. So yeah, I, I think I'd have just banged it in there. I really do. I don't think I would even pick my cards up because I'm knowing what I know. Obviously, it's a lot easier to say, but like, I, I think Florin's got an idea. Everyone's sighing and like relief and like standing up, and nobody wants to play the game, Nick. No, they're watching every single hand on the other table. It's it's yeah. it's fascinating to see. And just to just to re, just to remind everybody, the difference between tenth and ninth is six hundred euros and a pitcher. And to say you made a final table, I guess that too. And the opportunity uh, cost obviously. Of not being able to so just just to be clear, I'm not saying six hundred euros isn't a worthwhile sum of money, but the difference between tenth and ninth is six hundred euros. The difference between tenth and first, which all these players are compromising their chances of getting is uh, something closer to 33,000 euros. Yeah. Kong Pao Nuts says, I'm more a live player than online. I can't believe this lasts an hour. This is nuts. It's lasted a lot more than an hour. <laughs> no, Florence paying the end. Galinsky's just not calling King Jack off, is he? Not even close. No way. You're not calling, mate. No way do you call. Oh, yeah, little little glance over to the side. No way. In a million years. He'd fold Ace-Jack here. I've no doubt about that. Look, Florence, Florence just jammed King-6 off from, from cut-off because he knows that nobody wants to play this game anymore. Everyone's made their bed, and now they're laying in it, Nick. It's a, it's, a, it's a sunk cost fallacy as well because every work, every con decision that you continue to make that's like this is is costing you more chips. But so, because you've already decided you're making the final table, it's like, <laughs> what can you do? So Gibraltar, uh, I understand the point you're making. So Gibr Gibraltar, what is that? Gibraltarian? Gibraltarian. So 600 euros in Romania is more than 600 euros in the UK. I totally understand. It's a lot of money. Um, you know, it's a significant amount of money wherever you are. It's not nothing. But the point is, it's relative. The point, the point is, it's relative. So, yes, the next jump is 600 euros. But the jumps between now and the end are 33,000 euros. And so you're folding your way out of equity in a chance to win that 33,000 euros by waiting to try and win 600. So it doesn't matter if it's a lot more money in Romania. It doesn't matter because you've already got it locked up. Florin's going to jam. Florin's going to jam. Do it, Florin. Mate, you can do literally whatever you want. He can do Is whatever he going to give him a pass? No, he's jamming. I mean, this is just phenomenal poker. Absolutely phenomenal poker. What I would love to see right now is somebody with a like theory call just in the blender. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just a tilt call. Just, just, no, just no, someone just sitting there with like ace ten and then just like just like hating their lives and then folding. Just to just to reinforce how I think I think insanely I think we, plus EV we've this seen that, we? I think yeah. <laughs> we've got plenty of footage of that to be honest. But Nick, me and you both saw this exact situation happening near two hours ago. At near the infancy of this table, it was clear after a couple of orbits that Florin had come to play 
understands the game, the ICM pressures, he's felt himself around the players, and he's absolutely obliterating all of them. There's no yeah. other way to put it. Yeah. No, that has been the learning point is how he's played. Like you can even go back to um, some of his earlier sort of small stabs at pots and bluffs, his squeeze play earlier on, and now this. Uh, he's really uh, played great stuff. Yeah, it's an absolute clinic. Yeah, people are now saying 600 euros isn't that much of a ring. I mean, like 600 euros is just, you know, some money, isn't it? That is a sum of money. It doesn't actually it doesn't actually matter whether it's significant money or not, because the, the whole point is the relative amount of money. So we don't even need to argue about whether it's a lot of money or not. It's the relative amount of money to what these players can win. Remember, you don't get nothing if you lose now, by the way. They get no, about right, four no. grand. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've locked up 3,600 euros. Yeah, so it, 600 it's, it's euros is a percentage of that. The reason that, that you found it fascinating and then we found it fascinating is um, it's the final table that's done this. It's not the money, it's the final table. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the mute now. It is fascinating. It's fascinating in the in the sense that I've, I've I don't think I've seen it before. I've seen some tightness around the final table in tournaments, but I've never I can't remember seeing this. We certainly haven't had it in an eight 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 live main event. And uh, Florin's going to get his. I reckon seventh or eighth walk of the day. I can't, from an observational point of view, I can't remember players being so fixated with uh, with the other table in this situation and just with making it generally. I can't remember it. I can remember a bit of it. Obviously, a bit of it happens in every tournament, but in some of the most astonishing yeah, folds I've ever seen. Today. Yeah, same. The body language of these players, I, I, I was muted. I think I still might be muted. Actually. Uh, the body language of these players, I don't know if you saw it when, when, when Alex V looked at his cards in the small blind. He was like rubbing them and like, you know, it, it, it just gives off the vibe to Florin that you're not playing any hands. Do you know what I mean? Like, Florin can just do anything. He's got 6.5 million. This was an even table. We haven't even seen that many all ins. Florin's not been at risk. No. Florence risked nothing. <laughs> Carrie Dummy says they're all hypnotized. It is a bit like that. It is a bit like it. It wasn't like this at the start of Ten Handed, and then it slowly got worse and worse. And it's now got to the point um, of, like you said, like a kind of sunk cost fallacy, where now they've come this far. Now yeah, it's even exactly. worse to actually be the one that doesn't make it. Yeah, it's it really is that like. Imagine doing what they've done, t missing all of those hugely plus EV spots and still not making the final table. <laughs> I mean, Florin doesn't need anything close to hand this good, by the way. Not even close. But when it falls, Nick, something insane is happening here. These players are all blinding out. Yeah, imagine if they all just go they all just go out the look at the frustration on the on everyone i've never seen anything like this in poker before never in no, my I life haven't. have i seen something like this no no I, I think i've done a couple of hundred live tournaments in my Nick, they, maybe maybe more and i've never seen it they are they are literally they may as well start the hand and give their blinds to to florin and just I, it's honestly so we, just the most astonishing thing i've ever seen it, it must be pretty it must be pretty passive on the other table as well but at least well check check i was no gonna say at least we're seeing some uh post flop no, poker that no one's sure really over there over there no, they're, they're all there's sure no one here. to wait for they're waiting for each other 
and they're all dying slowly, miserably. All in. All in. It's happened. Alex has had enough. Thank goodness someone's decided that this is enough is enough. Florin obviously can just fold everything. I would feel very bad for, for Alex if somebody woke up with queens or something. <laughs> like, it's quite funny. First time. Yeah. First time someone's it's, quite, it's quite funny because Florin's calling range should be very, 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 very tight. Very tight. And the reason for that is, is because he doesn't need... He doesn't need to do. He doesn't. He gets about as much by by everyone folding two hands than he does for calling this all in and winning. There's, there's absolutely no need for him to call off all ins. He just needs to pile the pressure on every single opportunity with fold equity. Because but when people fold, he gets 200k. Yeah. 250k. Everyone and and everyone's folding every hand, Nick. You get you get that all in in four all in four hands without having to play without having to see any cards, and it's happening like ninety five percent of the time. Everyone's going to fold to you. Honestly, we're at the point where I don't think Florin. I think he's realised. I think Florin might just bang this in. It's so insane to bang this in, but I think he may just bang this in. Well, you know he. How short? At what yeah. point do the players yeah. get so short that he shouldn't do that? It's close. It's when they're it's when they're literally like beyond all reasonable doubt forced all in the big blind because the small blind will still find a way to fold. Yeah. But like, can you see Florin's like an algorithm? He's you know when he was folding, he's like, oh you know he folded like eight four or something earlier. He's he's a machine learning like the game as he goes like he knows that there's no hand he can now look at that isn't isn't making money in this spot Alex, okay. not call Alex, ha four. Alex, Alex has to call here he's he got four big blinds it doesn't matter he's not calling I promise he you he no, is he's on the button he's not in the big blind he's got two players to act behind him he's not calling he is no. not a chance <laughs> He must, but he's not going to get any. He's not going to get a hand where Florin doesn't bang it in. Oh my god! Right, Nick, I'm telling you, this the, the game is the game has been broken. <laughs> it's broken. We, we are we are we are witnessing an alternate universe of poker that I don't think I I don't think you could replicate this situation. No, no. Cornell's tanking for the other table that has no short stacks on it. This is the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. On a poker it's table. So weird. Alex B has to. Fall. By the way, eight four suit, eight for off suit. It's, it's entirely irrelevant what he has. He's showing him like, oh, I can't do anything about it. He would have folded ace queen there. But you fold, you folded ace four with four big blinds with no <laughs> consequence. There's no consequence. You're the you're the shortest stack. And against someone that's jamming a literal range. Yes, and if you go out, that's your expectation anyway. And there's no big jump. I'd, <laughs> my brain has melted, Nick. My brain is actually melted watching this. I'm, I'm not surprised. We don't really need a week off after this. I've never seen anything. <laughs> this is the most insane. Like everyone is literally giving their chips to. to but we, we, I, did, I, I knew that. For, I don't want to tempt fate in the future. But what happens in a in a few hours when they're playing for twenty thousand euros? Kilinski's all in. I mean, you have to jam this. Jamming is much better than calling off because Florin will fold his big blind like. He, he won't just, he doesn't need to call. Like, we've been over no, this no, already. No, he's not going to just gamble to knock someone out, would not <laughs> yeah. he? Yeah. No, he doesn't. He'll just, this is fine. He's like, whatever, have a big one. I'll just get another one next hand. Don't care. He doesn't need to call here. Let Galinsky have it. He'll just give him, he'll give it him back next hand. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, yeah, no, that, no, no. That's the first misstep I think we've seen. Doesn't make much sense that logically. Oh, I mean, look how stressed Galinsky is. Well, if Queen 7 hits, we do have our final table. I mean, 60 40 shot. There's a seven. Oh, goodness me. This is brutal. Straight draw for Galinsky, obviously. You can still hit an ace. It's still a 60 40 shot on the odds. Yeah, backdoor diamonds and the ace available. Now, straight on the turn. Immediate service. Immediate service. <laughs> I this, really think this, this this will never end. This is actually never going to end. I really think Florian should have folded. I think it's the first yeah. mistake he's made on this table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We agree. We agree. 
I mean, I mean, there, there are heads rolling all over this place. Um, look how stressed everyone is. Florence just doesn't care whatsoever. No one else can contact, can can compose himself in any way, shape, or form. I tell you, I tell you what this is like. This is exactly the same, and I, I've you know played one of these. Oh. This is exactly. Oh, we've, have we got an elimination? We've got a bus. Yeah, we've lost we've a player. Got a and, he, and, he, and I cannot believe that all of those four players have folded their way to this final table. <laughs> I can't believe they it, have. Nick. They've done it. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Guys, there will be a break now uh, while they set up the final table. Um, thank you for sticking with us. I hope you found that entertaining. It was definitely very oh unusual. Goodness. Never seen anything like it. The closest thing I can think of, as I was just about to say, was when I played a satellite for the main event. Uh, and the money bubble there. We'll be back with the final table in just a few minutes time. Keep it. <laughs> Hello guys, you have a new replacement here and if you cannot recognize my voice, I am Vivi Saliba, 80 Day Poker Ambassador. I was knocked out of the main event which is a pity, but at least I have the chance to watch the stream and commentate and be here with you tonight. So we reached the final table. We are down to nine players. And to be honest, I haven't been watching the stream before because I was waiting to jump in here, but we're gonna do it together um, for the following hours. So is for suited. I like it, I like it. Uh, we're gonna see a race all in all in um can fire off easy fold <laughs> Hello, chat. Nice to see so many familiar names with us tonight. Rashad, Jedemonas, I'm Ricky. The words you Daisy never thought you'd hear. Hello, everyone. It's final table time. Mm -hmm. Everybody happy smiles on the final table. It's a nice feeling to reach such a prestigious final table in a live event. So one of our players, Florin, has six million four hundred thousand chips. He has almost half of the chips. Must feel nice. Uh, hi guys, hi chat. Guess Ganger, uh, thanks for the information. Yeah, 
like it's so important to be aggressive when you're on a bubble situation and you can take a lot of chips just profit a lot from it i can hello nick how's it going I, i'm great thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> I, we started. Uh, you took a little longer in the toilet. <laughs> I, I, I was having a wrap. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. How can you Nick. see into my? How can you see into my house? That's what I'm worried about. I'm a spy. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what happened in our tournament before you came onto the? Dream. Well, well, we have a player scooping all the chips, right? And now he has half of the chips in play. <laughs> yeah, and everyone went super tight, like crazy tight, like desperate to make the final table for no reason. And it went on for about yeah. two hours. Amazing. Yeah. Um, that's something that I, I'm not going to blame the, uh, blame the other players because I definitely done it myself. But after being a professional poker player for quite some time now, uh, I learned that aggression is what makes money in poker. And when you place 10 for 11 for 9, uh, it's part of the game and it's going to happen a lot of times. So the best chances you have is actually to play aggressively. And yeah, sometimes you bust, but if you don't, you never win the tournament because you just bleed out your chips. And yeah, it's not a good thing to be over tight. On the bubble no, or on the final table. That's definitely what happened. They got very nervous. They didn't want to be the person to miss out on the final table. Yeah. But by doing it, actually, you almost never win the tournament, right? Because you just yeah. lose all your stacks. So it's it's a tricky one. Nobody wants to be 9th or 10th. But yeah, sometimes you got to play aggressive. And if you bust, it's part of life. You bust tournaments. I've heard it happens. Yeah. So these nine players have got 4,200 euros locked up. Huge jumps to our first prize of 37,000 euros as ever in tournaments. Um, and we've got several short stacks because we're playing 50, 100,000. So Zielinski is all in, Cornell's going to fold. Uh, I think it's why do you think he takes his time before folding the king five of hearts? It's a sort of a impression, intimidation to the other players. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the prizes are showed in lay, but actually it's euros. Yeah, yeah, we're mm -hmm. playing for euros. Vivi, we watched you. We watched you on stream, and it made me sad because. Oh really? Well, you just had like horrible spots, and you could <laughs> barely like pick up a pot. It was so grim. Everything I was doing was going sideways. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, it, it happens, yes. Um, at least was I entertaining? Uh, well, or no, I just like, made you sad for no reason? Well, because we want you to win, so no. No? <laughs> uh, mm. I mean, you know, you're always entertaining, but it wasn't... You, sideways is not the direction we wanted. And you, had, either, one of those, yeah. you, you had one of those sessions where I don't think you made a single mistake. And that's why poker's hard, right? Because you can not make a single mistake, but still not make chips. Yes, uh, it happens quite often. Uh, just got to stick to playing good poker, keep being aggressive, and eventually you make chips. And sometimes it's, it is in the next tournament, but right. yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, that one didn't last much for me. <laughs> no. Have you played anything else in Bucharest? 
Um, I played the Big Shot tournament after I busted the main event and I lost it two hands. Um, Solid. I, I made two. I made two pairs on the turn. Went all in versus an over pair, and the river paired the board, and the over oh pair God. took down the chips. That's yeah. so boring. <laughs> That was boring, yeah. But at <laughs> least I got to have a early dinner, and I was very hungry, so that was the the good thing about it. Silver lining, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, they have locked four thousand two hundred euros. That's that's a nice cash. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice cash. Oh, there's somebody at my door. Knock knock. Excuse, excuse me, Vivi. Be right back. Of course. Knock, knock. Who is there? It's the agent. So, let's see how the players will play in this final table. So, for what I'm told, you guys said that they were very tight, trying to make the final table, not wanting to bust in 10th. Uh, let's see if they're going to be super tight on the final table as well. A little bit of that pressure of reaching the big live event final table is now out. It's now out of their shoulders. Uh, I understand, especially if it's your first ever big final table, you're a little bit nervous, but you can always learn from it. Still Sorry. a nice experience for sure. Who was it? Sorry about that. Let us it know. Was, uh... It was a man with a delivery. Oh, what did you Gary, order? Gary Danby's in, in chat has written Avon Calling. That is not only a very old reference, but no one outside the UK will know what that is. It's a makeup brand? Yeah, how do you know that? Oh, they were big in Brazil. They would uh, sell in the mag magazines and stuff, and like old ladies would buy it. Yeah. Yeah, we had that stuff too. I didn't know that was big in Brazil. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, we had that stuff too. My mum was a my mum was an Avon lady for a while. Oh really? Yeah. She okay. sold product. She sold product, yeah. Nice. But it was quite a cool like if you were a mum and you didn't want to go back to work full time, it was like having your own little business because they just used to pay commission on everything you sold. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, Alex just jammed 35 big blinds from the cutoff with fours. I think that what happened. 35 big blinds. Uh, if is, is 50 a hundred, right? Right now? Yeah. That seems a little, uh, probably uh, the remaining players didn't have uh, 35 big blinds effectively, I imagine. But yeah, it must be. The other players were shorter because that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. We've definitely seen some uh, some different plays so far today. No question. <laughs> Let's see. I, I'm super excited to see some interest, uh, interesting, exciting poker plays. Mm. I, I I heard the comments, so I want to see it. <laughs> Unusual stuff. Yeah, so Cornell's got just under three big blinds, and he's folded. He's going to have to play at some point. Oh, I think we're going to see an all-in. Ooh, both these players that. both these players were at the other tables we haven't seen them play today well i think we're gonna see an all-in call do you get the all-in yeah sixes are all in yeah uh, he's the shortest deck yes he has to go so there speaks a woman who has not been watching these players for the last two hours. They never, they never have to go. Trust me. I was watching from the rail. I was not seeing the stream. So yeah. I'd... 
It was it was interesting. Oh, Razvan didn't go and he just called. No, he 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 raised from the button. Constantine yeah. shoved from the small blind, and now Razvan's thinking about it. Now he has to fold, I guess. Um, but I would have liked the ace eight just to open gem, to be honest. Because otherwise you're left in this type of position. Uh which it, it just it just has to raise fold this hand because it is a strong hand. Okay, he will he will fold. I tell you what he's gonna do. <laughs> and also it's not a hand that you necessarily want to play post flop and especially it's so short. So it's just a hand that performs well open jamming in my opinion. Yeah, and I think Vivi as well, you, you've got to be aware of the other stacks, especially, you know, in the blinds. You don't want to open there and and obviously getting shoved on is a is a live possibility. Yes. It will happen very often, yeah. You if there is a bunch of short stacks to act, you race, you're gonna face an all in very often. So <laughs> If if somebody sat down at your table and they had a scary face bandana on like that, Vivi, what would you think? <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like it. I think it brings a little bit uh, of the fun of the game of playing a live stream. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Alex is thinking about this. He, he, to be clear, he has four big blinds, and he does put the money in. I was worried he was going to do something else. Well, he might be. Um, yeah. Well, he's under the gun, right? He definitely should go all in but um i would like him to snap all in because his hand then would look even stronger um because he took some time and some consideration this and it seemed legit <laughs> uh it's all things you need to consider because you want your opponents to fold of course when you have threes but nobody has a hand ice king looks good enough okay Somebody did wake up with a hand, and let's see if he's gonna call race. Uh, what's he's gonna do? Ah, uh, he calls. So Florin now, who's the ship leader, gets to come in here. Ooh, he's Jack suited. Let's see. That's an interesting spot. He can, of course, overcall. He can raise, but if he raises. Uh, probably Myron will just jam unless Florin just goes all in himself and Ace King would face a very tough decision. He called. Hmm. Yeah, he called and Alex is going to be super excited by this flop. <laughs> I think it will just go check check. <laughs> check check on the flop check on the turn Florence thinking about whether to bet or not he doesn't I, yeah. oh wow what a horrible way to get knocked out of a tournament Vivi 
Um, it didn't show for me yet. Is it true? Yeah, it is. Oh, well, you are you a bit behind? Oh, okay, sorry. I, I'm a few seconds behind. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Now he knows. Now he knows. One of the players must have an ace. Yeah. Unfortunate for Alex after flopping the set. Yeah. So Alex, we watched on the previous table, and he the big hand for him was he ran into a flush against Florin, tried to pick off a bluff. It was the real deal. That was a big pot for him. Uh, he's going to be our ninth place finisher. He gets, um, let's have a look, 4,200 euros for a 560 euro buy-in. So yeah, it's nice. a great, it's a great cash, but um, I know the feeling when you're there in every position means more money. Uh, you always want more, but it's still a great result. And one, one thing I learned after so many years of playing uh, poker for a living is that you should be happy with every win you have, because mm. it always can get more. It always can be more. And if you're not happy with your victories, you're, you won't be very happy because it's very rare that you actually win a big tournament. Vivi, we need you to talk to, we need you to give that talk to a lot of poker players who oh, yeah. don't seem to be I... as happy as they should be with their wins. <laughs> I, I've been in a different place myself, but I learned and I changed my mindset. Uh, and I must say, I take bad beats and variants much better nowadays. It's just uh, how I feel poker players should perceive the game. Absolutely right. I mean, partly, you know, it's a game and we're lucky to be playing it, so you've got to enjoy it. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, is even if you're a winning tournament player, like what is your ROI on your buy-in? Like maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 30% if you've like got a really big edge. And so when you make these like, I don't know, four buy-in caches, that's a really good result. Oh, yeah. Any caches is welcome. Like Ooh. I don't take it for granted. Um, to uh, commemorate the start of this final table, which was uh, delayed by shenanigans, <laughs> We're going to give away a one hundred and nine dollar ticket, Vivian Saliba. Ooh, can I can I join? No, you're part of the contest. You can't join. Oh, because we're going to play. What does Vivi think? Vivi wins already. Yeah, you Vivi win. Vivi thinks she yeah. should win. Yeah, I mean, you win in life. You just don't win a ticket. <laughs> but Vivi thinks she should win. I know Vivi thinks she should win, and I, I would love you to win, but you're not playing. You're part of the contest. Uh, this, we got an all in. Woo! Oh. And Cornell. Which hand, which hand Cornell did you has hit one outers twice. Can he do it again? Or like very slim draws twice? He's got to oh. do it again. <laughs> No help. King or a three, or we'll very quickly be seven handed here in Bucharest. No help. Jack is no good. And Cornell, after really hanging on with the short stack and a couple of massive outdraws earlier. He's done well to still be here, but he is going to be your eighth place finisher in our main event. And uh, it's very clear to me now that the problem with uh, players not going out was all down to Nick Eastwood because uh, Vivi's <laughs> come in and suddenly, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly they're dropping. Another great finish. All, all the places are great finishes. They should be genuinely happy. Absolutely. They've come through hundreds of players to be yes. here. All right, so we're going to play What Does Vivi Think? Here's how we play it. You get one guess per person, one guess per person. I'm going to ask Vivian Saliba a question. You're going to have to climb inside her head and figure out what her answer is going to be. Whoever's closest wins our $109 ticket, so no messing around. Big ticket up for grabs. Uh, if two of you are the same distance away from the right answer, whoever puts it in first wins, but one guess per player. Lime Ricky runs the contest in chat. She says when it's closed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, are we all clear on the rules? Uh, yes, yep. We are. Uh, Vivi, can you see uh, Can you see the chat in the Ninja browser? Uh, yes. 
So can you put your answer in there when I ask yes. the question? Okay, yes. cool. So, Vivi, I know you like to travel. You like to go to different events. Here's mm -hmm. a question for you. When you die, how many countries will you have visited? Mm. When you die, how many countries will you have visited? Chat, you get one guess per person. When Vivian Sleeber dies, how many countries does Vivian Sleeber think she will have visited? When she's yeah. 115 years old and she finally goes and a light goes out in the universe, how many countries will she have visited? Mm, I'm thinking still. It's a good question. Get your guesses in when uh, the contest is closed. Game changer, it's not a morbid question. It's a positive, uplifting question. You're thinking about all the fantastic adventures you're going to have in the future. Is it, an, in a way, a morbid question? But um... Why? Okay, all right. Let's get the morbidity out of the way. Spoiler alert, you're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I'm not breaking anyone's heart here. You are all going to die. It's not morbid. It's just a laugh. Let's. Find out. <laughs> I, I wanted really to write a. I, really I, want, I to write a self. I wanted to write a self-help book, like a self-help book, and the title was going to be "You're Not Getting Out of This Alive," and it was <laughs> to try and get people to actually take some action. Bobo claims they're immortal. Don't think so. But, but so far you are. <laughs> okay, the answer is in. Lime Ricky will close the contest in chat in a little minute. Make sure you get your answers in quickly. We're playing for a $109 ticket which is a big prize. And you're just trying to figure out how many countries Vivian thinks she will have visited by the time she shuffles off this mortal coil and ascends with the Archangels Eternal. <laughs> so some of these players, Vivi, um, are definitely at their first big final table. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about how, you know, you've got more experience as a poker player. If you could like tell yourself at your first big final table tips, what would they be? What would you tell these players who are at their first big main event table? Oh, well, I, I don't think any tip about the play itself would be very helpful, but maybe something about uh, in the terms of, hey, this won't be your last opportunity. You're going to be in this position again. Take it easy. Uh, don't be like, don't have it in your mind that this is your one shot, one opportunity. <laughs> uh, like the Eminem song. Yeah. <laughs> it is not like if you keep playing poker and you keep improving, you're going to be in other final tables and yeah, just enjoy the moment. Uh, just have fun. And once you're out, be okay with it. Like don't overthink because uh, I remember the first times I busted some big tournaments, it would really get to me and I would be upset. And it doesn't make any sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Just have fun. Just have fun. Yeah, I agree with that. It'll, it'll also, actually, if you if you have that mentality, it'll help you play better, won't it? Because you won't put the pressure on yourself that you will if you're thinking it's your big chance. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's part of the game to best of tournaments and it's part of the game to win also so just don't focus too much on the result itself just keep playing just keep it, keep getting better and work on your mindset have fun so this is why i like the guy with the mask it's a cool mask like it's a little silly and it brings some enjoyment and something to talk about it and i don't know i really like these characters like um you seeing Comic poker book. shows mm -hmm. and stuff it's okay. good for a game and i enjoy it 
I don't like when people have headphones and sunglasses and mm, hoodies and all of that. I don't know. I, I like. Yeah, to we talk. agree. We agree. Yeah, yeah. A bit of character is good. Yeah. Oh, Ace Eight, Ace Eight, and Kings. Yeah. The kings move in. So Florin, our big stack, will have to call 1.1 million into 1.8 with Ace Eight suited. Yeah, I think he would just fold. Oh, he calls. He called. Wow, that, that's a surprise. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Hopeful. So Florin was playing very well at the last uh, final table. We didn't really see him make a misstep, but that is an optimistic call. Galinsky looking to double up. And he does flop a few more outs. So, uh, and yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. Runner, runner, the king, so. yeah. Like seven, six. Yeah, I knew that. Ace. And we know seven, there six, is an ace out. Ace. Wow. Wow. What a That's horrible beat for Galinsky at final table. Galinsky. That's horrible. Well, maybe a jack or a king. He still has outs. Nope, no help. That that's unfortunate, of course. Uh, now we know why uh, Florine called. <laughs> that's right. You got to know when it's coming. You have to. Yeah, he, he's confident. He's running hard. Yeah. Uh, I personally would not have made the call. Uh, I know when you have chips, you can be very aggressive and you can put people in tough spots, but. Calling all ins doesn't mean putting people into spots unless you hit an ace. He did do that. So Florin, the rich get richer as he builds up that big stack. Our seventh place finisher is going to be Galinsky, who takes home 6,500 euros. And after nobody going anywhere for uh, most of the day, we're now down to, sorry, uh, seventh place finisher for uh, 6,500. We're down to six players, six max, maybe, for the win. Six max. It's fun poker, six max. It is. <laughs> What's your favorite number of players to play? Six or something else? Well, and um, it's a tournament? Uh, both, either. Uh, if it's a tournament, I like two because that means I'm heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. Um, um, cash game, I would say six players is a good number. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, six. Okay, we're going to all in again with Ace King. Same player, and Florin's going to quickly call, and he's going to be the underdog again. Can he do it two for two? I, I think he can. What do you think? <laughs> but, uh, you like you like the king queen. Let's well, see. We... Yeah. Let, let's see. No help. Thank you. <laughs> Alex V with the scary face, probably making a scary face under the scary face because he's scared. <laughs> just needs to dodge the ladies something i can give him some advice on Ooh, oh my god <laughs> it's there never is easy always it's a sweat vivian easy. always a sweat oh ace king wins with a straight there you go, he made the nuts. Happy. Not quite enough. As he oh, he's, be. he's excited. He's pumped. Yeah. I would be excited too. That's that's a nice double up. Fun run out. Uh, we got a water ticket. Vivian, I asked you the completely non morbid, very uplifting and optimistic think about the future question. How many countries would you have visited when you die at 115 years old? <laughs> what is your answer? My final answer was 68. 68. Exciting news. You're exactly right. You got you nailed it. That is it. That is how many countries you think you will have visited by the time you die. 
And yeah. one other player nailed it. Congratulations uh, if you got close. Uh, if you guessed 69, you were right to guess 69 because it's hilarious. But it wasn't quite the right answer. With exactly the right answer, <laughs> Malink. Malink. Uh, M-A-I-L-E-E-N-K. I'm going for Malink. Probably wrong, but you're right because you have won a $109 ticket. Well played. <laughs> if I would be a superstitious person, all I got to do is just stop at the 67th and stop traveling, right? Exactly. <laughs> I I'm not a superstitious person. As um, Charlie Munger once said, all I want to know in life is where I die so that I never go there. Yeah, that's that's a good logic. <laughs> Isn't it? Very good. <laughs> How many countries have you been to so far, do you think, roughly? Um, I estimated once, but it's 20 odd numbers. Yeah. 20 odd. So you've got a lot of you've got a lot of traveling to do. That's good. Oh, yeah. And I love to travel and visiting new places, getting in contact with new cultures and just making new friends. And so uh, what is this is a question for chat as well. What is the country you haven't visited to that if I could get a trip for you there, like the number one on your list that you want to go to that you haven't been to? Oh, Chat, you can I tell me too if you like. Mm, I really want to see the Northern Lights. So I would be open okay. to go to Iceland or Norway. I really enjoy nature, but to see the Aurora Borealis, I think is the name. Yeah. So, so I would love that. Cool. How about you? Uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. I really want to go to do a big trip to Japan, but uh, haven't found the time to do it yet. But that's number one on my list now. Yes, I, I would love to go to Japan as well. Yes. That's been incredible. There doesn't seem to be much poker there. I can't get 888 to have an event. That would be the easy way, but they won't. Well, maybe if you ask nicely, you're a, you have influence. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should ask. Um, Box wax wants to go to Australia. Like to fish from New Zealand. Con Martino to England. Ah, oh, just win your way to the uh, uh, eight 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 event in August in England. Con Martino. That's the number one plan. Uh, Tokyo Goo wants to go to Narnia. You need to start walking into the back of wardrobes if you want to do that. Um, Colin in Africa. Ipsy wants to go to Norway. Same as you. Um, nice Buju you've been to 50 countries that is impressive well done that's that's amazing which one is your favorite um, good question which one is your favorite Buji? Buji. Yeah. and why so uh, call 60 from this moment King for suited probably we're seeing a raise um, I the problem with calling Queen 9 which would be a fine call, is that if you have the cheap leader, who is, I imagine, an aggressive player, he will just raise so, so much that I think the best strategy for this small blind is to fold more, but the hands you decide to play, to raise yourself. If you have the cheap leader who is an aggressive player. So this is what happened. He limped and had to, had to fold. Yeah. Florin is a good aggressive player for sure. We've watched him all day today, and I definitely think that that is a problem. You do not want him on your left. Yeah, or or you just want stronger hands that can take aggression. So unfortunately, if you have a player like this with ICM and he being the chip leader, you just have to play a little tighter. Chip counts our final table for you, playing for 37,000 euros. Nick Welsh and Vivi Saliba bringing you coverage of the 888 Live uh, event here in Bucharest. Uh, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Lots more tickets to give away uh, over the next uh, few hours. Thank you for being here. Is Queen raised? Yeah, we have.
Hmm. Is that big mine gonna defend? You would think so, right? Let's see. Yes, like it. Uh, but I think he will just fold. <laughs> <laughs> he did defend. Oh, he did, he did, yeah. So the two Alexes, although actually there, there were three Alexes at this final table, there's now two. He flops a backdoor flush and a gut shot. So how do you think about this spot, Vivi, if, you're, if you've got the 5-4? If I would be in the spot, his hand is actually a very good hand to check raise as a bluff. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the backdoor flush, you have the the range advantage because you have trees in your range, whilst uh, the under the gun player doesn't. Uh, but he just decided to make the call. He did. And... Probably this is going to be the end of this one. Yeah, I think so. I would have liked to see uh, a check raise from Alex. Um, yeah. Alex bets again, and I'm anticipating a tank fold as opposed to a quick fold. <laughs> I think so too. And he should, and he should. Has there been any uh, PLO there, Vivi? Um, no, not at least uh, during the time I was here. Okay. Because I wasn't here for the whole event. I came on the 20th. So. Got you. Jumped in straight to the main event. And I backed on my first bullet, which is massive. Nice. It's like, normally I play 10 bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very happy about it. Literally. <laughs> Literally saved money this time. That's nice. I did. I did. I didn't cash, but I saved money. I only played <laughs> once. So, have you um, played anywhere since uh, Madrid? Um, local series in Austria, and lots and lots of online poker. I've been studying almost every day, been playing all the wow. PKO events on 88 day poker, also the Mystery Bounty, and I've been doing quite well, yeah, um, I really Good. like it. Thank you. Excellent. What do you think is working well at the moment? Where have you got an edge at the moment, do you think? Well, I've been focusing my energy on PKOs, but they do have okay. a lot of similarities with uh, Mystery Bounty. So I just play more of those events. And just to uh, to help our, our audience, what, what do you think of the what big mistakes do you see people make in that kind of tournament? Apart well, from usual poker mistakes, what kind of format mistakes? Uh, besides uh, usual poker mistakes, uh, what did you say? Yeah, just uh, like PKO or mystery bounty related mistakes. What do people do wrong, do you think? Well, um, it's a, actually it's a whole different strategy. Uh, even the ranges that you're jamming and things like that, it's going to be different than an, in a vanilla tournament. 
Um, so first big mistake, they just don't study the proper strategy, but like mm -hmm. just a general thing, I would say maybe they over overvalued the bounties, especially later on the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, at the start of the tournament, the bounties are massive. Also in the mystery bounty stage, when the big bounties are still in, the bounties have a lot of worth. Uh, but once you reach the final table or you're deep in the tournament, in general, the bounties won't be that valuable and the chips itself will have way more value. And people don't balance it well enough and they risk too much. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, also, there are many differences, like if you're playing a small field tournament uh, to a medium field tournament and a large field tournament. Also, um, in, in the large field tournament, in a PKO, the bounties are really irrelevant. In a small field tournament, because big part of the price pool is still in, the bounce have more value. So also your ranges will change all the time. It, it, it's complex, it's complex, but because people don't really stop to study it, they make a lot right. of mistakes. They just make the wrong decisions. Yeah, so I've been trying to get some edge <laughs> in, in <laughs> the terms. Makes sense. Alex is going to open the button. Let's see if he gets any action. So Razvan, uh, now very short stacked. 600 is, is critical. In fact, there's the two short stacks next to each other. 600 is five big blinds, more or less. Zildremo has a question for you, Vivi. They want to know, what differences is there in your play between mystery bounties and PKOs? What differences? Um, mm, well, I, it has to come to the bounties aspect uh, because in PKOs, you can easily calculate uh, how much the bounty is worth and mystery bounty is not. So I definitely gonna be looking basically every single hand, uh, which bounties are still available on the mystery bounty tournaments. And if the big bounties are still available, uh, you really want to get involved. Uh, and I would just rather have like suited connectors to an ace x that is not too strong for an example and this type of hands perform very well uh, in multi-way spots and i know people go crazy for that mystery bounty <laughs> uh, yeah. Exciting. it's the golden uh, ticket but yeah, like um, the bounty has a different value in both tournaments. And the mystery bounty, when you reach this, this stage of the bounty, actually the bounties, sometimes they are worth like six stacks or so. Uh, so they they're, have a lot of value. It's, it's a different strategy. Um, stuff to summarize now. But, yeah, yeah. Um, Don't worry, you've given them plenty. They, they can... Okay. Yeah, they got to do their own work now. That's that's the truth. <laughs> All in to call. Yeah, this is really interesting because this is some uh, some serious stack pressure from Alex L. Because he's uh, he's come over the top of other Alex and said, "I don't think you want to call and risk your tournament life here with two short stacks." <laughs> That's a wild gem from Alex. Also. Oh, S4 suited. Okay, got better now. Does that happen if you just sit here long enough? Your hand gets better. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that was magical. <laughs> it's just so, the, it's just an impossible call, isn't it? With two stacks under ten big blinds, what can you do? Um, yeah, I think he should fold as he did. 
uh, of course, we see what Alex had, and actually, it's a great play from Alex. Um, applying pressure, taking the aggression, and ace four suited is a great candidate uh, of a hand. Chooses a bluff in this spot, ace four suited, ace five suited. A lot of us know this in theory, but in reality, we don't pull off with the play. So, I like to see that Alex is doing it. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, if you like mystery bounties, uh, we've got uh, a big tournament going on right now on 888, the 300k main event of the mystery bounty festival. And you can still play a day one flight. There's a day one flight tomorrow. You can still satellite in, I believe. I think you could do that right now on 888. So get involved in that. And whether you get involved or not, join us on Tuesday night. I'll be here with... Uh, what's his name again? David Tuckman. Uh, we'll be here on Tuesday... <laughs> at eight o'clock GMT and we'll bring you the final table so uh, make sure you check that out and the top bounty is thirty thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars that is sick that is a lot of money uh, I I really want to to win one of those big bounties on 8 day poker but I also would like to know how I would react if I would start screaming or have an answer <laughs> or if I would keep my poker face. If you won 30,000 euros, you would definitely scream. I think so. I, yeah. I would definitely scream. I would wake <laughs> up the whole neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Florin is going to call here, and uh, Konstantinos is at risk with the Queen 8. What do you think of Konstantinos gem with the Queen 8? Uh, well, he has he's on the button, and he has seven big blinds. I know, but he has a whole so, orbit, right? And every time he someone does have busts, a whole orbit, and he does uh, have two, he does have two big stacks in the blinds as well. Yeah, I don't like it very much. If it's suited, I would find some arguments maybe to do it. Mm -hmm. But queen eight uh, off suited is slightly a better than average hand. And yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. Well, it hasn't worked out so far. And now only a straight can get him out of this. So uh, we've got a folded jack. So he's got three cards to survive in this tournament. Otherwise, we're going to be five handed. That's the way it goes. Florin knocks out another one. He's knocked out a lot of players recently. Konstantinos is the latest victim. He's out in sixth place. He will take home some euros. How many euros, Nick? All right, hang on a second. Let me look. God. 9,000 euros for sixth place, leaving his five handed. That's amazing. That's a great, great, great cash. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Five thousand euros for pretty sweet. Yeah, this is a five hundred sixty euros tournament. Right. Uh, so it's roughly eighteen times you're buying. Um. So apart from all the other things that you're better than Nick Eastwood at, you are way better than him at knocking out players. Oh yes, it's true. They're they're. <laughs> Busting out quickly now. We were getting nowhere. You arrived, and now it's an avalanche of players leaving. <laughs> well, I, I haven't seen the things you guys told me before. I think the big pressure on the players was just to reach the final table. But now they're that they're there, they're actually going for it. Yeah, they're playing fine. Yeah, yeah. And it was very honest, strange. It was it, it, which is it, it's crazy because like before the pay jump wasn't that big but now the pay jumps exactly. start to be considerably more important so yeah that's a little it, crazy it was like a, it, it was it was crazy it was like a collective fear took hold of them all because the jump for the final table was 600 euros as you say absolutely right since then we've had uh, nearly 5,000 euros in jumps so it's uh it's fascinating yeah and it's gonna get more and more so i i would have imagined that players would be tighter now than before but this is not what we are seeing humans are interesting creatures vivian 
We are, right? With our ways and our weirdness. Florence going to move in here uh, on Alex, who has uh, playing 120, so he's got uh, about 13 big blinds. What are you What are you calling with here? Blind versus blind. Not this four off suited because no. this is just a hand that is not performing well. Even though you might be in front of your opponent, even if he has a hand like a queen eight or a jack ten, it's almost a flip. So like you need to be hoping your head and you're not performing well versus your opponent's range. Uh, in final tables, as I'm sure you guys talked about it, uh, there is a lot of ICM considerations. So you can jam more hands than you can call. Uh, I would call probably four, five, pocket fours, and um, a seven suited or something like this okay. and maybe like um king jack suited um king queen off oh aces oh is right I think he might get action. Florin definitely could three bet here, but he doesn't. Uh, I only say that because he's been quite an active three better so far today, but he doesn't uh, bet his button there. And there's probably not going to be much going on here. Let's see if Alex defends. Let's see if Alex will raise as a bluff. Actually, this hand could raise as a bluff. He just calls. Mm, versus the cutoff, I don't like it. Why do you like raising as a bluff, Vivi? Is it because it's one of the worst kings? Um, like a better king is too good to use as a bluff. Then right. you're getting a very good price. Uh, the same thing is with an ace. Uh, you actually don't want to like raise fold and and just put more chips in the pot with a hand that is not so great and play out of position with this sort of hands. Uh, so a king five off, I think it's a hand that has a decent blocker. The king is a good hand to have, and it's clearly a bluff. I, th I think poker players get a little wrong when you use two strong hands as bluff um, or you just play too passively. You don't ju just call everything. So you, you certainly need bluffs in this spot. And this hand, I think, makes the cut. If you get called, you will just play passively and it's easy to fold once you break everything. And if you hit a king, you're also going to have to play passive. Let's say you raise a uh, preflop and the cutoff calls, flop is king high. You can check all, you know, you don't. Mm -hmm. can yeah, still nice. control the pod. Nice explanation. It's a really good point about how players, you know, bluff with the too much. Don't, you know, they don't pick the right range of hands to, to make bluffs like that. Yes, to be honest, on the big blind, population-wise, players are massively under bluffing. People raise when they have a hand. This is what we see in general. So if you can implement bluffs in your big blind, it will be very profitable because people will perceive you with a very uh, value heavy range and they will just fold way more often or four bet you way less than they should uh, until they see here. that you're bluffing. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Uh, all in the call. This might go chop chop. Razvan's got the edge here. He's the all in player. He's the player at risk. And. Uh, he doesn't want a chop, of course. He wants a double up. But he's not going to get one. 
Chop it up. Sorry, Vivi, you're making a good point. The players interrupted you. <laughs> no. Yeah, just uh, just uh, something that most of us bluff more from the big one. Yeah, uh, it's definitely under bluffed. On we go here in Bucharest, five-handed. Thanks for being here on a Sunday evening. Poker night, isn't it, Sunday evening, let's be honest. Uh, we're going to be uh, covering this event through to a champion. Somebody's going to win 37,000 euros. Before we get there, we're going to give away a couple of tickets. We'll do a cheeky keyword giveaway, I think. Two $16.50 tickets will be won in the next couple of minutes before the players take a, a break, I believe. I think that's what I'm being told. Is the keyword ready, Lime? This is going to be fast. This is going to be the fastest, fastest money you've ever made if you win. I say money, poker money, because the keyword is very short. In honor of Vivian Saliba, the queen of PLO in my mind. Mm. The keyword is PLO. Three letters, a P, a L, and an O. P, L, O. P, L, O. P, L, O. P, L, O. Meanwhile, all in the call, and again, Razvan is the all-in player, and again, he's in good shape, but he needs this uh, ace-queen to get home. Okay. Um, Twenty-eight percent. Yeah, spades he doesn't want. So now we're flipping. That's fine. Razvan looking for the double up. A spade or a king knocks him out. That's fine. Right hand doubles up, up to ten big blinds. It's good for him. It's a good yeah, feeling. Good for him. Totally, still in this thing. There are about four hundred players that would happily swap places with him. That's the short stack in this position. <laughs> A few more seconds to type PLO in the chat and you'll be entered into our draw. Two $16.50 tickets being given away in this one. But I will tell anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. When I joined 888, uh, we had to record some commercials and I was doing something about PLO. And okay. there was something with how I was pronouncing PLO that wasn't right. And they were saying that I was pronouncing PLO. PLO, Hello. like where, where you sleep on. And we had to redo the shooting several times. Oh, no. So apparently this is something very tough to be pronounced for a foreigner. How do you rate I mean, my PLO pronunciation? PLO. Uh, perfect. Yellow. But I mean, it's pretty hard doing advert in, in not in your first language. That's pretty hard because they're going to want it to be absolutely correct. And it's not your first language. Like, I couldn't do that. Uh, we're running this contest. Lime's all over this. Like an express train of ticket joy. Who's going to win? Our I winner will. is? It's Vivian Maybe. Saliba. You're our yes. winner in life. <laughs> <laughs> Small blind just called again like this this i don't see is this gonna well, he's, limp, he's got limp the, jam it's is just this gonna big, limp jam no. yeah i think i think uh, it's a bit big for that isn't it uh, 26 no yeah it could be yeah uh, our first winner is raul off raul off has run off of ticket win here raul off wins ticket number one well played come down and collect your prize yeah is right and who is our second winner? Our second winner is chat regular Noob Frost Mage. Come on down. You are our second winner of a ticket, a $16.50 ticket. Enjoy your tickets. Enjoy your poker fun on us. 
Uh, still lots more tickets to give away. I've got three 109 gold tickets that must be given away. Congrats. Congrats. Florin wins another pot. He's Is he up over 10 million chips now? <laughs> he has all the chips. He does. Well, I would have liked to see a race from, from the small blind. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, it's a very strong hand. I have 26 big blinds, and sometimes the chips go in. <laughs> Right. I mean, you're playing against two random cards, aren't you? So, yeah. Ray seems good. <laughs> Pink Tan Sudi. Suited. That's a pretty hand. It's nice to the eyes. Yeah, folded, folded to the blinds again. Yeah, but nobody had anything. How do you like his face mask, Nick? It's different, isn't it? I said um, when he when he first sat down in it, I said if someone sat down in a in a mask like that, I would immediately think that they they'll never bluff. Mm -hmm. And I've been pretty much right, actually, because if you try and look, if you try and look scary and colourful and that kind of thing, it probably means that you're not actually very aggressive or bluffy. That would be my kind of instinct. Really? Yeah. Because huh. people act the opposite to how they are. Wisdom with Nick Wealth. People <laughs> they... act different from what they are. Yeah. Noted. They compensate for what they think their weakness is, right? Consciously and subconsciously. They do, they do. King for suited. At least he's going to race. Let's see if he's just going to go all in or what he's going to do. I think the big blind has the sec is second in chips. Okay. So I, I think he won't shove because the second big blind is Alex and I think he's got uh, sort of high 20s blinds, I think. I can't remember his stack. Oh, he's got more than that. He's got, uh, yeah, comfortably the second best in chips with about 40, low 40s big blinds. Mm -hmm. On we go, Nick Wealth and Vivi Saliba bringing you coverage of the final table here in Bucharest. So what happens after Bucharest, Vivi, to you? You go home until Barcelona or you've got somewhere else uh, in between? I go home until Barcelona, yeah. Um, nice. Um, Barcelona, 80 Day Poker Live Barcelona is probably my favorite stop. So yeah. I'm going to be very excited to go there, but it's also nice to be home and play a lot of online poker and just be back to my routine. Uh, live and online poker, a little bit of both. Actually, a little bit of live and lots of online for me is the perfect mix. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Barcelona is a fantastic stop. It is in Barcelona, but it's also a great venue and a great uh, festival that we hold. It's happening in May. Lots of time online for you to call. qualify. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. no let's go. Razvan again getting it in good as the short stack, but again needs this to hold. Hmm. So he had nine Ooh. big blinds when he shoved here. Ah, uh, there's always a sweat. <laughs> there is always a sweat. It's never easy. 
Nope. Never. Four or five knocks Razvan out. Queen is fine. And does he survive? He seems relieved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Well, just a just a few hands ago, he was down to five big blinds, and now he's a uh, much more promising twenty something big blinds. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, twenty big blinds. And now, besides Florine, the players have similar stacks. Yeah. Definitely uh, a little deep at the moment, uh, apart from the one short stack, Alex, uh, after those quick knockouts. New dealer. Are you going to be in Barcelona, Nick? Yes, Vivian. Ooh. So, guys, if you want to join excited. Nick and I in Barcelona, both, both of yeah. us, you can just go ahead and book your trip, or you can play the satellites. And yeah, this is a great stop. And if you're there, please say hello to both of us. Uh, we really like to meet you guys. And yeah, it's a great stop. So we will be there in May. We'll be in London in August and Coventry in October. Mm hmm. So lots of chances to come and play our big live events. If you're in the UK, you can play in the UK Premier League, uh, which is more affordable buy-ins, good fun, great time, lots of poker. Uh, and that's in Manchester in April, end of August in Leeds, uh, September in London, and October oh. in Comstain Festival in Coventry. Nice. Yeah. Lots of live poker if you want to have some fun with us. How do you like the King Jack suited call? I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fine. Um, it's against the only person that has you covered on the table. And mm -hmm. flatting with this hand is sometimes fine anyway, right? Um, it seems fine. Yeah, I like it too. King Jack off though. Mm, I wouldn't like, but King Jack suited. I like it. We agree. And that is an action flop. Misses absolutely everyone. <laughs> well, Anti -action. King Jack has overcars, got shot, backdoor flush. Yeah. He might take this spot down. I have the feeling. Chat. Chat. Who's still in the free roll? I haven't heard anything from any of you about the free roll, apart from some bust outs, which I don't like to hear. How are we doing the free roll? Are we in the money? We must be, surely. Anyone still in? Your chance to brag. And King Jack, take the pot down. Min cash for JBC, congratulations. In through the window, also a cash, nicely done. Is that all we got? We got Gaz also cashed, excellent. Khadid cashed, nice. Remember with cashes, it's not how much you win, it's the fact that you beat almost all the people. That's what matters in this life, beat other people. 12 pounds <laughs> cash, Daisy cashed. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, guys. Uh, it's about winning, Vivi. It's about beating the other people. Crushing them under our boot. Yeah. <laughs> Zill says, hey, I am the other person. Yeah, no, I can see that. There's always a victim. 
No. <laughs> King six from the small line. What you gonna do? Uh, so what have I got? Twenty big blinds. Can Twenty make big blinds. A, a and small the ship leader on my left. Can make a raise or just go ahead and fold. Ship leader is quite aggressive. That's the problem. Yeah, that is the problem. King six. Yeah, I would like him to fold or raise. <laughs> This is the worst of the three. That's what you're saying. I, I personally, in my opinion, yes. Because this is what will happen very often. You're just gonna limp, fold, limp, fold, and yeah. And that's a, again a good bluffing hand. You have a decent blocker. You have a high card if you get called, and you must have bluffs. <laughs> In through the window, said they used the poker blueprint to get your min cash. Nice. That's one of my courses. Immediately paying for itself with a min cash in a free roll. <laughs> We're playing 6120, which is incredibly unfriendly from a commentator point of view, because my 120,000 times table is weak. <laughs> King Jack suited, free hand. He just went for it. Ripped. Now, what does Florin do here? Actually, it's a quite large all-in just it is. to open jam. Um, I would have liked him to raise, to be honest. I think it's a little too much. You're never good when you're called. Also, like, players can take off the top of his range because, you know, he's not, he's not doing that with the top few percent of hands. But, but he does get this... King Queen to fold, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, he, he did jam a lot. He did jam a lot. Hi, piano cat. Uh, players have quickly gone on break. It's going to be about six or seven minutes. So then. Welcome back to Bucharest, the main event here, part of the 888 Poker Live series. And we've got five players left playing for a 37,000 euro first prize. Nick Wealthel and Vivian Saliba bringing you the action. And I have no idea why we just had a break, but we did. <laughs> Quite a random break. No, I think they were catching up uh, because they did a break, uh, okay. reaching the final table. Okay. So I think it was just so they were in right pace, something like that. So we're now playing 8160 blinds. So I don't know how your 16 times table are, Vivi. Mine's very poor. Oh, mine too. We can get roughly estimate roughly, everything. Roughly, yeah. You're going to get rough big blind counts, chat. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's what you're going to get. So Florin is our chip leader. And... Uh, You've been watching him on stream all day. He's been playing extremely well in, in the main. Uh, he has 57 big blinds. Alex has got 33. Miron's got 15. Razvan 14. And Alex 5. So three shorter stacks here, Vivi. Yes. Um, I I think Flory is playing very well. And I like the game of the second in chips. Also, also Alex. Alex L. <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. he made some good plays. Yeah, he made a nice uh, three bet light, and and he played pretty well yesterday as well because he was on the uh, stream here as well. Maybe a professional poker player. Yeah, maybe. 
nicio... Aveam și eu de amă, Vale. Nici un incentiv să mai... Let me refresh my stream. Nu mai pot să-l dau. Mare vorbă. Florin sitting on that big 9 million stack, probably going to open here. Ooh. Alex says this is the best I'm going to get, and uh, other Alex says I've got significantly better. <laughs> That's a way to think. So to recap the action here, Florin opened for 325, which is kind of standard double the big blind, and Alex has shoved to 890. So other Alex with the jacks. Thinking, um, you think he should overcall or jam himself? I think he should he should go all in. Yeah, I think he should go then. Even though he's the check, second in chips, um, he's not. They are not that deep. Uh, yeah. He has thirty something big blinds, so it, it, it's jacks. You know, like it's pretty strong. And actually, when you kick out flooring, you get even a better prize, and your hand is it. It is even a more profitable gem. <laughs> You need four bets, Lauren folds, and Alex will need to, to hit this hand. He will have to hit the quads, but... Yeah, Straight flush redraw. Even, Straight not, flush not redraw. Possible. No, no possible, because the jack of clubs no, is in Alex's hands. Oh, yeah, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find drama. Uh, quads is a pretty good hand, and at least Alex leaves with a story. I lost the quads. What was I supposed to do? Um, he uh, he had a big chip stack earlier on in the day, hung on to be short stacked, and he will leave us in fifth, and he'll leave with his exciting, scary bandana as well. Uh, well that still, that's still smiling. The bandana's still smiling. Yes, it's a great result. 12,000 euros. 12,000 euros. A lot of money as well. Um, now that Alex has a lot of chips, and he was playing aggressively and very well. Uh, I want to see if what what will happen. Maybe we're gonna see some interesting spots. I think he will fight back to Florine's aggression. Yeah, because he's now. What did he take down in that pot? Well, if he fights back here, he's going to get it shoved back in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he should wait a little bit before wait fighting back. But, yeah, but, but, but let's see. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably still stacking chips. <laughs> Who would like to play? Given that we're now four-handed, who would like to play for another $109 ticket? Because I'm not going to lie, I've got three, and I have to give them away before the end of this tournament. These are big tickets. $109 tickets. $109 tournaments. Lovely. It's amazing. And the tournament's on 88 for $109. You have great options. You have the yeah. Sunday main event. You have the PKOs for 109 Two options every evening. You have the tournaments during the series. It, it's actually my favorite buying range. Like, it's they're so good. There you go. There you go. Um, your chance to play in a big event and win yourself a big chunk of change. It's all going to depend on your knowledge of Vivian Saliba's view of the world. That's what it's going to depend on. <laughs> this, is, this is what does Vivi think. That's what we're playing. Yay! My favorite game. <laughs> the game that's about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do I sound nervous? Okay, narcissistic? so <laughs> we're going to continue with our theme of making you think about your entire life. This time okay. you're going to think about your poker career. So okay. in your life, how many bracelet events will you play in? 
So in your life, how many bracelet events, online and offline, will you play in? How many bracelet events will Vivian Saliba play in? Only one guest per player. I'm sure you've all played it by now. We've been on stream for three days. One guest per player only. You're trying to figure out what Vivian is going to answer. Mm -hmm. Lime will run things in chat. If she's there, are you there, Lime? I hope you're there. Crikey. Yes, you are. Uh, one guest per player. If two people are the same distance away or two people get the right answer, it's whoever gets it first is the winner. Vivian's thinking about how many bracelet events she's going to play in her poker life. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. mm. You, can, you can actually hear... You can hear the wheels turning in her head. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. Playing for a $109 ticket. One will win, and then we've got two more to give away before uh, the end of the show. We'll be here until we have a champion in Bucharest. Okay, I have my answer. Okay, awesome. Should put it in the uh, put it in the secret chat. Mhm. Mm Oh. My internet here is more or less. Did you say your internet's not good? Not so great. I'm having okay. to refresh our stream. Um, but I think now it's okay. Can you see this hand? Mm, 10 8. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. our two our two big stacks in the blinds. What a question, Ted Noodle. I know it's a brilliant question. It's a good question. You said uh, live and online. Yeah. How many bracelet mm -hmm. events will you play in your poker lifetime live and online? Uh, Florence got a top pair here and he bet the flop and then he's checked the turn. Ooh. Alex has then bluffed at it and been called. Florin makes two pair on the river. I guess he'll check again having decided to take this line. What do you think about continuing to bluff here, Vivi? Mm. Mm. Well, there weren't that many draws, and there wasn't much of a change of um, texture in the board. So, of course, your hand cannot never win. Um, but yeah, I think aggression is always better than non aggression. <laughs> That's a, like, I think probably it is better like to bluff on the on the long on the long run. Go for it. Die with Go the lie. Die with the <laughs> lie. I haven't heard that before. Oh, well, it's something we say in Portuguese. Maybe I love it. maybe maybe I'm translating to English and it doesn't make so much sense. But we just say basically stick to it. Like oh, yeah, it makes yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Keep, yeah. keep, with the keep, lie. keep bluffing, yeah. keep lying. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good poker tip. <laughs> Aggression is key. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to close the contest very soon. I asked Vivian Saliba how many bracelet events, live and online, will she play in her poker career? She has provided her answer. The person who's closest to what Vivian thinks is the answer to that question wins a $109 ticket. Lots of luck. I'm refreshing my video again for some reason. Having a hard time watching our images. Well, if you get the refreshing, you'll see that Rasvan's moved all in with Ace King. I did. I don't think he's going to get action, but you never know. Yeah, I think he's just going to fold. He does. I can remember when Rasvan had five big blinds. And uh, look at him now. Up to a chip two in a chair. Million. Chip in a chair. chair now. Yeah. He, he can very well still win the tournament. <laughs> Those guesses are funny. Funny. <laughs> Ace two. Just gonna fold. You ha you should. Yeah, the only option would be to shove, I think, and he doesn't want to do that. Good for him that he doesn't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a thing. So we've got a polarized final table. We've got two big stacks and we've got two shortish stacks. They're not critical, but they're between 10 and 20 big blinds. <laughs> On we go. The contest is closed, so um, don't give me your answer yet, Vivian, but how many bracelet events have you played so far, do you think, roughly? Oh, that's another... I need to think. Um, roughly, maybe... Uh, hundred something? Hundred and something so far. So some of you now know that your guesses were way low. Maybe a, maybe a little less, but um, depending on how you consider, like, about maybe something between 50 to 100, but I would say it's close to 100. Okay, so tell us how many... How many do you think you will play? Reveal your answer. How many do you think you'll play in your poker life? I said 888. 888. Because how of many course, are there per year now? 
Manning because you have the online bracelets and then yeah. you have Vegas, of course, there are many bracelets and I normally go to the Bliss of Europe as well. So right. I play all the bracelet events that I can. Um, I'm not playing super high rollers, mixed games, but I play a lot of a, a lot of events and I would keep up with the pace that I'm playing now, of course, it would be higher than 888, but I'm considering that at some point, I will slow down a little bit on my career, maybe retire or have kids. I don't know. So this is why I said this number. Okay. Uh, well, most of our chat were way low, but uh, a couple were close and the winner was very close. Pashad, you are indeed the winner with 870. Very, very good guess. Nobody guessed the 888 brand name. Uh, you would have had it exactly. Uh, but uh, Pashad is our winner for, with 870. Well played to you. And if you're not Pashad, don't be sad. Because there are two $109 tickets left. Uh, and some small tickets as well, depending on how long we go. But the two $109 tickets will definitely be awarded. So hang out with us, watch some poker and win. Disclaimer, winning not guaranteed. <laughs> This never gets old. <laughs> I, I really like it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm your fan. I've only got five jokes, and you've heard them all. So. I did. No, you have more. You have more. But you, you cannot say it here. <laughs> uh, that's also true. <laughs> Nick Welfel and I actually we became friends uh, in Barcelona because we were there for 88 Poker Live and we went to the soccer game, the football game, uh, football match, and it was a great experience. Did you remember uh, who Barcelona played against? Well, it was Real Madrid. And they played oh, against in Madrid, Madrid, and Madrid. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Real Madrid, and they played against Atletico yeah. Madrid. It was the Madrid derby. Yes, and Real this, won. this one. Yes, it's true. It was you huge. See, I was, I was only paying attention to you. Um, no, no, I, I did go to the uh, a Barcelona match as well when I was in Barcelona, but that wasn't with you. Yeah, it was a very nice experience. It was amazing, yeah. Um, and I remember, like, they were very tense when it was nil-nil because obviously losing to Atletico is a big problem for them. And then they scored, and it went mental, <laughs> it went crazy. Yeah. In through the window, I like to add a new joke to my repertoire every four to six years, yeah. Slowly building yeah. up. You have any other one for us? No. I, you, just stay tuned. You might get one more. <laughs> You're very lucky. Stay tuned. Stay Not tuned. for the tickets. Not for the final table stream, but for Nick Welfel jokes. Yeah. Is that not why everyone's here? Of course. Okay. Thank goodness. I was worried. <laughs> yeah. Don't be. Don't be. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Maron has got an interesting spot here. He's got, uh, what is that? 11 big blinds. Probably he'll just defend. But he does have some fold equity against this open because Florin is definitely opening wide. He was earlier. He definitely is four-handed. But he does decide to call. Which seems I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. I thought 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 I
So I found Miron, uh, sorry, I found Florin on Hendon Mob, and uh, he does have a big win to his name uh, in a live tournament. So he's been playing very well all day. I don't think he's going to get phased by closing in on this title. How, how much is his big win? Uh, he won 200,000 last year. Mm -hmm. Indeed, a in, very big uh, win. Yeah. Uh, in a... Wow, a 3,000 person tournament in um, Hanover in the, in the US. He won 210,000. Amazing. Incredible. Now I wonder what Miron does here because he's had this spot I think three times and he hasn't raised once because I remember you commenting on him not raising so I wonder if he does something funky or if he just raises or shoves yeah he just limps with the jacks how do you like it uh i understand why he's done it because he hasn't shown any aggression in this spot before but i mean i don't really like it I mean, yeah me neither me neither <laughs> I understand how he got there, but you know, you just it's just a solid value spot. And now he he's got limp check and now he's checked. And Florin will take a stab at it, which Florin does like to do. Probably continue once, but if Florin decides to keep firing, he might fold the best hand. Yeah, that's the the jeopardy when you play pots out of position. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, no action. You like another barrel there? Mm. No, not really. It's tough to give your opponents jacks or tens, right? So, like, if your opponent right. has king jack or ace I mean, I mean, here, he, here he's thinking about a value bet, right? Yeah. What he's going to make. Try and get called by ace high, king high. He does get cool. He's going to be shocked to see Jax. <laughs> we all are. Yeah. <laughs> well, it worked out just perfect <laughs> for Jax, but um, yeah, he won the match. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so after that pot Miron is up to oh, I've gone down a road I can't finish one let's have a look uh, he's up to 16 big blinds but decides not to open the button here 
And our two big stacks in the blinds will battle for this one. Good shot. Good shot. Yes, you do have a good shot. <laughs> Always good to make sure. Double get shot. It's only getting better. Double belly buster. That's what Dual Brunson used to call it. I don't really know what it means, but that's what it is. I was expecting you to tell me. Yeah, I know. I don't know. He was in the super system. He calls it a double belly buster. Chat, what do you think? Why? I think that's right. Or, you know, why? Why? Is, why? <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Curious now. Yeah, it's a double gut shot, yeah. It never, ever comes in. I don't know what the odds are, but I think they're infinite. <laughs> See? Never. Not one time. It was only getting better until it was not. Correct. Yeah. Until it didn't. King High is going to take down this action pack pot. And on we go. <laughs> So, Vivian, how much of your time are you playing tournaments and how much are you playing cash at the moment? At the moment, I'm only playing turn at tournaments. Oh, I'm not playing tournament. cash at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah no PLO. I, no not PLO really. Cash. Okay. No. When I play PLO, it's basically PLO tournaments and it's not that often. And is that just because you think your edge is bigger in tournaments or you enjoy it more or which? Mm, that's because before I was a little bit everywhere. I was playing some PLO cash, I was playing some tournaments, and what was happening is that I was mediocre on everything. Okay. So I just decided to target better where do i think i could have a better edge and put enough volume in and yeah i decided to play more tournaments and especially mystery bounties and pkos cool so this is where i've been spending most of my study hours as well <laughs> And do you think it's more fun? Do you find it more fun to play those than cash or less fun or more, you know, like uh, emotionally easy or difficult or what? Uh, I think. Hmm, that's a good question. I really enjoy live poker as well, and I really enjoy the experience of playing live tournaments. Mm -hmm. You running deep in a big live event is a really special experience. I play tournaments it's, to live those moments. It's the biggest it, high in poker, isn't it? Yeah, it's very glamorous, prestigious, exciting. Um, it, it's really a roller, roller coaster of emotions, but it's so great. And I just like the overall experience more, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is why. Yeah. Yeah, cash is... Uh... Cash is definitely less fun, I would say. Yeah, it, it's nice because you can play whenever you want. You can live whenever you want. It's more, right. especially for the everyday life, like 
if you have a regular job and everything, you can play a little bit and quit, which is great. In tournaments, sometimes you, you're there for many hours and you don't have that flexibility. So I see the advantages, but I'm a full-time poker player. So most of my time is dedicated to play poker, so I can play lots and lots of tournaments. Flooring is getting many good playable hands. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he already has the chip lead, and he's already probably the most aggressive player at the table, so it's kind of tough for everybody if he's also going to get the hand. Yeah, like, Jack Tinsuit, it's a great hand. I got a question. If I get card dad when it's close to the money, uh, yeah, of course. And sometimes, let me tell you, I'm the bubble. <laughs> sometimes I, I, I was the bubble on 8 Day Poker Live um, uh, Madrid. Actually, I busted one to the official bubble, and then the bubble was Lucia. <laughs> so we both bubbled. Bubble and bubble. Yeah, yeah, that was awful. And it is n not so nice, but someone has to be the bubble. And sometimes that's me. Actually, many times. Many times that's me. Because I still going to go all in if I have to go all in. And like I said before, what makes money in poker is aggression. And yeah, sometimes you bubble. <laughs> Once again, these two battle in the blinds, they've played this is maybe their fifth hand where the other two have folded round to them. So we really uh, appreciate your company here on this Sunday night. We're going to be watching this tournament until we have a winner. Four-handed at the moment, as you can see, uh, in the main event here in Bucharest. Um, Florin would be the favourite to take this down. He's played fantastic poker uh, so far today and is the chip leader, but this is no limit. And things can change very, very quickly. We know that. Mm -hmm. Colin's asking more questions, Vivi. How many tournaments do you, on average, how many tournaments do you win a year? Oh, wow. Ooh. I, I don't have an answer to that. And it's nothing you can predict, actually. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have an answer. Well, also, winning to win. And you shouldn't. Go ahead. Hey. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say winning tournaments is also a function of how big the fields are that you enter. So, you know, if, you, if you're playing a lot of nightly tournaments at your local card room and you're one of the better players, you're going to win more tournaments than if you're playing a lot of massive main event field tournaments. Also, variance is smaller and all of that. Um, yeah. But I, I don't even think this question I, I, I makes too much sense if you understand how poker works because and, and if you're like oh this year we're gonna play that many tournaments and i think i can win that much and this is 
not true. Like nobody can know that. You cannot predict. Um, we should try not to focus on results literally just play good poker just make the right decisions and try and hope to be lucky enough that you're gonna be many heads up and win many tournaments but you cannot control these outcomes yeah we wish we could but we can't yeah you're just trying to play in tournaments with an edge obviously and over time the edge turns into money that's the that's the only thing you can control and what is the best edge tournaments out there do you know the answer nick well so the best for our viewers like super massive edge is it our free rolls our daily free rolls exactly <laughs> our daily free rolls free money people like not taking too seriously because it's a free roll yeah chips flying everywhere yeah. and you don't invest anything so that's the, it's the correct best. entry price yeah lovely our free rolls are the best 888 does a great 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 job in the free rolls and it's so generous to its community and the tickets we give away is so much value well, Razvan, over the last hour and a half, has uh, mastered the happy art of having a strong hand and having someone else have a second best hand. Although here, has he really moved in? What is that? Oh, so he's moved in for okay. So it's not that big actually. He's moved in for twenty big blinds. Mm, I think Florine has to fold. Yeah, King Jack off is a pretty bad hand to call this kind of shove with, I think. And he didn't even raise his jacks. Like, it is something that uh, you need to consider that when he's going oh, in, he probably did... does have a good hand. Uh, it's the other guy, Vivi. It's Razvan. It's not the guy in picture. It's the guy who has the big blind. Oh. Oh, it's true. Okay. But it doesn't. What you're saying is right. I mean, yeah, Same he doesn't. Same for him. Hold. Same for him. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he also didn't show much aggression, but yeah. Sorry, my my stream here is very laggy, and I have a little That's all right. just, difficulty. Just, just say, and I'll fill in the blanks if you can't see. Correct me, please, Nick Welfo. How do I pronounce your name? It's like I pronounce pillow and pillow, uh, or do I say it properly? It's yeah, you you're there. It's it's wealth, like lots of money. That's how lots it's written. Lots of money. So yeah, because it's wealth. So it's wealth all. Wow, it, it, you you have such a good name for a poker player. Yeah. <laughs> If only, if only it was true. It's definitely, it's definitely a cool name, but it's also a name that most people don't say right. They will say it wrongly. Nah, yeah, it's a tough name. So Americans get it right, funny enough, because they just read it as two words, whereas everybody else seems to get it wrong. Happy Ray, that might be the worst joke of the weekend. Well done. Bodwet says there's a golfer called Shank. Is there really? That's ridiculous. How can you become a professional golfer if your name is Shank? What does Shank mean? Shank is when you, uh, you miss hit it off the very uh inside of the club and it basically goes nowhere 
Okay. Yeah. And Budwet's saying there's a professional golfer called Shank. It's like if a poker player was called Punt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Punter. Exactly. Punt is a great name for a poker player. John Punt. <laughs> So if you need to create an eight account, put the punter or so. It's a good name. Yeah, it's a very good name. What am I saying? If you have to create an eight 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 poker account, of course, all of you guys have an eight 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 poker account, right? <laughs> If you don't use Vivi, if you don't use Vivi's code, she gets the bonus. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> And where is Vivi's code? It is on Vivi's Instagram and the highlights. <laughs> so is... Vivi's Instagram is Vivi.saliba. Shameless, shameless self promotion. I love Say it. Say hello. Oh, well, I'm learning from you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ace Queen. No sweat. We haven't seen uh, we haven't seen too many interesting hands the last half hour, have we? We haven't seen too many too much uh, too many hard decisions, I wouldn't say. Not at all. Yeah. Pretty standard everything. Nessie asks, how's Bucharest been for you, Vivi? Um, good, yeah. Uh, Poker-wise, I didn't make any money, but I had a blast. And the whole, not the whole team, but a big part of the team is here. And I just had a great time. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. It's too late to join us in Bucharest, but you've got plenty of time to satellite in and qualify for Barcelona which, if it's possible, is even better than Bucharest as a stop. Uh, Vivi said it's her favourite stop of the year. We'll both be there. Hopefully you can join us in Barcelona in May. Try and yeah. those satellites. Definitely. The satellites or just go ahead and book it because it is so much fun. It is summer in Spain. Great tournaments, great you got vibes. The beach. At the beach, you got the nice restaurants, you have Thank great you. poker, you have the 8 8 poker team, you have Nick Walfo. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's David Techman. We'll also be there. Yeah, we can't stop him. It's too late. Um, yet yeah, <laughs> David will be there as well. It, it, it's only getting better. Wow. It's only getting better. Yeah. So ace four raising the small blind. I like it. Yeah, I expect we'll see Alex call and see a flop here, but he's thinking about something. Well, for what I see, Alex is always taking his time. Ace three bets, uh, I think. Yeah, it makes it a million and fifty. Nice. Remember when I said I think he will fight back? You I did was say wrong. That. I did. did that. Now Florence got the game to Florence got the game to make a move here. It doesn't look like he's going to. Is he? When he looks his him? cards like this, almost exposing it, yeah. I don't think he will. I don't that, think he will. Thank, thank you for saying that. I meant to say that earlier. When he lifts his cards up, he definitely. If you're sitting uh, to his uh, left or right. Oh, wow. Here we Ooh. go. Action. Wow. Does he call? I don't love calling. I don't like calling at all. It's like a little bit of a donation. The thing is, you're barely beating the bluffs. Like, ace for all right. versus jack and off's hand is basically a flip. If Alex is getting, like, a bad ace also to, to raise or something like that, uh, ace for off is not beating anything. You're out of position. is a big pot. Um, you can use as a 
I think it's just a fold. I think it's just a fold. Yeah. I think so too. And you, you just like, what flop do you want? And then like, even if you hit your ace, are you calling off all your money, are you paying him off all his money there? I don't know. I just, not, not a lot of good things happen, I think. Yeah, and I think you're being pushed around. If you truly believe it, just jam yourself now. Yeah, that's what I thought he was thinking about, actually, because he is, he is aggressive. We've seen him make some moves uh, earlier in the stream. Um, but now, you know, you're guessing. I mean, you don't have very much. You've got some, I don't know, like... <laughs> he does call. Oh, no, he raises. <laughs> that's interesting. That, I mean, to me, that's totally premeditated, you know? He's decided to do that no matter what, I think. <laughs> Do you think it feels like that? Ooh. This feels like uh, it's just it feels like a bit of an ego pot rather than like it feels like these two want to beat each other up in poker terms. Maybe they listened to Vivi's advice die with the lie. Dive the lie. <laughs> I can't see a flaw in that plan. I mean, it's cool, but I can't see a problem with the plan. <laughs> Sometimes you're just dead. At the end. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So well, he calls Alex now. He's got two and a half go. behind. Is is Florin just going to set him in? <gasps> Oh my god. Oh wow, that is and such a lucky card. Poor Alex, Jesus. And actually this card improves Alex's um equity maybe if he was giving a uh, flooring a queen because now a king would give him an straight as well. He has double gut shot. A double belly belly what? Belly buster. <laughs> Oh my god. See, this sucks for Alex because Alex knows he's being put all in here. Alex knows he's being bluffed some of the time here. They're like there's so many draws and we can see that he got raised with no draw. Um, but he's basically getting almost the equity to pay. He has a pair and double gut shot. Yeah. So you're right. Let's let's say he has ten outs. Um he's almost getting the prize, but I think I think he will find the fold. Uh, it's just a very unfortunate turn card. Yeah, and he does make it. And yeah, I think it's the right decision. Just unlucky. Yeah, really unlucky. And it would have been a really interesting spot if the ace hadn't come, if it was like the two of spades, because I think Florin was going to put him in anyway. I just think Florin, I'm just, you know, making a read, but I just think Florin had decided he was going to put maximum pressure on whatever happened. Yeah, wow. That's upsetting, but he, I think he did the, the right fold. I liked how he played. I like how he played the hand. It's one of those moments in poker. There is nothing you could have done. He played well, and unfortunately, he got a little unlucky. But what matters is that he's still alive. He's still alive. He can still recover his deck. And all he got to do is just be a little patient and hopefully find a double up. It's been quite a long time on stream where it's looked like Florin's name was on this trophy. He played very, very well before the final table. And uh, at the moment, he looks unstoppable. But as we've said before, it can change so quickly in No Limit Holden. Couple of double ups, and it's a different tournament, isn't it, Vivi? It is. It is. How's your internet? Can you see the pictures okay or not? Uh, sometimes I have to refresh it all the time, unfortunately. Oh, but um, yeah. Okay. I, we have an all in. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, yeah. That's insane. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Whoa, what is this knit roll? And how do you like Serene, uh, Florine's race with 10 free from the button? Uh, I love it. He's got all the chips. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I, I like aggression, but um, maybe not with the 10 3 <laughs> Vivi, what, Vivi, this man, uh, Razvan cannot have Ace King suited here. Like, otherwise, this is. Wh 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 why, is, why is there a delay? Okay, he's put his money in. Okay. That was a really weird delay. So Alex is at risk here. Very, very unlucky. He's done very little wrong. No, he played very well. I, I really like basically everything he did. He's still got equity. Let's see if he can get out of it. Backdoor clubs or nine. Uh, backdoor straight cards. I'm trying for him. He deserves to get lucky. No, not that Razvan deserves to lose this pot or anything like that, but um, Alex definitely deserves to get lucky. And he does pick up clubs uh, or a three. That's a fantastic card for him. No help. Eliminated. And fourth? Oh, yeah. It's such a hard Perfect. game, isn't it, Vivian? Because he did almost nothing wrong, and he goes from being a strong second in chips to being out in a heartbeat. Yes, uh, he played very well. Um, tournaments are swingy, and positions are changing all the time. Um, again, the advice that I gave before I started uh, to comment commentate is like to take it easy, take it well. Uh, it is, in the end, just a tournament. And there will be more tournaments, and it, it's a great result. You should be happy. You should be happy no matter how you bust it. I like your energy. I bet Alex Hell doesn't feel it right now, but he will tomorrow morning when he wakes up with 15,000 euros. When I busted in fourth place in a very big tournament, it was actually my biggest score. It was a huge difference, the fourth place to the first place. But I was so happy for going so far and for the great result that I had that I was shaking everybody's hand and I even shook the dealer's hand and I was giving everybody hugs. I busted so happy. Like, I was just happy for leaving it. And yeah, it's possible to feel happy busting a tournament. I, I've there you go. A life lesson for everybody. Yeah. Definitely, Jax. yeah, Jax, but probably not too much going on here. Miron, obviously, now the short stack. He's got about uh, 14 big blinds. No, sorry, 12. <laughs> Three-handed for the money in Bucharest. Bucharest, we will see a champion crowned on this stream. We've got two $109 tickets left to give away. So we'll do that. Vivian, how do you feel about thinking up a question for what does Nick think? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Give no, me... you don't, don't have to do it instantly. You can think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Nettie, I've just run out of questions. I've been doing three days. And I can't. <laughs> I could start with the questions I started day one with. Could go back to the beginning. Miron picks up an ace in the small blind. He's got 2.3 million. We're playing 8160, so you do the maths. Good enough to move in, and I do not believe he will be called here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I have a nightmare question. A nightmare question? Yes, should I do this one? Put it in uh, chat so I can see it's how a... nightmarish it is. <laughs> a nightmare for you. Oh, really? <laughs> to come up with the answer. <laughs> So remember that <laughs> you're not trying to catch me out, Vivian. So remember. Let me remember have some that, fun here. Okay, but remember that chat has to be able to guess it. Can chat? Yeah, nightmare for everyone. For no, it's tough. Okay, well, I'm, this may be too hard because we're all sleepy. But that's the, the good thing. Everybody wakes up. And it's worth a $109 ticket on 8 at a poker. Come on. It's true. I know. It's true. It's a big prize. Well, we have a, a, a board. Nothing will happen, I guess. Ooh. Backdoor flush for both players, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Raz fan thought about leading there, but decided not to. Are you going to tell me this uh, question, Vivi? Should I ask you? So just tell, just tell me, chat. Don't guess yet. We're just going to make sure that it's playable. It is playable. It is, you're sure it's playable? It is playable, but okay, it's tough for everybody. Right, I trust you. Let's do it. So uh, Vivi's going to ask me a question. I'm going to think of my answer. You're trying to guess what my answer will be. One guess per person. One guess per person. If two people guess the same amount or are equally far away, it's whoever puts it in first that is the winner. Lime Ricky runs the contest in chat. She decides when it's closed. Vivi, ask me the question. This is a nightmare, apparently. Yeah, it's the, it's, you won't know how to estimate, but still we want to know your answer. So the question is, up to this moment, this very moment now, how many times have you pronounced 888 poker? In my life or, or in, on In your part? life, in your oh life. Uh, this better be round numbers, I think, chat. Round numbers, round numbers, round numbers. Your answer must end in a zero. Your answer must end in a zero. If you've guessed a number that isn't a zero, I'll, I'll let you re-guess. But otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare for Lime to figure it out. So round numbers only, please. Round numbers only. If it ends in a five, it's not a round number. It's got to end in a round figure. There we go. Okay. <laughs> And talk about eights, eight at eight poker. We have eights for Byron. Erasman and the smoke. I'm actually going to try and work this out. Yeah, do it. I got you. <laughs> yeah. I, if my I'll internet be about, allows I'll be me. about half an hour. <laughs> we have a null in with the eights and Razvan is considering. So, what are the blinds now? 8160. So this is a big mm -hmm. shot. This is 20 big blinds, uh, a bit less. 20 big blinds. Yeah, 19 maybe. Yeah, I think Razvan will fold. It's a big chunk of his stack as well. And right now, things are looking good for him. And he does make the fold. <laughs> this is why it's very important to get this middle pair, small pairs, and jam. 
because you get many hands that you would be flipping to fold. So down to three players, they're playing for 37,000 euros. Nice. You're doing top commentary here, Vivian. I am, right? Yeah, all over it. <laughs> so Myron continued with his pattern and just called us mobile blind. Um, and knowingly that he will have some strong hands, Florine decided to to check and look the the flop. This is a nightmare flop. So pair and flush draw versus open ended for Florine. My answer wow. is in. I'm back. Nice. I think Myron can do literally everything here. He can call, he can raise. He can, he shouldn't be definitely folding, uh, but he could call or raise. Uh, his hand has a lot of equity. Yeah, it's a fantastic hand and blind versus blind. I really, I really think he should just try and get the money in. Oh, so he's, a bit, wow. he's, a bit, he's a bit too deep. He's a little too deep, but he could raise. And yeah, I like maybe... raising, I think. I like you, you win the hand very, very often. You deny equity to everything, right? Um, yeah. Anyway. Now he, he... life got much easier for him. Uh, but let's see. I'm sorry, I was doing my calculating. Was there a raise preflop here or not? No, it was oh, limp. Okay. Back. Okay. I like that Myron is sticking to his um, strategy on the small blind. He's limping at least strong and medium and weak hands, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Limp only. And he called, um, why not raising? Easy life, easy life. <laughs> and he checks rather quickly. When you check so quickly, uh, I always think that my opponent has somehow some showdown value. Uh, I would like him to take some time for checking. Uh, timing is a very, very important tell. Yeah, so um, I think timing tells are the most reliable, actually, of all yes. the tells. I agree. It's just some decisions you can't make quickly. So if you make a decision quickly, that's a very concrete way to narrow down what an opponent's got. Right? Everything else is more subjective. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Contest is closed. Somebody's going to win a hundred and nine dollar ticket based on my very accurate answer. I can tell you that I think some of you or a lot of you have missed or not being specific with the question. Because Vivi asked me how many times have I said 888 poker? Not 888. Mm -hmm. 888 poker. So I've just disappointed some people, I think. What what is the ratio of you saying eight 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 poker to you saying eight eight eight? Well, I wouldn't say eight 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 poker almost anywhere outside of a stream. 
Mm -hmm. Like if we were at dinner or something, I wouldn't say what's going on at 888 poker. I'd just say what's going on at 888. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think, I think in my life, the vast majority of times I've said 888 poker, I've been on a stream. Mm -hmm. Makes also, sense. I've just said it, also, I've just said it three times and I haven't added that to the total. Yeah, yeah, it was up to that moment. It's okay. Up to that moment. Okay, fine. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and even sometimes on stream, obviously, I'm going to say 888, not 888 poker. So I think some people are way high, is my point. Okay. We're, waiting, we're going to find a winner and then we'll tell you. Was it a, a little nightmare or was okay? I don't know. It's Lime had to do get find the answers, so it was definitely a cool question. <laughs> That's the way to put it. <laughs> Razvan, bluffing with no equity. <laughs> Um, hmm. Maybe he's going to bluff three times with no equity and really excite us. I mean, actually, he has equity, but um, hmm. we know what you mean, yeah. Yeah. You've, you've almost always got some. Well, let's see if it's going to continue firing. No improvement. I think you will just check now. Let's see this hand and then we'll find a winner from our lovely people in chat. It does check. Oh, ta -da. see some equity. Eight, <laughs> eight, eight, eight poker. It's gonna be very bad. No, I don't think so. He will. Wow. I don't think he, like. <sighs> a little thin. Yeah, like, what does he get called by here? I mean, we're going to see because Myron's got a one pair hand, which I don't think calls because. I mean, the only. What are the bluffs? The only bluffs are spades, right? Which he checked he would have bet on the flop on the flop anyway, probably. Yeah, maybe you could turn a three into a bluff, make, yeah, trying to make that's... a four to fold or something like this. Yeah, raise. Uh, do you know what? I was just thinking, just raising there is interesting. Yeah, I I think they're not deep enough for this type of thing, but um, uh, yeah, um, interesting bet on the river. Razvan does win. Razvan has been on a one-way track, really. Uh, I'll remind you all that I think he was down to either five or six big blinds, and he's uh, he's won most of the pots he's played since, including knocking out Alex. Yeah, he's been chipping up non-stop. Okay, let's award a winner. What did you ask me, Vivi? What was your nightmare question? <laughs> up to this day, up to this moment, how many times have you pronounced 888 eight, eight, poker? 888 eight, eight, poker. Um, so, as I said, I think most of you are really high because it's not 888. Eight, eight. If it was 888, eight, eight, it would be, I don't know, thousands and thousands. But 888 eight, eight, poker, I'm really only saying when I'm streaming. So when we do Magic Mondays, David hosts the show and he says it most of the time. I don't say it very much. So I reckon we've done a hundred and... Uh, 
uh, yeah, 120 streams. I've said three times per stream, maybe. Um, makes 480. And then I reckon I've done 60 live streams. And I reckon I say it much more on live stream. So I did much more for that. I did like 10 times every live stream. So that's 1,080. And then I just had to guess an amount for casual use. And so my answer, which I think you'll find is correct, is 1,650. So that's it, right, guys. That's the correct answer. Nick Walfo has speak spoken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a day poker. 160. How much? 1,600? 1,650. That's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. Nailed it. Nailed Bad luck it. almost everyone because there's only one prize. Uh, at least if you were way high, you weren't even close. So you don't have the agony of defeat, right? Um, mm -hmm. Our winner. Uh, is Sif05. Sif05 said 1300. They were closest, believe it or not. Sif05. Yeah. Uh, Mogyo, you were very close, but you've won a ticket already today, I think. Um, one, one ticket win per day, sadly for you, but well played. Sif05 is the winner of this $109 ticket. To the record, I think this number to be very low. <laughs> you think I've said it more? Very low, yeah. I don't know. Like, if you watch, like, I don't know. I bet I never you, say it when I'm not on stream. You've done, you done commercials. You yeah. And I think you say more than three times because you say, like, 8 8 poker live, book a rest. Yeah, so I counted 10 times per live stream. Hmm. Remember that David's usually hosting because, you know, he likes to, he likes oh. to do the intros and stuff. He's the host. <laughs> And I'm just usually sitting here saying stupid stuff uh, and, fun, you know, funny stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, you're right. It's probably low. But it's also the right answer. Sif it is the winner. right answer. It, it is what <laughs> Nick thinks. Sif agrees. is the perfect answer. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got one more $109 ticket to give away, and we've got some smaller tickets to give away as well. So stick with us. We're three-handed. Here in Bucharest, playing down to a champion, Vivian Sleeber and Nick Welthall, bringing you home this Sunday evening. Uh, thanks for doing this, Vivi. You're missing missing the online grind. I am, but I'm here with you and you guys. I'm happy. There you go. Lovely stuff. <laughs> How many tournaments would you usually enter on a Sunday, roughly? Ooh. Ooh. 30. 30. And how many on screen at, like, any one time? Uh, I should play up to eight or nine. More than this, it starts getting messy. But I must confess <laughs> that sometimes there are so many good tournaments, I start registering and I forget and I keep registering and then I have, like, 15, 16 tournaments on screen, and it's a nightmare. Right. And I misplay every hand, and I misclick, and I regret instantly. It's like <laughs> it, it's like instant regret, and I said, "What am I doing?" It's yeah. easily done. It's easily done. Again and again, here I am again. Like ah, <laughs> I, I don't believe myself. Like discipline <laughs> is so important for a poker player. And right. I'm, a, I'm a human being. I make mistakes. And this is one of the mistakes I often make. <laughs> well, like discipline of when to play and how much to play is like really hard because like there are opportunities. And also you wouldn't be a poker player if you didn't love playing. So it's definitely hard. It's like telling a cash game player, don't play when you're tired. Oh, yeah. It's like, but the game yeah, is okay. good. But, I, but, but the game is good. I got to play. Yeah. No, exactly. no, you don't. You don't. <laughs> There are games every day. There are games every day. <laughs> king Jack. Let's see. A king would be sad for this one. No, but open and it is better. Yeah. Okay. 
easy. Yeah, Rasvan can't miss at the moment, winning yeah. every pot that he plays. Jack again, mm -hmm. now on the button. <laughs> Oh, okay. This can be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're three-handed, so ranges get wider. Let's see what they're gonna do. So Miron's the effective stack with four million behind. That's gonna be uh, twenty-five big blinds. So I guess Florin will three bet and call it off as opposed to doing anything else, but you never know. Let's see. Yeah, I think yes, but the question is what Miron will do. Uh, if he will just fold or if he's going to call the three bet or jam himself. Makes it 1.6, pretty big considering the stacks. I know he's out of position, but... That's pretty yeah, much yeah. that's pretty much asking his opponent to commit. Yeah, you don't have to make it so big because you don't want to make your bluffs so big. Right. Right. And made on switching for chips. Well, he, he's got to think, if he's going to play here, he's got to think there's a decent amount of bluffs in Florin's range, I think, because I don't think you can call this bet. I think calling would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? I mean, he'd be putting yeah. in half the stack. I mean... Uh, if he does something, he has to jam. He should, but... I think... Feel like he's just gonna fold. Yeah. I what would you right. do? Uh, it's just the the bet size is so big. It sort of did he call? Uh, well, what happened? All in call. All in call. All in right? call. Wow, he went yeah, for it. All in call. Wow. He went for it. He got so snapped called. A yeah. huge hand in this tournament because we'll be heads up and Florin will have a massive stack if this ace queen holds. Wow, there is a queen there. Miron needs a king, he's got some back doors as well. Okay, it's never easy. Action, it's never easy. <laughs> ace king or nine for Miron, otherwise, we are heads up in Bucharest. Yeah, he just got another seven outs. Let's see. Huge card for both these players. No good. And we are heads up, Vivian Saliba. We're heads up. And Florin is massive, massive chip leader. He is massive chip leader. Miron... Went for it. The Florin's image really helped him there. He he's definitely made some bluffs, and he's known to be an aggressive player. Three-handed. Miron said King Jack's good enough, and unfortunately for him, it wasn't. He busts in third, but fortunately for him, he has a, a big payday of um, twenty-four thousand euros. The players will get heads up, organised, and we'll take a short break. Thank <laughs> you. 
Friday. We are heads up for the money and the trophy and the title and the glory and the girls and the boys and the free cars and hospitality and status for life here in Bucharest. Somebody Woo! is going to be the ATK Live Bogo champion in Bucharest. Yes! Vivian's excited. I'm excited. You're excited, probably, <laughs> at home. You know, I was yelling here in the poker room where I'm streaming from, and people were it. staring. People were it. staring. Do you know what I just found out during the break? What did you that just Ross find out during Ron the break? Qualified yeah. to this event for $55 in one of the 8 day poker satellites. Wow. So he has wow. lost 24,000 euros. He spent $55 and he can win 37,000. This is insane. Completely insane. Can with 37,000 guaranteed to win 24,000 and he paid $55. Play the satellite, guys. Play, Play the, the satellites. satellites. Yeah, absolutely. What an incredible, great, great value. incredible result. Good for him. That is what we like to see. The magic of tournament poker and 888. Yes. That's the magic of it. I love to a, see it. He's got a big challenge in front of him because uh, Florin uh, has been playing fantastically well all day. Very experienced player. He's taken down big uh, tournaments before. Um, and he has a big chip lead. But this is heads up poker. Yes, anything can happen. Big variance in heads up poker, and big variance. And to be honest, even experienced players, they struggle a little bit with heads up uh, play because it's just something you don't play as often. And for this reason, they don't spend so much time studying it, and they don't have so much experience. Uh, I heard this from many of my friends, and I experienced this myself as well. It's just something you don't do every day. So let's see. Yeah. It's definitely worth, if you're going to play a lot of tournaments, definitely worth playing a bit of heads up somehow, finding a way to play some because um, it is where the money is. I mean, look, you play a lot of tournaments, you don't get there often. But when you do get there, situations like this, these two are playing for 13,000 euros. As we see Razvan hit a bingo. Mm-hmm. Ta-da! That uh, is right. Nick Welf, I have another question for you. Okay. How many times have you pronounced 888? <laughs> <laughs> 6.4 million. Yes. Yes. No, no prizes. What do you think of Florin's bluff with the two? I mean, is that a bluff? Is this a protection bet? I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I think checking it back is absolutely fine because you, if it does go check, 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 you're fine with it. Um, but yes. yeah, when the, the one thing I would say about Florin is when in doubt, he bets, which is quite a good way to be when you're playing No Limit Hold'em. Mm -hmm. in a tournament it's quite a good way to be it's true now, betting again here I don't know so much I mean obviously he he's punishing single clubs that are just hanging around but he's beating them anyway I mean yeah the thing is I think I believe this is not uh I think it's a too strong of a hand to bluff, even though it's super vulnerable and everything. Uh, but it's too weak of a, a hand to bet for value. So it's in the between. So I think he should. Jackie Poo. Should, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a tricky spot for sure. Now he got raised, and I think he will just hold. Well, this is the other problem with betting, isn't it? Which is you open up the, you reopen the betting, so you can be raised, which is yeah. <laughs> not ideal. Yeah. And Razvan, our our online qualifier, wins 
a pot. Yeah, and all the pots are significant now. That closes it up. We're playing 60 versus 40. This could be a long heads-up match. This is pretty deep for heads-up. Well, Flurry is quite aggressive, so let's see. He might put his opponents to the test in some spots. Yeah, I'm sure he will. He'll have no fear about that. We know that. We've seen it. I haven't heard any word of a deal or anything. Um, quite often in big live events, they do do a deal heads up, but we've been given no info on that. So I have to assume that they haven't done a deal. Yeah, I didn't hear anything as well. Um, but I like it, you know, I, it, it is a lot of money, all of that. But when do you have the chance to actually win a big tournament and like take the whole thing as it is like it is part of the experience of playing poker i don't like always making deals on the final table i like to play for it i respect it you're, respect you're an it. aggressive lady miss Saliba. oh that's good it's a compliment thank you you play to win no fooling. Um, yeah, I've just had it confirmed. There's no deal in the heads up. So we are playing for all the money, playing for 13,000 euros. How much? Playing for 37,000 uh, euros. Ah, 13, 13 difference. Yeah. <laughs> 13,000 between first and second. That's what they're playing for. They both got 24 locked up. Okay. okay. It, it's late in Bucharest. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's two hours more than where you are, Nick Welsall. Correct. It's nine o'clock in London. We'll still give away a few more tickets before we uh, leave you tonight. Don't worry about that. We really appreciate you watching. Those of you that have been here for most of the three days, thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Um, I hope we've delivered some uh, solid poker entertainment and some fun for you. Uh, the next time you can catch up with us uh, in terms of a live stream, I think will be from the UK Poker League in April. And in terms of one of these big 8 to 8 live main events, that'll be in Barcelona in May. Obviously, there's great poker content every night of the week uh, during the week on 888 Poker TV. If you haven't caught up with it already, we have our uh, blast matches, home games, and uh, Magic Mondays every Monday, although this week, a special treat, it's on Tuesday because it is the final of the 300k guaranteed Mystery Bounty main event. Uh, catch up with me and David Tuckman uh, this Tuesday for that. would be love to see you there. It'll be a big tournament. Um, and uh, maybe somebody that's won a ticket this weekend will make the final table. That would be awesome. Did you play it yet, Vivi? I played it once um no good and i stopped firing because i would be here and yes. yeah wouldn't be Chicken. ideal um do you know what i just noticed what's that you said 8 day poker several times in the last minute yeah. plus 8 day poker life well, 8 day poker tv is a name that will make you say a lot of 8 day poker <laughs> it's also true however it was what do i think and i make many many thinking mistakes every day so that's just no, another one it, of was them, the, it? it was the right answer it was the right <laughs> answer who am i to say anything but just well, i'm gonna just, i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask you a question for the last ticket so you know how nice. many times did we nice. think nick Walpole should have said yeah exactly no. <laughs> so for ring with the jack that's it yeah uh, Oh. Yeah, I mean, Rasvan has a bluff catcher here and he's going to try and catch it and he's going to be disappointed with the outcome. Yeah. 
So I heard Daniel Negroni say something very interesting the other day, which is, is he said um, they should take the anti out heads up. Um, and the reason why is that it promotes much more passive heads up mash matches. Uh -huh. The reason is that with the button, you're getting whatever it is, five and a half to one or something. I can't remember, five to one. Um, and so you're going to play almost all your buttons, right? Yeah. But you're not going to, because you have to limp your weak hands because you're getting five to one, you're also going to limp some of your stronger hands, otherwise you're too exploitable, which means that there are just way more limped pots, which means the heads-up match is way more uh, passive and slow. Which I thought, so I thought that was quite interesting. That's a good observation. It, it makes totally sense. Something I never stopped to think about it, but yeah, yeah. same. It's true. So uh, he said they should take out the anti. I keep meaning to mention this to uh, eight 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 actually because I think they should do it in these big events. Yeah, I can pass it on as well. Makes sense. Seven two, but suited. Seven three and suited. Always dominated. Razvan does defend, so little deuce. There you go. It's the nuts. Hmm. Just bad. Um. Yeah, it feels like that's one of those bets that just makes your opponent play perfectly. Yeah, I, I don't see the point. Right. The trophy is displayed on the table. It's such a nice trophy. I hope I can still win one of those. You'll get a few more chances. I will, but for some reason, I don't perform very well on 8 day Poker Live events. What is your deepest run in a main event? Oh. You've done well in some side events, no? I did, but... Yeah. Yeah, side events, okay. But main events? I don't even know. I don't Maybe... Uh, I, I think in Barcelona, like 20-something? 20 22nd? Okay. 20. okay. Pretty nice. Yeah. Barcelona final table would be pretty sweet. You should try for that. That's my I tip. Will. I will. I will win it this year, just for you. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so Florine with the bottom pair. Um, let's see. Let's see how they will play. Yeah, you see these these pots can get big quickly. Already uh, after this bet, three million in the middle. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Check back call and yeah, who is right, Vivian? Check check and. Florin what do you think of check mile. check? Shouldn't you be value buddy? The the six there? Yeah, I mean Razvan had had the lead through the hand, so I guess he was hoping he'd bluff again because the draws missed, but I don't know. Seems like betting would be fine there, right? Yeah, he was he was the one to close the action, right? The no. Florin. No. Oh no? Oh no. okay. I, I got this wrong then. Yeah, yeah, he was um, he was in the big blind. Okay, I thought he was the last one tried. 
and he showed me home. Nick Walco, you're so good at it. It seems like you do it for a living. What well, stare at poker? <laughs> 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 it's quite it is quite the skill <laughs> <laughs> definitely done a lot of staring at poker both playing and talking <laughs> nothing doing here we're playing what are we playing 14 million ish versus 6 million ish or maybe a little bit less than 14 uh, play six minutes. So a bit over a two to one chip lead for Florin, but one double up and we'd have a new chip leader. So it's really up for grabs. And they're also pretty deep here. This could easily be a long heads up match. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for that, Vivi? Did you have dinner? No, I did not. You didn't have dinner? No, I was waiting to be here with you. I was oh, so well, excited yeah. that I couldn't even eat. <laughs> I mean, I get I get that a lot, but <laughs> yeah, of course. I was oh my god, let me go, let me go. I need to talk to Nick. Yes. <laughs> so nines versus ace eight. Oh my god, this can this can be a big one, Nick. Yeah, it could be. A Razvan only limped the button, which is again, this is what this is exactly what Negroni is saying. If this is a if this is a heads up match without the ante, he wouldn't need to disguise his limps and he would have raised the button. So the pot's a bit smaller. And so now what does he do after Florin's raise? He is is he calling? No, he's he's raising. Yeah. I mean I think I think Florin's just gonna put the money in, isn't he? I would say so, yeah. Nines is pretty monstrous, heads up. And it's just not a hand that plays well post-flop. Yeah. Most of the point. times, many times, there will be an over card there. And what do you do then? So deny your opponent's equity and just jamming your strong pair uh, makes totally sense. He looks puzzled, though. I think he's just trying to work out the stack size. I think, or the bet size. Oh, he calls. Yeah, I really don't like this. I'm really yeah. surprised that he called there. Because, like, most of the time you're... You know, so what... If the flop comes... Like, like this one. <laughs> I mean, this one obviously is terrible. If the flop comes like four Jack King, what, what's your what's your line then? Yeah, if flop comes Queen three five is still like tricky. Like it's yeah. I, you're, you're, I don't. You're you're guessing, aren't you? I mean, because you've only got a pot size bet. Yeah, I I don't like it. Your opponent only has a pot size bet. I mean. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised Florin didn't shove there. Really surprised. But maybe this is just like, you know, like you said at the start, they just don't play a lot of heads up, these players. Mm hmm Yeah. Maybe he was hoping that there wouldn't be any higher cards and he would just jam the flop and deny his opponent equity. I don't know what was going on through his mind, but yeah. It's a nightmare flop for him. The other thing you see sometimes, Vivi, is uh, players like Florin, who he's been able to chip up all day. Like he's been able to make raises and little bluffs and stabs and three bet lights pre flop. He's had a lot of control. And I think sometimes tournament players that are like that and have had a good day and they have a lot of control, when you get into heads up, you don't have that same level of control because you have to put your money in. You mm -hmm. know, pocket nine, three bet pot steady odd big blinds deep you've got to put your money in pretty much and i think that switching gears like that is hard sometimes for for players yeah it makes sense and i agree but um in heads up there's no more icm um so in a way for an aggressive player who played great poker and certainly still do um 
it's a little surprising not to have seen a gem there. Yeah, I do agree. Well, the players are playing for three days as well. They are under some pressure. And also true. Yeah, sometimes you cannot think so clearly. We've all been there. Moneybulk asks, since players don't play that much heads up, how do you improve your heads up when obviously you don't get to the end of the tournament very often? <laughs> well, it's just study heads up. It's just something like when players are deciding which areas to focus, uh, they're studying the situations they face more often. So like you really need to be very good at pre-flop poker because you have to make a pre-flop decision every single hand you play. Then you need to make a flop decisions and turn decisions and river decisions and all of that. Uh, the heads up is the probably the least uh, frequent situation you play because very rare you're going to be heads up. But the only way to get better at heads up poker is to study heads up poker. <laughs> mm -hmm. There is no other way. I also think, so uh, you're absolutely right. The other thing I would recommend to people is to play shorthanded and heads up poker. So you can play it online, as Bodwet says. Um, you know, you can you can play heads up. You can also play shorthanded tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah, like the, the Blast. Thing, yeah, you play the Blast. The other thing about playing, you know, some of that kind of poker is it's good for your overall understanding of poker because you're going to play a lot more marginal situations because you've got wider ranges. You're going to play a lot more like second pair, third pair, deciding whether to value bet thin, deciding when you can call. You're just going to get a lot more exposure. If you just play tournaments and you're just playing full ring, and most of the tournaments, obviously, you're only going to play full ring, you just don't get exposed to those spots very often and you don't improve as fast. So I'm a real advocate of people playing shorthanded and heads up to just to improve their, you know, their poker ability. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. And just going back to the bless, 888 has even an incentive. We have the leaderboards every day. Mm. And okay. Yeah. So play the bless and improve your short game poker. But study as well. I don't think just by playing, people learn much. I really think it's very important to go through the material and the numbers. Uh, it's worth a lot. Very good point. Um, we've got one $109 ticket left up for grabs. Who wants it? It's just Me. whoever says that they want it first that isn't Vivian because you can't, you can't have it. You're like the host, dude. You can't actually have the prize. Are you, you're sad, aren't you? You're doing a sad face. Yeah, I can see. I, you can feel I, it. I did make a sad face. I knew it. Can you see me? Just like spiritually. You know me very well, huh? <laughs> That's it. I, I did make the baby face. <laughs> see? I knew. Uh... Okay, well, lots of people have said uh, said me, and so because you've all been so selfish and you can't elect a winner, we're going to have to run a contest for it. That's the only way we can do it. Um, so we're going to play... Oh, nines again. Let's see Florin does something different. Oh, it's going to be a different uh, situation here. So Florin raised the button, Razvan calls, and the flop hits no one. Must be thinking. There's mu always an ace. Always an ace. Yeah, he's going to bet these nines. Still, just basically a value bet. He's ahead most of the time. Oh. Mm -hmm. You got me for a oh. second. Yeah, yeah, it looked like he was going to bet. Right? <laughs> it like he's going to make a move. Nearly. I, it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm just checking Lime is in position mm -hmm. and we'll uh, do the last 109 ticket. Okay. Okay, so this is a what does Vivi think question. What does Vivi think? And I'm going to make David Tuckman happy even though he's not here. Mm -hmm. So the reason David is not doing commentary for this event is that he's with his kids uh, and his kids team who he coaches ice hockey. Oh, nice. So David has coached ice hockey before he coached his kids. He's uh, coached a lot of kids games in his uh, in his life. Uh, the question is, Vivi, how many kids ice hockey games has David Tuckman coached? How many, how many kids? kids ice hockey games has David Tuckman coached? No, uh, I don't understand about kids ice hockey games. <laughs> so how many kids? How many hockey. teams? How many games? I know how what many it is. Games? But how, how many, many games? games? Okay. So his kid plays ice hockey. He, he coaches his kids' team. He has yeah. coached the kids' team for a little while. How many games has he has he been the coach for? Okay, thank you. It's serious enough that he missed commentating with us this weekend. That's how serious yeah. it is. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, in chat. This is a uh, very very scientific way of winning the last hundred nine dollar ticket. We wish you lots of luck. If you don't understand ice hockey, if you don't know who David Tuckman is, if you don't know what's going on, I would still guess, because you've got a pretty good chance of winning. Uh, as long as you can play poker on 888, why not have a guess? $109 to get up for grabs. You're watching Heads Up Action here in Bucharest, trying to find our champion. Florin in shot has played uh, incredibly well. He also has some big results on his CV. So, and the chip lead. So he's the favorite here, but it's by no means a done deal. Razvan, his opponent, was down to five big blinds at one point, super short stacked. Uh, sun run a little bit, played very well, and he finds himself in the heads up. He is a qualifier, uh, sorry, a satellite winner. He's paid only $55 uh, dollars to be here. And he's locked up 24,000 euros. Whoever wins this tournament wins 37,000 euros. So this is a heads up match for 13,000. And we've got an interesting flop here. Both players make a pair. Mm -hmm. A four would be a crazy card. <laughs> that, would be, that would be an action card. Get your guesses in one guess per player. Uh, Lime Ricky has closed the contest just as I say that. Uh, somebody's going to win that $109 ticket. Lots of luck. Here we go. Some good guesses. Some good guesses. Some good guesses. Well played, guys. You've done yourselves proud. <laughs> Top pair for Asvan, but nothing for Florin. Reaching out for chips. Don't think you're gonna see anything.
How many takeaways have I had, Nettie? Why do you want to... That's... We've had that question. That was before. I haven't had, like, four today. I've been talking about poker. <laughs> Me and Vivi haven't even had dinner because we sacrifice for your enjoyment. Yeah, actually, Nick was by Avon. <laughs> <laughs> Avon. How do you say in English? In Portuguese, is oven. What are you saying? Oven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oven, oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like oven. Oven, yeah. It does sound like oven. Oven. Mm -hmm. English is dumb, English, right? English is tough, yes. Oh, look at this. 6 2. Ta da! Oh, tough to it's, get called here. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Rasvan's hitting these hands and uh, Florin is hitting nothing. But we've had maybe one big pot in this heads up. Lots of small pots. Daniel Nagarno was right. Ban the ante. Yeah, the nines versus ace eight, right? Yeah, that was a big pot. <laughs> Nope. I mean, there are so many poker questions you could ask us during this quiet period of the broadcast. And I'm getting asked, how many fruitcakes have I taken a bite of? <laughs> and how many takeaways have I had? And how was my dinner last night? I mean, <laughs> you've got Nick Welfel and Vivian Saliba, two of the great poker minds of this generation, or any generation, different generations. And you could ask us anything, <laughs> and you're asking us about freaking food items. Well, people are hungry. Well, I'm getting hungry now, now we're all talking I'm about this. I'm hungry too, yeah. <laughs> Vivian, you should have had dinner. It's 11.30, you're crazy. Order something. Well, it's tough. It's tough. Nothing vegan in the card room. <laughs> it's tough, yeah. Chips. They some... got chips. Well, um, they do, but I, I try to avoid eating like just fries and stuff like this. Then I better fast. I can, I can remember when you were fun. <laughs> You remember what? When you were fun, when you were less healthy and there were chips everywhere. Oh, yeah. There was pizza and burgers everywhere. Pizza and burgers everywhere, exactly. Not just sometimes. Okay. Lots of small pots. The players are giving us nothing here, Vivi. No, yeah, not much to talk about. Let's no action. Go back for, let's go back to food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least they're keeping their discipline, because sometimes you don't play a hand or big pots for some for quite a while, and then you say, "Okay, I'm gonna make a move because I haven't made any move for some time," and right. that's a mistake. That's a mistake. People should always play their ranges. Yeah, I do think that is a factor in what makes poker difficult, which is that you feel like it's competitive and you feel like you want to make things happen for yourself, but actually poker doesn't allow that really. Yeah. You, you not a... to, you've got to play your spots. There's nothing, you know, you can't like, it's not like running a race. You can't go, right, I'm going to dig in and go faster. It doesn't really work like that. Okay. This might end up in a all in maybe, um, 40 big blinds effectively. Hmm. Probably not, but might be interesting. Well, it can't be a mistake, heads up. It is for sure profitable, but... Right. 
Oh, he does. Oh, he do did it. it. Oh, wow, he did it. Well done. I like it. And Florin doesn't even think with the yeah. Ace Ten. I like Just do it. that. This is the old, uh, the old. Um, Chris Ferguson thing where if you're playing someone more skilled than you uh, and you've got rising blinds you, you can just move all in every hand because you you always have if you start off with equal chips you have a 35% chance of being them mm -hmm. okay I didn't know about those numbers interesting mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing, if you're playing heads up, there's just nothing you can do, even if you're more skilled. If someone's just going to keep moving in, you, do you know what I mean? You're just trying to... Uh, you know, when do you gamble? Yeah. And what with? I mean, Florin didn't even think with Ace-10 there, which means that if he's folding Ace-10, you should be doing that a lot, actually. Yes. Now, I don't think Razvan's going to do that, but it would be incredibly hard to play against if he just started shoving every time there was a, you know, an opening raise. <laughs> if he would have taken the time to consider the East 10 hand, he would, I think, rather quickly get to the conclusion that his opponent never has ace king, ace queen, right. uh, jacks, queens, kings, aces, because all yeah. these hands he would three bad none all in. Yeah, never. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. He's never shoving 40 big blinds with the top of his uh, range. Yes. Uh, maybe he would still have folded because he only had invested uh, two or three big blinds. But. Uh, he would maybe get to the conclusion that very often he would be flipping. And I definitely think those nines show like Florin's one weakness is that he doesn't, he will consider himself the stronger player and he's been the stronger player most of the day and he would just won't want to have any kind of gamble in, in how he wins this. Uh, and that is a little bit of a weakness. I'm not saying he should have called the ace 10, but just generally... Yes, absolutely. I think he's chip leader and he wants to preserve his chip lead. So he's small balling in a way in how he he puts his chips in the middle. I don't know, like uh, it's a little unusual strategy the way he's playing the heads up at least. Uh, Money BLK said, nice trophy for the winner of the tournament. Absolutely. It's a beautiful tournament and very prestigious one. Yeah, they're really nice, the trophies. Really nice. We are almost even in chips. Ten seven plays nine six in millions. Yeah, anything could happen at this moment. But no one predicted Florin just leaving. <laughs> no, he's coming back. He's coming back. I don't even know what would happen if he just leaves. Like, <laughs> Uh, he just gets, yeah, he just gets blinded out. Oh, he yes. Say. Yeah, but like some players, uh, for ethical reasons, they would just wait for their opponent because maybe they had an emergency or something. But this is a shot clock tournament. Not like you can even wait that long. <laughs> like, so 
Yeah, I'm glad he came back. We're playing 150, 300,000 now, and both players have an ace. <laughs> Hmm. Oh wow, we didn't do the contest. That's my fault. Sorry, I got uh, distracted. Sure. Apologize, guys. We'll do that in a second. Let's just see this hand play out. Oh, okay, boring. <laughs> boring. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Except those people that haven't had dinner. Oh. <laughs> Lime says, I thought you just wanted to create tension, Nick. No, I've just been doing this for three days and it's all a blur and I'm, <laughs> I'm delirious. Uh, so our last $109 ticket, Vivian Saliba, if you remember this far back, because I did get distracted, I asked you, how many kids games has David Tuckman been the coach for? Uh, he is mm -hmm. not with us this weekend because he's coaching his kid in the big state championship or some other American thing. Uh, what was your answer, if you can even remember? I remember. <laughs> what did you guys think? My answer was think? 160. 160 is exactly the right answer. It didn't matter that we delayed. You still got the answer exactly right. That is what you think the answer to the question, how many coaching uh, appearances for kids' games has David Tuckman made? 160. If you're close to that, you might have won the last $109 ticket. In real terms, the winner of the last $109 ticket is a Fabregas 4. Fabregas 4. You guessed 164, and you are our last $109 winner. There are still smaller tickets up for grabs. We'll do some more giveaways before the end of the stream. But congratulations, you win our last $109 ticket. Yeah, I, I imagine he's a coach for eight years, 20 games per year or so. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah there was some, some, some thinking. I reckon that's a pretty good guess. I'll ask him on Tuesday. Um, if you want to catch up with me and David Tuckman, you want to see some great poker, uh, big online tournament, and lots of giveaways, make sure you're with us on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. We'll be bringing you the final of the 300K Mystery Bounty main event. Uh, even better, why don't you try and be there? There's another flight on Monday for that, and satellites oh, yeah. into that as well. Even better. Capolito is uh, seventh in chips for day two. Ooh. He was very he was very excited about this. I can imagine. It's a great tournament. Nice opportunity. Are you thirsty, Nick? You hear me drinking, sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I usually go away from the mic, but I'm getting tired and and sloppy now. No, I was really on it two and a half days ago. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like everything about you. Thanks, Vivi. I'm drinking too. So that You're I drinking keep you what? Sorry. I'm drinking as well. Maybe you can. You hear. have a you have a red wine. No, just water. Oh God, come on. I'm a good girl. Wow. Ace King. That's a good hand. <laughs> the Florin has raised here. He does not have Ace King. Mazumon, do you had four lucky beers this morning? Well done for still being awake, if that's true. Brazvan is going to three bet this after limping the button, I think. <laughs> Uh, 
And I think Florin will just give it up. And if he does just give it up, guess what? Guess what, Vivian Saliba? What? New chip leader in town. Mm-hmm. If you told him this when we were five-handed and he had five big blinds, he would have uh, he would have maybe not believed you. He is now the chip leader. Razvan, our satellite winner, is uh, now in in sight of the victory. They've got a lot of chips, though. They've got 10 million each. Yes, They've got 30 still, same big blinds. Still very unsure who will be crowned, crowned the, the champion, but... Yeah, guys, when you're in a tournament and you go down to one big blind, five big blinds, no matter how short you are, there is always hope. There is always hope. Pick your spots well. I have many uh, chip and a chair stories. You have chip and a chair stories? Many. From your own life? From my own life, yes. What's your best, most memorable comeback? Well, uh, probably my biggest cash it was a long tournament. Uh, it was a four or five day event. And on um, the second level of day two, I was down to two big blinds. And by the end of the day, I was chip leader and I ended up wow. getting fourth. <laughs> and I had my biggest cash and I was down to two big blinds. So... I think this is the most exciting. So Razvan is seeing a lot of hands and that is helping him turn this round. Monster hand for him here. And the five bet, it, the Florine is betting 600k. Is this a value bet? Is this a bluff? I think it's a value bet because it just went check, check, check. Okay. And now he's going to get raised. I think it's just a value bet trying to get cooled down by, you know, ace high or king high. Mm hmm. Did you call? I mean, he's going to call this raise. And he's going to get shown a big hand. And this is going sideways for Florin. He came as the big favorite and the big chip leader. He's now nearly a two to one underdog. Not quite, not quite that big, but and he's still got 26 big blinds, but not where he, not where he envisioned being at the start of this and match. He, he goes away again. <laughs> I hope he's not punching the wall and coming back. No, he's probably vaping. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that sounds more likely. Yes, Dolk Matouche Razvan is doing a good job. He's definitely mixed up his play. Um, he's also done what you should definitely do heads up, which is hit more hands than your opponent. That also helps. <laughs> he's, he's done both. But he's been, what I would say is Razvan's been very calm and like, you know, made decent decisions given his situation which is this is a massive tournament for him playing for a lot of money yes would be for they're anybody both, they're both playing well yes guys it's not the Raz fan that's uh, quite often in chat our uh our stream friend is not, uh, unfortunately. Oh, I met be, him. That would be really fun. It's not him. He, he was here all these days. Yeah, he was. He, he, he took oh, pictures met... with the whole team, and oh, he cool. posted on 88 Poker's Discord, and you guys actually can can see. Yeah, if you're not part of 88 Poker's Discord, here's a, an opportunity to join. And he was here, yeah, every day. Nice. Um, so this is a good example of Razvan doing a good job, definitely. Yeah. Flop the nuts and give your opponent top pair. That might be a big one. Now, does he play this fast? He hasn't been playing uh, hands fast post-flop. He's been trapping quite a lot. 
Let's see if he does anything different here. Well, if there is one hand to trap, I think this is the hand. He agrees. I like it. Four million in the pot. This is getting serious for Florin. He only has one and a half first pot size bets behind here. I don't like the bet. <laughs> I don't like the bet for many reasons. Um, Tell us. Your opponent has Jack X on the range. They mm -hmm. have flushes already. They have. Um, if you get bet and you get jammed, it is a horrible spot. Uh, your hand is not as strong as you think. You, you lost. You don't have a kicker. Um, like there are many problems <laughs> with it. Uh, if if he got jammed, what does he do? Yeah. Is this a hand that you want to bat fold? Like it's, it's just like too weak. I think. Uh, I understand that he might want to to protect. And, and to charge a king or a queen of clubs, but... Well, there you go, Vivi. He did get go. jammed on. So it's very, very ugly when this happens. Yeah, because he's probably going to fold, and he's now, like, bet-folded bet folded away a strong hand now. On this occasion, he is up against the nuts, but... He still had outs. He could hit a nace or jack. He folded yeah. equity. He pulled equity as well. Yeah. Uh, he could. Uh, I think it's a hand that just went to check back the turns, but because the jack paired, like your opponent will have jack X, and he will check jam you. Great analysis from Vivi Saliba. If you haven't already, make sure you're following her on all good social media outlets. Where do you want to follow you, Vivi? Instagram, Twitch, all of Instagram. that good stuff. Instagram, yeah. Instagram. Vivi dot Saliba. So can Florin fight back? This has been a horrible heads-up match for him. Basically, not, not much he's done has really worked, and his opponents uh, played well and hit some hands, and now he finds himself in a total reversal of where we started this match. He now has... Wow, he's now down to 14 big blinds. Both players are 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 good. Um, I I've liked some things we've seen from Razvan and a lot of things I saw from Florin before. Um, no matter what happens, it's a great result. And one of them will get the thirty-seven thousand euros and the trophy. What is is nicer, the trophy or the money? The money. So, <laughs> some players they care more about the trophy yeah that that's not me <laughs> <laughs> and actually like you know you, you, if you're ever at the end of a tournament you can definitely if you think somebody wants the trophy in the win you can absolutely you can, sell the trophy. You can absolutely get paid to not take the trophy <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All in for Florin. He's at that stage. Rasvan has a king. I can't see him calling here, but you never know. Yeah, I don't think he's going to call. Now he has a great spot being the chip leader. You don't want to unnecessarily give chips away and lose this great advantage. Dalt Matouche says Florin is losing his mind here. Yeah, I don't know if he is or not. He, he hasn't made that many mistakes. Like, I know we didn't like the bet with the ace on the turn. That wasn't great. And we know, the I know nines, we didn't, didn't, he didn't love the jam. nines. But I don't think he's, like, had a meltdown or anything. It's just, 
Also, your mistakes look worse when your when your opponent has it, right? <laughs> yeah. No, he played great poker. He played overall very good poker. Yeah, Daisy says I'm tired now. I can just imagine how tired they both are. Yeah, it's 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 tough as well. Like it is very easy to criticize plays always, but these guys have been playing no limit hold'em for three days straight. But they have quite a nice incentive at the moment. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, something to ease out their tiredness. Uh, any more giveaways? Yeah, we'll probably do another one, Muzzy Mond. A little bit tricky with this heads up because it could end at any time, but if I can get you a couple more tickets, I will. If Florine finds a a double up, oh, let's see this has a match in Teal Barcelona. We we got what two months? <laughs> two months, yeah, it's all the time. <laughs> we have all the time in the world. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. I do hope you've enjoyed the stream. Those of you that have been all, here all three days uh, really do appreciate it. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you follow the channel and turn on notifications. We have lots of great free content. It's always free, and we always give giveaways. It's actually a net gain when you watch this channel. Uh, we're on um, 8 p.m. GMT on weekdays with lots of great uh, live and uh, highlight shows. I Oh, the pictures of the ambassadors and the team of Razvan are on the 888 Poker Discord, guys, under live, 888 Poker Live. Whoever in one of our live events, let us know and say hello, please. Absolutely. Oh, it's a picture of me with my twin. Who's your twin? My twin is Lucia Navarro. You have no idea how many people. What? Uh, yeah, people come to me and start yeah. talking like I, I, I'm her, and it happens the same to her. And people ask if we are sisters, and we got mistaken by one another, and we um, actually do look like one another. We both think so, but it's like insane, insane. It's many I mean, times. I don't. I'm confused, as usual. I'm always confused. In Barcelona, you're going to see us side by side. I've seen you side by side. <laughs> <laughs> people, people... I mean, look, you, you're both 888 ambassadors. You both have black hair and you're both, you know, ladies. And that's all true. And I, 
I, but I don't think you look like each other. Guys, chat, let us know. Lucia Navarro and I. Okay, so do we look Lime alike? says Lime says you look different. Razvan says you look different. Who's saying you look the same? Oh, Razvan, I was just looking at your picture. People, everybody, they they mistaking us both for one another. Uh, yesterday I was in the toilet uh, uh, line and someone asked, oh, is this your sister? Like, it, it happens a lot. Yep. <laughs> there you go. The, the public don't lie. Yeah, it's too many opinions. I take it as a compliment. Lucy is beautiful. But there was a time people would say that I looked like Aim Winehouse. And that wasn't so nice. I'm not getting into this. I feel, I, I, I feel like it, I feel like anything I say is going to go wrong. Um, 53 <laughs> big blinds plays 14 big blinds in our heads up match. Razvan really has, and I, I think he's played well, but he's also really uh, had a nice run of cards here in this heads up. Florin desperate to turn it around, of course. Oh. Is he gonna slow play this one? No, he's gonna bet. <laughs> Got to feel a little bit sorry for Florin. He's going to be proud of his performance when he looks back, especially before you came on stream, Vivi. He made two or three really nice plays when we were um, at two tables. So he's going to be proud of what he's done. But if he doesn't win this heads up, he will be a little bit, uh, a little bit sad if, because he came in with the chip lead. I know, but even if he doesn't win this heads up, second place in a big live event, tough opponents, he played very well. It, it is still such a good accomplishment, and it is still a lot of money, like twenty four thousand euros. It is a great, great cash. So. I, I know what you're saying. Like we're never satisfied. We, especially when your heads up, you, it's just one player away from the big, big win and the title. But second place is really, really great. Like I, 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 I know what you're saying, but he shouldn't feel upset. He played very good. And if, if he loses, and yeah, we, we don't he can know. still win it. Yeah, he's all in with eight seven. Okay, we're going to do one last giveaway. We're going to give away everything must go. Everything we've got left in the shop is going to go. I've got four, four $16.50 tournament tickets. Four of the bad boys. So if you've hung around till the end here, I'm, uh, this is our way of saying thank you. Well, everything we've got left, we're going to give to you in uh, one keyword giveaway. Uh, the odds did just go up, Gaz. You're absolutely right. Um, we're going to run the keyword. Is it ready, Lime? We're going to run the keyword for four 1650 tickets. The keyword is champion. We are going to crown a champion at the end of this heads up. Let's manifest him in. One of these two gentlemen. Type champion. Be entered in. You've got a. You've got four tickets to shoot at here. Good luck to you. Oh, and it could be this hand. It could be this hand. Look at this, Vivi. The money must go in. It does go in. All in in a call. This could be over. Oh, my God. Florin needs to hit. Well, we have a champion. And, and we have a champion. We have a champion. There's no drama in that run out. The dealer just went for it. <laughs> 
boom, boom, boom. Our online qualifier, $55, turned into 37,000 euros. OMG. Absolutely sensational. That, what a story, hey, Vivi? That's what it's all about, tournament poker. This is why I love poker. It is beautiful. Look at him, big smiles from Razvan. And let's not forget, not only did he win a satellite, look how excited he is. Yes, the trophy is yours. Um, <laughs> but also he came back from five big blinds. I'm pretty sure he was five or six big blinds, very short stack, five-handed, and won it. And a shout out to Florin for playing a great tournament in second place. But our yes, winner and champion here in Bucharest is Razvan. He wins 34,000 euros. Let's run the last giveaway, Lime. Let's run the last giveaway. Vivi, thank you so much for being here and uh, bringing this home with me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Chad, for being with us and being so great. Let's find our last four I mean, ticket winners. Yeah, thank you so amazing. much, Chad, uh, for being here during this tournament. Clebson Silver has won a $16.50 ticket. <laughs> Uh, the feed has ended, but I'm still here talking into the dark. <laughs> uh, Player Quiller wins a ticket. Nice. Two more winners. And let's find out who they are. It is... Someone gives a machine to cake. Brazilian Donk, friend of the show, is a winner. You're very welcome, everyone, for the stream. Thank you so much for being here. And our last one is Stinky12345. Huge thanks to uh, Nick Eastwood and Vivian Saliba for keeping us company and sharing their insight. We really, really appreciate it. We'll see them in Barcelona. Big thank you to Lime Ricky for some sensational moderating. I know you had some technical difficulties today, Lime, so thank you so much. And to our producer, Hayden, and who's done a fantastic job all weekend, and Joey on the first day. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll be back on stream, 8 o'clock GMT, every weekday night. I'll see you on Tuesday with David Tuckman for the big final table of the Ministry Bounty main event. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll see you next time. Nice.